Friday. Are we alive? Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course, but... Ladies and gentlemen, what a day to start off. We're talking about commercial real estate concerns. You even got a little bit of Kashkari in the morning. People talking about the banks, NYCB, they get downgraded to junk. They replace somebody. The stock goes up. Alibaba earnings were kind of last lackluster. They weren't as good. And then Uber beats and guides up. They come down. Snapchat is still clap. There's a lot of moving pieces here all into earnings. But right now, this bond auction later today and kind of this setup into next week, we're playing the same game. So we're going to see what happens. We got a couple more Fed speakers today. Not as much data. We are going to get that bond auction. And it should be an interesting one to say the least because... You still got a bunch more earnings, ladies and gentlemen. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for it. It's a blessing to see you here right now. So, good morning, baby. What's up? What up, Ian? What up, Pixelated? Marcus Hanlon, Carissa Hines. Good morning. What up, Battleborn? Full Cycle Lambs. Anzel. Nazi Wolf, baby. Christina. Sissy Owaz. A Becky. Sungrown Monica, Mr. Jules, Eric, Ray, Miguel, good morning. What up, John? What up, Manny? How you living, Ben Stone? Dev the Lurker, baby. Lucky Soldier in the house. Oh, good morning. What up, Freebird? What up, DeJello? Omar, Burrito Lion, Juice Chase, baby. Canela, Amir, Ryan Scarella, good morning. What up, Gary? What up, Tristan? How you living, Tim Whitman? Good morning. Oh, I see Ari ready to go. Rod Cash, Keldrick, baby. Trey Kush, Dark Sky Daddy, Yo, Red Bull, Joe Mama, Stacy B. Good morning. El Chapado, baby. Flav and Ben Santana. Winning loser, Raliska Kanan. Good morning. Oh, what up, young blood? How you living, Jerry, 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 will ya? Oh, good morning, Sarnos, Theo, baby, Jesse Ramirez, David Tello, Ray G, William Dearborn, Quantum Indus Futures, baby, good morning. What up, Candy? How you living? What up, Taj? The concept of infinity. Oh, what about the Twitch? What about Senkau Hustle? No step on snack, baby. Good morning, Bitcoin Peter Schiff. Charlie and the Trey. Blowing Doe, the real Kato. Brexton, Mr. Belvedere. Preforms, Tar Soldier. JG Industries. KJ Lamar. Sasha Gray Maddow. Pickle Pickler. Feed Me Seymour. Most Dope Andy. Sim Race Review. JJ Silver. Toy Soldier. Iceberg. And... Mr. Mother Liquor and invested in Ibex and Robo Hand Tech and Blazing Bob. Oh, good morning, Chatadonia. Good morning. I hope you're feeling good, man. Kathy, 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 will ya? So let's see where today takes us. Again, the China effect of yesterday kind of fading a little bit. So that's not good news or good news, depending on how you want to look at it. We'll see how those all play out. But again, there is a couple of earnings and more after the bell. But now. Let's get into the news, my friends. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Treasuries fall before record auction and NYCB surges. Stock futures rose and bonds fell before a record $42 billion of 10-year treasuries, with investors also awaiting a handful of Federal Reserve speakers for clues on the interest rate path. Another solid treasury auction could be a bullish catalyst for both equity and bonds. Due to recent supply concerns, traders also kept a close eye on NYCB, whose shares jumped after hitting their lowest since 1997, as the regional lender said deposits have climbed since the end of last year and liquidity remains ample. S&P contracts edge higher. Also on Wall Street's radar will be the raft of central Central Bank speakers, including Adriana Kugler, Susan Collins, Thomas Barkin, and Michelle Bowman. Fed Bank of uh, Philly President Harker has said late Tuesday that a soft landing is in sight, pointing to falling inflation and a still strong labor market. He didn't give his view on when the Fed should begin to cut rates in his prepared text. 
Uh, U.S. policy markers, uh, policymakers have left interest rates unchanged since July and have signaled that the central bank's next move is likely a cut. Several officials, including Chair Jerome Powell, have indicated that they are not in a rush to do so, helping shift market expectations for the timing of the first interest rate cut towards May or June. Uh, New York uh, Community Bank credit grading. Do we have it? Wait for it. Hold on. Do you guys hear me? I don't know if the YouTube could hear me. It's still not loading up. Start stream. Come on, YouTube. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. I see it. I don't hear it. Oh, hello? Hello? Oh, hello? There it is. There it is. I don't know. It just happened. I was just reading, and then I was like, wait, my mouse isn't moving. My mouse wasn't moving, and then we're back now. So, hello. Hello. I hope you guys are good. Where was I? So, we were talking about Alibaba. They unveiled a $25 billion addition to stock repurchase program as they reported disappointing revenue, reflecting how rivals such as Pinduoduo are eroding their dominance in China. Snap, the parent company of Snapchat, reported lower than projected revenue over the peak holiday season, disappointing investors just a week after much larger rival Meta platforms post in its best sales growth in two years. Uber reported gross bookings that beat analyst estimates, showing strong demand for rides and food delivery during the holiday period. Yum posted a, a fourth quarter results that missed expectations expectations, making it the latest restaurant operator to report a pullback in spending. We have China PPI and CPI on Thursday. U.S. wholesale inventories, jobless claims on Thursday. Janet Yellen speaks at Senate Banking Committee on Thursday. Pharma CEOs at Senate Panel on Prescription Drugs on Thursday. Philip Lane from ECB on Thursday. ECB publishes Economic Building on Thursday. U.S. CPI revisions on Friday. Germany CPI on Friday. And then President Joe Biden hosts German Chancellor Olaf Scholz at the White House on Friday. Yes, we are back, my friends. Uh, NYB, NYCB downgrade, uh, their credit rating fell as they were cut to junk by Moody's, capping a week with the lender's shares have dived after it slashed shareholder payouts and stockpiled reserves to cover loan losses, sending a shiver through the U.S. regional banking sector. Moody said the bank is facing multifaceted financial risk and government challenges. Uh, that came after an NYCB closed at its lowest level since 1997, falling another 22% on Tuesday, taking the wipeout of market over the past few weeks to $4.5 billion. Uh, real estate risk. Treasury, Jan Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said losses being seen in U.S. commercial real estate. One of the issues impacting NYCB are a concern, but that regulators are on the case. She said higher interest rates increase vacancies due to a shift in working patterns and the maturing of a wave of real estate loans this year is going to put a lot of stress on the owners of these properties. The worries have continued to spread internationally, with Germany's Deutsche Bank and Brief Bank uh, bonds uh, slumping after analysts highlighted concerns about U.S. commercial real estate exposure. Uh, no rush to cut. Federal Reserve President, uh, Cleveland President Loretta Mester said the policymakers will probably gain confidence to cut rates later in this year should the economy continue to progress in line with expectations. But she said there's no need to rush cuts. It would be a mistake to move rates down too soon or too quickly without sufficient evidence that inflation was on a sustainable and timely path back to 2%. She said her comments proceed to swat the Fed officials speaking on Wednesday, including Patrick Harker, Adrian Kugler, Susan Collins, Tom Barkin, and Michelle Bowman. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I have to hurry it up a little bit. What time is it? 13? So S&P futures are up by 0.3 Wednesday pre-market after U.S. equities finished mostly higher on Tuesday with upside leadership from small caps following Monday's pullback, while lower quality basket and China ADRs also fared well. Treasuries largely weaker after following a rally on Tuesday. Dollar down by 0.2, greenback better versus yen, gold flat, Bitcoin little change, and WTI is up by 0.7. Uh, no meaningful directional impulses for the market this morning with a lot of moving pieces, debates surrounding the high-profile themes. Fed pivot remains the biggest story, though some heightened uncertainty surrounding the timing and magnitude along with the need to wait for more data. Economic resilience, another area of focus, though positive macro surprise momentum has played in a good news is bad theme. In addition, still concerns about lagged effects of Fed tightening and signaling from inverted yield curve. Earnings rebound, a bullish talking point, but also scrutiny surrounding outsized big tech contribution and disinflation risk for sales and operating leverage. Stretch 
bearish positioning, bearish talking point, but also talk of some cushion from buybacks. Another quiet day on the economic calendar ahead of the CPI annual revision on Friday in January, CPI next Tuesday. However, a record $42 billion 10-year auction expected to get outsized attention following a well-received $54 billion auction of three years on Tuesday. Another barrage of Fed speak with Kugler, Collins, Barkin, and Bowen all scheduled to speak. Kishkari told CNBC today he sees two to three rate cuts in line with the median SCP. Note, despite all the headline noise, recent Fed speak has been consistent with the broader Fed pivot narrative, albeit one that is less aggressive than what the market is currently priced in. Guild missed and guided below with both HIV and cell therapy soft. CMG beat on key metrics with street positive on 7% transaction growth. Fortinet posted unexpected billings growth on large deal activity. Ford guided EBITDA and free cash flow above a fo with a focused on cost saving plan. EW takeaways positive, but stock had a big run. CTSH revenue guide disappointed. Snapchat down big on continued headwinds from brand and DR ad revenue, along with soft EBITDA guide. Yum China a big and beat of capital return update. VFC revenue missed at all three divisions. Cruise Q3 ahead of iPhone Tailwind. Wern EPS missed on margin pressures. Sono beat and continue to tease new category outside of earnings. Big corporate story revolves around sports focused streaming including Disney, uh, WBD, Fox, and then NYCB. Down again despite a positive balance sheet update. Don't worry, there's a little bit more. Oh, I still need to open up my other TD. So stocks and bonds fluctuated as the U.S. Treasury prepared to auction a record $42 billion in 10-year bonds that may indicate a recent sell-off was overdone. Uh, losses in the commercial property market, which have already sent some banks in New York and Japan into a tailspin, have moved into Europe's biggest economy. Uh, in the last week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that while losses in commercial real estate are a worry, U.S. regulators are working to ensure that loan loss reverses, reserves and liquidity levels in the financial system are adequate to cope. The recent economic figures and aggressive market bets on rapid interest rate cuts mean that the European Central Bank should be patient before loosening borrowing costs and according to uh, executive board member Elizabeth Schnabel. Not bad. Cleveland's Fed Mester opened to rate cuts this year but says she's not in a rush. Market debate shifting to Bank of Japan follow-up on rate hikes. Uh, ECB Schnabel says lower borrowing costs flare up at risk flaring up inflation. UK lawmakers criticize Bank of England's quantitative tightening program. New York Fed research shows auto loans and credit card loans worsening with new delinquencies. Yellen says CRE space is a worry, but risks are manageable. China replaces head of security regulator in a surprise move after a sharp sell-off in recent markets. Uncertainty returns to Treasury market after Fed pivot and blockbuster U.S. jobs data. NYCB sells off again, but broader regional bank space holding up. SEC votes to identify Treasury traders as dealers. NVIDIA prices soar in Asia as U.S. export curbs and AI boom drive demand. Moody cuts NYCB credit to junk warns of further downgrade if credit performance weakens. ESPN, Fox, and Warner Brothers uh, discover a plan to launch uh, aggregated sports streaming service this year. Snap revenue growth underwhelms amid ongoing struggle from slump in digital advertising. NTSB preliminary reports find Boeing 737 door that blew out was missing four bolts. Uh, Biden says bipartisan immigration bill is failing, falling apart under political pressure from Trump. Colorado ballot appeals to uh, by Trump, given Supreme Court its biggest election test since Bush v. Gore. Uh, Hamas proposes a 135-day Gaza truce with total Israel withdrawal. Blinken to discuss counter proposal with Israel PM. Trump weighing trade against EU nations if he returns, including tariff increases and countermeasures on digital taxes. U.S. to convey to Chinese official treasuries uh, Secretary Yellen desire to visit Beijing this year. USTR ties says U.S. tariffs on China imports for rebalancing and commercial relationships. EIA says U.S. crude output will be flat for most of 2024, won't reach new record until early 25. Venezuelan President Maduro betting U.S. will not reinstate oil sanctions. That's bold, Maduro. That's bold. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> mm. -da -pop -pop -pop. A lot of pre-market movers. So don't worry, you're going to have a lot of plays today. 
Enphase, they're the leader right now, up 15% off of earnings. All of the solar sympathies are going up. Yum China up 14 off of earnings and dividend increase. Roblo is up 10.8 off of earnings. Fortinet up 9 off earnings. XPO 5.8 earnings. Ford 5.6 off of earnings. AMCR 5.2 earnings. EMR up 4.5 earnings. CG up 4.5 earnings. SYM 3.4 DA Davidson upgrade. Earnings were yesterday. WBD up 3.1 to form sports streaming JV with Fox, ESPN, and Discover. Palo Alto Networks up 2.9 probably off of Fortinet. Chipotle up 2.9 off of earnings. Target up 2.5. Gordon Haskett upgrade. Budweiser up 2.1. Trump asks followers if brand deserves a second chance. Uh, Zscaler up 1.8. Dollar Tree up 1.8. Gordon Haskett upgrade. ARCC up 1.6 off earnings. Tesla up 1.5. KB up 0.8 earnings and dividend. CVS up 0.8 off of earnings. Sonos up 10.0 off of earnings. New York Community Bank up 9. Appoints Alejandro Danello as executive chairman. Moody's downgrades to junk and finance financial update. Lumen up 8.9 off of earnings. Elf up 7.6 off of earnings. OI up 7.5 earnings. GPRE 7.4 earnings. WRK up 4.7 earnings sympathy. Toast up 4.0 Redburn Atlantic upgrade. SEMR up 4.0. Jeffries assumes buy. INDI up 4 off nothing. Wall 3.5 off of nothing. GLT up 114 tax-free spinoff merger with Barry Global Businesses. GRRR up 13%, expands Middle Eastern and North Africa operations. PEPG up 10.0, prices 7 million shares at 1063. SLQ, SLQT up 9 off earnings. SGMT up 6.9 off nothing. RGNX up 5.1, completes enrollment and cohort 2 and additional interim data of Affinity Duchesne trial. A set up 3.4 off of nothing. IMAB 2.5 to divest assets and business operations in China. Alec up 1.8. FDA has granted breakthrough therapy designation to Latazone. Latazinamab? Latazinamab? I can't say it. Snapchat down 30 off of earnings. EQNR down 6.2 uh, earnings. Uh, CTSH down 5.8 earnings. Baba 3.6 down earnings. Pinterest down 3.0. Snap Sympathy. Gilead down 2.5 off of earnings. Palantir down 2.1 profit taking. APTV. Morgan Stanley downgrade. Amgen down 2.0 earnings. Yum down 1.8 earnings. EW down 1.4 earnings. Uber down 1.3 earnings. Hilton down 0.6 earnings. And Disney down 0.6 on the JV. TGI down 17.9 off of earnings. MLNK down 15% preliminary quarter four buybacks and results 6.9 million share offering Mercy down 15.5 earnings Perry 11.5 earnings VFC down 10.3 earnings earnings and strategic review of brand asset FLNG down 4.6 off of earnings NYT down 3.1 earnings Tegna 2.5 off of nothing MSTR down 1.2 off of earnings VSAT down 0.6 GDTC down 25 off nothing Fubo down 13% sympathy to ESPN Fox and Disney uh, REKR down 12.6 Seven common stock offering fund down 12.6 to offer intermediate amount of shares and pre-funded warrants. Cref down 12.1 off of earnings. Lux H down 8.0, and then Chinese ADRs all trading lower. Ba da ba ba ba. So Chad, I got a couple of plays for you. Oh no, my plays all deleted. I had all. Right, you're gonna have to give me a second then. Please hold. I don't know. I might have to take my bathroom break. If it'll let me. Oh man, I had a couple of plays. So Chad. I'm going to have to write these all down. But I was going to watch Enphase, Snap, Palantir, not Palantir, PayPal, Disney, and then there was one more, Fortinet, uh, and I think that's it. I had one more, and then Bonds for the Bond auction. Oh, I had one more play on there. It deleted when my thing restarted, unfortunately. But Chatadonia, you're here right now. We got a little bit of time. We got a little bit of time. Before we get into any breaks, you tell me right now. You're here right now in the day. What's your first play of the day? I already see some in the chat. Let's go. Arm, Fortnite, SoFi, can't get off SMCI, spy opening near all-time highs, MGNX, NVIDIA, Tancalls, Tessie Put, Tesla, Baba, TLT, Peloton Shares, Palantir, Baba Short, Shorting Elf, Snap, Roblo, NVIDIA, Shorting KRE, Snap Call, Tesla Flip, Snap Put, Selling TM Call, Snap Put, Baba Call, AMD, Apple, RKLB, Paul World, Snap Puts, Puts on your PC, Sell My Snap Put, Snap, Spy Call, AMD, Baba Call, Max Short, Palantir, Baba, Still in My UPS, Snap Put, Selling Off, ETF, AXP Puts, ASML, Baba Leaps, Ford, SMCI, 
or 700. Tesla, AMD, PayPal, CYN, QQQ, wherever you play. Roblo, Snap, Tesla, puts on anger. Top today, XO, Uber, dropped in, pop. Snap, NYCB, Tesla, Disney, Roblox calls, IWM puts, Josh PC puts, Palantir, PayPal, Square, Spy Hot 500, pump it up. UWMC calls on Josh, rising out of earnings. Spy calls, Disney calls, Spy 595, Snap puts, Snap, Uber, Rodeo, Snap, hopefully, watching XOM, scooping Baba below 70, Target weight, Roblo puts, SQQQ, Ulta, Spy ripping in the final plays. Lift calls, buying more Sheba, Palanter puts, Elf, and UPS shares. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Chatadonia. We got one minute, man. One minute. Do we have enough time? Do we have one way on one minute till question? I think I could get a pee out real quick. There ain't no commercial breaks, though. That's it. You guys, you know what I did this morning? I don't, I don't want to tell you, but I want to tell you. Should I tell you what I did this morning? I got 45 seconds to, to use up to tell you. It's not that impressive, but I kind of worked out this morning. Uh-huh. I did. I, I went I went in there, bro. I did some tricep pull downs. Uh huh. I, I did that. I did three sets on the chest with the dumbbell and then it got really cold and then it was already time to start. So, yeah, I got a little poop in. I was able to get a little. No, but I got a little workout in. I got a little workout in. It was nice. No, it kind of woke me up. It got the blood pumping. I was very excited about it. Yeah, it got very cold. Very, very cold. The weights were like freezing. No, oh, but it was great. It was great, though. It got me it got me moving, man. It got me moving. But, Chad, every day in the morning, we make some movement. We make some love and appreciation. And it's the least we could do for a very special group of people that have sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will. And that is the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, I want to give a huge special shout out. All the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, even the families for real. Thank you for your service. Thank you for this dedication to the country, fighting for our freedoms, regardless of what you believed in or not. You made that commitment to something greater than you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and big shout out to anybody else out there giving back to their local communities, all the doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, police officers, the garbage men, the janitors, the coaches, you helping out making things run. That's what I'm talking about, baby, so thank you, but ladies and gentlemen, please rise, place your right hand over your heart, say it with me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Send to the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Yeah. Oh, or no, let's go. <laughs> oh, Chatadonia. Chatadonia. I hope you're feeling good. Happy Wednesday. Happy co real estate, baby. Oh, that's the day today. That's the day today. A lot of movement, a lot of earnings, man. Where are they again? Even Uber. I liked Uber. I think Uber just, again, they moved up so much that even though they beat and raised, they may be able to come back up. But again, Uber has done very, very well, but both on their earnings and the stock went up. Uh, who was the other one? Again, Alibaba and then Yum China. And then I think there's one more in the earnings uh, from last night. And then again, we still got a couple of bigger ones for after hours today. But bro, I need to go pee. I don't know how we're going. I got a minute. I got a minute, man. I don't know if y'all just want to listen to me. Would that be too weird? CNBC, do they play anything a minute before? Nobody plays anything a minute before the bell? What is happening? That's it? No? Are they going to get you back? All right, let me go to the bathroom. Networks. There's a lot of, the, I hope the they don't hit you with that. I'll be right back. We got one minute. Like the Leads video. have sort of toyed around with, yeah. should we do something our, ourselves? Some teams are doing like local TV and streaming. How do you see that shaking out? So... I don't think I'm right on this, but this is, my instincts keep telling me this is what's going to happen. Because if you remember the WWE, they launched their own network that had their own content and had their own pay-per-views. And it was kind of a smart, bold, ahead of its time move. And then they pivoted at the perfect time and they sold their content to 
What was it? Peacock. Peacock. Yeah. And that was really smart too because they were able to leverage that number as high as possible. So they always zagged where the money was when the opportunity was. I think the opportunity for the NBA with the local teams would be to own all that themselves. Okay, we made it. We made it. We made it. 22 seconds. I was a power piss. I still need to drink some water. We good to go. Bro, that workout was nice, though. I like it, man. I feel a little more awake today. Until I die. I didn't, but I didn't lift enough to get sore, so I think we're good, baby. Yeah, we got 10 seconds. Like the video. Drop that thumbs up. Call out any place. Source that info. Mark it at all-time highs. Again. Round one. Fight. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. All right, TLT down again, maybe with some of the bank stuff going away. But are we at all-time high? That is the real question. 4976, I think we are. Yep, new all-time high today, baby. New all-time high. I like 3M. They raised their dividend yesterday. Again, I do like it kind of like right below 90 in the low 90s, but oh, excuse me, I don't think they are that bad. Snap, where are those plays? Where's everything? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are those the Toyotas? Toyota went up again here, too. Yeah, the Toyotas and then TMO. Oh, no, no. They're just messing with me on that. Don't tell me they cucked the snap plays. Uh, they did. Snap plays are $5 to 50 cents. So the bid, the spread is very, very wide. And again, you can watch out if Uber is going to continue up here. Uber kind of has that effect sometimes. Again, Uber did very well. Uh, they were just hyped up so much. I think that's the only problem. Uh, what that fill me up? What the hell? Oh, the Uber puts her up. Wait, how come? Did it not film me on that? Oh, no, I got them. Yeah. All right. I grabbed an Uber call for next week. Kind of expensive. They're far out the money. Y'all don't have a thousand likes, though. You know, that's how we have to get down. So I don't know, man. I can't. I can't be sharing with you. No Uber. I need we need to we need to run up the likes. Roblo did good. I might, I'm going to sell covered calls on that. We closed the other ones yesterday. Oh, those went up a lot. Those already moved again. Spy already at all-time highs. And then Bonds, they're down quite a bit. 0.47. Market's up 0.45. We're doing the opposite. Alibaba, not so much. XPO, that's a runner. Again, Toyota was up a little bit more, and then they're coming down here to start off. But the premiums were a little bit jacked up there. Yeah, the Toyota, the snap puts went up to went 200%. Honestly, I thought the snap puts would have went up a little bit more. That's crazy. So the snaps, they're coming down a little bit, but you got 10 cents to like 40, which isn't bad. But you, I thought they were in the money for a little bit. Trex on breakout move. Snap, hopefully. Yeah, snap options open now. I'm getting 34 to 35. Again, they were just at 40, but they're moving around a little bit. Where's the other ones? We had EW. I think Guild was close to the money, but I don't think those have a bid right there. NVO still moving up. Watch Eli Lilly from yesterday. Where is Guild? And then the Fortinets didn't go up? Scammers, bro. So the Fortinets didn't even hit. That's crazy. Did Fortinet come down? Well, yeah, I guess they were again. They're up fifteen percent yesterday. They're only, it's doing the FFIV. Baba did bad. Baba's earnings. They just had a good buyback, but growth concerns were kind of there again. I think the only one that did good that's down is Uber. Meta pop. Meta down one point two. Name is coming off a of snap, and then watch pins. They drop because of the snap too. Dollar Tree on the high. Baba JD is trying to move up. So Bob is still down 3.6. Again, yesterday I was up by like 5% or something. 
We already got the snap up there. There's Meta. Is Roblo still up? Roblo came down, but still rocketing. NYCB. I mean, I think it's just going to boil down to their, uh, again, whether they have another commercial loan to go bust or if they need the money. But that update they gave today, if they're saying they have liquidity, they don't need to sell shares or do anything like that, it's just going to be a matter of time. You probably have to wait till you get another business development. Palanter tweak in. You sold the snap. You were $2 in the money and only went up 300 Yeah. That's crazy. I guess the cost was just high. Because we got 300% or 200 on the uh, out of the monies. But again, that was just 10 to 30 I think. No, those already dropped there. They're already down at $0.23 cents now. So they're killing the Snapchat puts. Meta's on the high. I think, dude, I can't believe Fortinet. That didn't hit. We were up 100% pre. And then again, now after they fell off that 5%. But give it a little time. Maybe it comes back up. Good morning, Romeo. Good to see you, baby. Good morning. Palantir going up. Palantir, yeah, by 0.5. Uh, watch if the China plays. If Again, if Baba could start getting near positive, that'll be good. TSM on the high. They're up by 1.2. UNH, NVIDIA's in the red. AMD, bonds came down. Bonds are still down 0.5. Again, 10-year auction. That is probably going to be the number one thing today. Is Meta hurt? No, if anything, Meta is benefiting. Meta, again, Meta had growth where Snapchat didn't. So Meta is literally up 2% right now. All the other social media plays, I think, are down, maybe except Google. Spotify is coming back up. Remember, they sold off 7 8% yesterday. So they might be able to do a lot. Elf. Elf on the low. Elf on the shelf. Down by 6. Yeah, Disney. That news yesterday. Again, Disney's down too. Disney was right under 100 yesterday. They did not like that news. Then Toyota, they were up a little bit more in the morning. The premiums were a little bit jacked up there. TMO. And then Snap coming right back down. TSM, 52-week high. LMT moving up as well. Uber. Uber is coming up. Bond auctions at 1 p.m. Uh, who was the other one? Guild. They didn't move. Then Baba. Where's Eli Lilly? ETNB. I think Hilton did bad. Airbnb's up today, though. Amazon. They're not doing much. 0. 0.5, though. And then Apple's in the green, even though it looks like they sold off from the morning. Shopify on the high. Palantir, 52-week high. Roblo breaking out now. Let's see, Roblo. Can I sell any of these at a good price? <laughs> um. All right, we'll keep those in mind if that could run up. Roblo was the one you wanted to buy in the morning. Yeah, that one, I'm look. I'm even going to look to sell covered calls, if anything. I'm glad we closed that other one. Snap puts trying to come back up, 10 cents to 27, but still not much. And then Uber plays in the morning, slightly down. Some of the Uber puts are trying to hold up, ironically. I think Uber just got clapped from running up so much because Uber earnings was good. It's just not, you know, again, guidance was raised. Everybody thought they'd do good. But if anything, Uber's earnings just justified this $70 move, if that makes any sense. Baba's on the high now again. Watch if that holds up. Roblo's starting to go. Yeah, Baba down by 2 bucks now, so a little bit better. Go to on the high. I think Pinduo Duo is doing good also. Palantir straight up. VOY or XLV. Valley National Bank. They're down. Another bank getting clapped. Do they have do they have an update on it? And then Baba's coming up. Uber's uh Uber's down 1.2 now, so they're still trying to climb up. Again, Spotify, NYCB Halt. 
Yeah, they're back down. Again, they hit as low as 350 yesterday in pre-market. Pepsi on the high. Watch if any of the value plays keep coming up. Remember, Abby Vi 2, they're holding out a level. Is that Toyota? Toyota is indeed hitting a 52-week high, all-time high as well. Again, Ford had some juice as well, too. So autos should be doing decent. Toyota, do, 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 do. Their stream alerts be active. They should be within the next 24 hours. Well, usually before today. Again, and then worst case tomorrow. Which ones are these? So bonds are ripping out of nowhere. Again, TLT just went up almost half a percent on all of that. Interestingly enough, NYCB halted. Tesla on the high. Roblo, Tesla just got a pop. Again, they were talking about potential layoffs, but now we have the Bradley Frizzle and the Peach Pop. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's here. Happy Wednesday. Horna. Are you kidding me? Oh, Mike, he don't miss at all. You see that? And he just came in right out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, baby. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Peach Day. Shout out to the Peach, baby. Good morning. Good morning, my friend. Are you kidding me? The Peach, baby. Oh, gee, Frizza. <laughs> what? Okay. Where's the Zaza? Zaza's barely down. The peach is already ready to go. It's a beautiful day. Tesla running up here. Again, Tesla got candles. They're hitting the high ticker. Toyota's on the high. Snapchat just holding Microsoft now, then UNH. NASDAQ's up 0.3. Spy 0.4. Russell's the thing down. Meta's taking off. Again, that's been an all-day affair for them. NYCB is halted. Again, I think it's just off of volatility hall after dropping. Meta and Microsoft are starting to lead the way up a little bit more now. Toyota's still going. Where's Ford? Ford's actually up five, but it's coming down. And then Meta just keeps printing. I mean, watch if the bonds go green. They got a little bit. Snap is just killing print. Dude, I thought our Snap premiums would have been way higher. So they're scamming. Uber's coming up. They may go green. Again, Bobo still red. They're not, and they're not as close. Uber for sure, though. Where is it? Roblo back to forty five. Wait, which ones are those? Okay, Roblo move. I'm going to try something.
Let's see. Uber, if again, we grabbed it. Uber's actually green now. So that's actually, I don't know what those plays did. I'm looking at another play right now. And then Toyota's still gassing up. They're scamming me on these. Come on. They really not feeling those little scammers. Right, I'm trying to do some. I'm trying to do covered call play, but I can't get filled on anything good for no reason. On what? On the Ubers? Uber is just priced really high. So again, they even had good earnings. Our plays in the morning they went up a little bit. I overpaid PayPal on the low right there. Dude, these market makers. Every time I put in an order, a hundred orders come in five cents lower than mine. Little scammers, bro. Meta ripping. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at that. Is bo are bonds green right now? Yo, they just went up uh, 0.5. Yeah, bonds are definitely green right now. That's actually crazy. There's Meta, Spy off the bottom, Palanter. And let's see. We'll see if those end up hitting. TLT to green, NYCB open. Yeah, TLT going green is kind of great. Watch if Baba goes next. That'll be the only other, like, deep red to green if that hits. Again, even Uber, they went red to green there as well. We'll see if that one ends up holding. Palanter volumes, dollar, yen, the snap play. Well, again, two standard deviations will usually give us the price on an outsized move, or you could even have the uh, a little predictability on one standard deviation. But even then, those snaps, they, they barely went up. It's like 200%, but with how small it is, that's not that good. This one, not that good. <laughs> CMG Weekly 2700s went from 100 to 2,000 in 10 minutes. Nice. That would have been a great post earnings. Well, yeah, damn, they just rocketed up there. Palo Alto on the high. Palo Alto's doing better than Fortinet, and they're the one with the earnings. These guys is crazy. Pinterest running. They were clobbered by Snap, so they have more of a reason to be able to run. And then now Snap's going to be Gulag. Meta's back at 468. You closed for 400. If you Did you sell, like, right off in the morning? I don't know what they're at now, but last time I saw they were 200. Yeah, right now, $10 to $30. Pins from the high ticker. And then Roblo holding up. That one's not going through. Bond's still green. The video on the green now. Eli Lilly. Yo, old Starbucks play came back up. Eli Lilly rocketing right now. Literally just like a green shoot into the high. Spy bouncing off the low. Again, Spy was the leader. Now NASDAQ caught up. Again, Russell's the only thing doing bad. And again, bonds are green now. 
So that's kind of flipping the dynamic here of the day. Interesting bond land. Again, Fed futures are pulling back a little bit too, ironically enough. The bond auction should have a pretty big reaction today, especially after yesterday. People are kind of expecting a lot. If it's a bad action, we're going to really feel it. If it's a good bond auction, that's going to be debatable. SMCI running. They're actually going straight up. Regen on the high. Oh, yeah. Where's that other one? Amgen. Oh, they did nothing. They went down three. Banks drilling. XLF is starting to sell off. KRE is down by 2.6. Maybe this is why the bonds are coming back up. Because, again, bonds were down a lot here. That flip. Bond auction is going to be at 1 p.m. Snap's earnings are pretty bad. I mean, they weren't bad in the sense of, like, a couple years ago when the company was making, you know, $200 million, but very underwhelming. Again, it was a slight guide on EBITDA. It looks like they're spending more money and just not really anything growing. They're kind of establishing that $1 billion a quarter mark. Yeah, Netflix starting to break out. Abby via 174. So that's doing its thing now, finally. Again, it's getting, I think, 177's all time highs on Abbey TSM starting to hit 52 week highs. We saw that one running earlier. Bonds still going up. How's anyone buying stocks with the bank stuff? Well, no, you're not soft. I mean, just like, sadly, what happened last time there was a banking crisis? Literally, the Fed eased up and everything ripped. That's that's why, like, legitimately how the market's been, you know, the first time we freaked out for, like, two weeks until the Fed came in. But, like, this is what a lot of people are talking about in the bond market right now because it's just, like, last time there was a banking issue, the market was conditioned to buy everything because it, that's actually what ended up working, even with tech. So, like, literally more bank problems, go buy NVIDIA. More bank problems, go buy a bond. You don't really have to worry about the bank failing as much as what would a bank failure cause. New round of Gaza talks to start Thursday in Cairo. Uber. Slow down. It's back to red, though. It's kind of impressive they even went green at one point. Call real estate today. One hour after close, baby. Call real estate Wednesday. Hey, man. Abby Vi 174. 70. They're looking good. Bond auction, 1 p.m. Eastern. Palantir still going. NVIDIA climbing. Spy a little bit below open right now, which is still a gap up. And uh, we hit an all-time high in the morning. Apple's coming down a little bit. JPM, again, banks, bigger banks are selling off a little bit more. And then KRE is in the gutter. Once again, Bitcoin, big jump. NVIDIA 4438 KRE flush to 40. It's crazy how much it's given up up right there. So what you're saying is now NVIDIA is too big to fail? No, I'm just saying that when banks have problems, people go buy tech as a safe haven. So that's just the general concept of what we've seen. Even from last year, anytime you felt worry in the market, the economy, recession, mother efforts would just go buy tech, and then that worked. But again, especially if it's a... Even if it's long duration, if it's less interest rate sensitive, everybody just started buying them up. Unfortunately, that was the sad reality, my brethren. It's the NYCB. Did they get halted again? On the way up, Roblo's trying to go up. Again, that was a great run right there. Airbnb came down. UNH on the high and Spotify. So Spotify's making back some of that money from yesterday. 
Toyota, you need to go Toyota. Come on. And then Snap, still 10 cents to 30 on those plays. Disney didn't report. Disney's just down from that streaming combination. I thought they would have liked it a little bit more, but not so much. What is that? The arm plays? Those went up a little bit. I forgot about that. Arm plays, both of them went up. Calls and puts. Are they today? LQDA on the high. Roblo starting to go. CNC is at Tesla again. Tesla flipped. The Tesla was up this morning on news of uh, potential layoffs. That's what got it going up, but damn. Yeah, Tesla's already flipped red. Very interesting on that. And then Uber's already coming down. That held up for a little bit. Meta's still doing good. Google's flush in. They're about to go red. Snapchat's still right below 12. They're really not letting these go through. All righty. Little cheek clay. Why do people buy Meta? I mean, it's an outperformer. Maybe you like the growth. Only thing I could think of. Only thing I could think of. My goodness. Baba, JD, or Baidu? I like Baba the best out of all of them, but I think all those companies are great. Eli, dude, Eli Lilly took off 3.8. We literally watched that one right in front of us. My goodness. Bro, this is insane. Bro, Roblo options are crazy. I don't know why is this so challenging. Gold straight up, TSM crazy. I'm going to check gold yet. Snap went up, bro. Eli Lilly, though, we saw that first candle, and it's going nuts. Even CMG now, 52-week high. Even Jake State Farm in the chat, baby. Uh, call real estate do, to, uh, call real estate day two on top of that. Holo up 240, 250. Holo. Micro cloud hologram.
Come on. Docu still dropping. Again, didn't they say that other people were backing out from that deal? Or they reevaluated NVO now as well? They just woke up. Even McDonald's. So remember, McDonald's had earnings and then they dropped after that. It's kind of like an Uber. Remember, we made plays. Those McDonald's plays are down though right now. Well, they're scamming so hard on these. All right, there it is, finally. Scammers. I did a covered call on Roblo. I sold the January 26th. Oh, wait, do y'all have, y'all ain't have a thousand likes on here, huh? Oh, just never mind. Just forget I even said that. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't want, we just need, we need a couple people, man. That's it, but I don't know. I want to, I don't want to play with you too much, man. Hold on, check again, my bad. I didn't out check in a little. We're there. We need seven more people. We'll be on there. We'll be ready to go. I didn't I didn't know y'all were, were ready, man. I didn't know. I thought y'all were weren't ready. I didn't want to get you off guard, you know. That's why I'm that's why I that's why I gotta you know make sure I'm good. But yeah, not a recommendation. You will lose money. I've done this several times with my Roblo plays. Literally yesterday we closed out one for like two thousand dollars, but I uh I sold a covered call on Roblo January 26, seventy dollar calls. I sold nine of them for uh, seven fifty, so I got back like seven thousand dollars, I think, or something like that. It's a decent amount. And then again, it's still guaranteeing us a higher price on our Roblo, almost like a hundred fifty percent higher. So it's at seventy. So the other ones I was selling were at sixty, so I'm kind of happy to uh, raise it up a little bit. But yeah, Roblo has been going good. Those premiums died, then came back. But usually these like go like 50% and then I close them out. Mm -hmm. I did a covered call. I shorted the calls and got back 750 a contract. And then I did nine of them because I have a lot of Roblo shares. I've held them for a while. But then, like, I've sold covered calls for, like, the last couple. We made a lot of money on Roblo covered calls. Every time they have earnings, I just sell a covered call. They pop up. They do this. And then we take advantage of the premium. It comes back down. We get paid for it. It's a nice one. Baba is coming down. Baba's now going low. That sucks, man. I was saying yesterday on the watch list, if, it, if it's going to fail, it's going to fail today. If it does have a real people getting excited like that'll hold up for two days minimum but like nah that's just not what's happening here china china not looking good there again the or i think it could be because of earnings but that's it snap i mean what's there to talk about with snap i mean they did bad some people were asking like you know what was it good and it, it wasn't at all uh but then the options too we got kind of scammed ten dollars to 30 cents i think because it was pricing in so high uh it didn't really uh you know, really didn't pay us out like we thought it would. 10-year bond auctions at 1 p.m. So and that's going to let you know if uh, the recent bond route is justified or not. What do you think is holding up the SPY? Everything. All of these runs, again, all these big names over the last, what, four weeks now? 
from the banks to Netflix to Meta, now all these little companies, even Eli Lilly, those are big, NVO, all these names that have had good earnings. I mean, they're holding up very well. So we have brought in out a little bit. Again, even the Russell's like slightly higher as well too, even though it's had a lot of bad streaks. But for the most part, it is, uh, you know, we've been getting a lot of concentration in a couple of names, but then everything else has just been holding up decent or they got a little earnings boost. And then not to mention, even though the Fed is battling against how many rate cuts, everybody is still saying rate cuts. So that's one thing like to, un like that's where at least the way I'm looking at it, or I'm seeing people kind of shift into it. You know how like we're like, oh, they're not pricing in this anymore. They're not pricing in that anymore. And the way the market's looking at it is very simple. They're just all saying, well, the market's still talking about rate cuts or the Fed is. And that's what's getting people hyped up above all else. Boeing, yeah, they're moving around here. NVO 119. Damn, we went like really far out the money on it. NVO. Those are slightly up on the ask, but there's no bid on those. Mm. Toyota still. Those snaps are trying to creep up. Oh, the guilds went up. The guilds, you got 100% almost. So that one finally woke up. We're like, what? Guild, you got time, and then you're about to go in the money on that. 72 and a half. And then Cisco puts her still up. The arms did good for now, too. Netflix greenlights two projects with MLB's Boston Red Sox. I never watched. Didn't they do that NFL thing? I never watched it. Uber building support. Snap new low. The contracts are coming up on Snap. Yeah, Snap 1185. We'll see if that gets us in the money. TW on the high. Where's TM? TM, go, Habibi. Tesla's dropping again. Little talks of uh, potential layoffs. That sent it rocketing up here in the morning. And then now it's already flipping. Yeah, Uber. Uber's still down, though, a decent amount, 2%. But then, granted, still right below 70. <laughs> Tesla on the low. Microsoft on the high. Spy was near the low. Again, it's like near the low, but still green. You've dealt with this before. Meta. All right, that guild is moving all over the place. That guild went up and then came right back down. Thoughts on the yen? I think the April, uh, it might get the shift, so... Pretty much the uh, thing with the yen is that there's no reason to buy it right now. But a lot of the contracts pushing towards after March and April, they have a lot of demand. But right now, too, I think that in the short term, it's going to get affected by dollar strength. Otherwise, in a macro end, you know, April rumors are, are they kind of got some legs right now. What do you mean we dealt with this before? Well, your name's very confusing because it says you got banned for saying. So I'm confused. But what I meant was we, I'm going to have to ban you for that, though, just because your name's too confusing. Uh, but what do you mean we dealt with this before? Is that we've had these days where we gap up, you hit a new high, and then you sell off all throughout the day, but you're still green. So I think we did it more like two weeks ago. I want to say it'd be like day, like kind of these days we like gap up and we like sell off a little bit, but you stay high. Uh, what's another one? This is another day right here. You gap up, sell off, but then you're still green. Gap up, sell off, still green. So just that type of beat here. Cause I'm like, we're coming down, but not really. Everything's still green. Spy 500? Are we? No way. 4975. We are at 79 in the morning. It's close, though. Pull up Netflix. Is it actually running off of that MLB news? A little bit. Yeah, Netflix is already going insane before, but I think it might. That's so weird. Usually the sports ones, I don't think they really, like, do good. 
but I'll take it. Dash from Z Dash ZB heading down. It is. It's flipped. Disney's on the high. Uber. Yeah, Disney. Okay, Disney has a long way to go. Baba. Baba's at the low. Uber came down a decent amount. Again, Meta, they were running up a lot here. Snap right at the low of the day. Not flushing just yet. Axon on the high. Where's Gilead? Gilead looked good for a little bit. I did Uber call. So it was at the low. We went up for a little bit, but now that Uber is giving it up. I may do what Spotify did yesterday. So we'll see. But we grabbed the call. It was a good price initially, and then it got a little cheaper. Then they went green, but now it's... Our Uber puts are holding a little bit of value. So the Uber puts from the day before, they've actually came down now. But they were holding up decent in the morning. SYM, didn't they get, they got an update here today. Yeah, they're up nine. Remember, they're down 30 the other day. Palantir, another high, 5.6. Is crypto still going up? Coinbase down. Didn't MSTR have bad earnings? Palantir's on the high, though. 52-week high and bud right below it. The Donald Trump pump. SMCI's breaking out as well, too. So 688, they're right below 700. Played the XPO. They moved. They did good. They did good. Mm. Is butt off of Trump? Yeah, I read it in the morning. Apparently, Donald Trump asked on Truth Social if it's time to give Bud Light a second chance, which is a very weird collaboration to me. I don't Bud Light and Donald Trump. I don't know how this came about. What both of them are thinking, you know? That's how you like Bud Light had to like sit down. They're like, maybe we should get Trump to bring us back. And then Donald Trump's like, I don't know, man. Maybe I should partner up. With like a big company that can support me right now. Maybe let's go after the Bud Light in the whole transgender beer situation. Maybe we can figure out. Maybe this is the company we, we go to. They paid him. Yeah, but like, I don't know. It's such a, you think it's a perfect pairing? I feel like it's still both of them had to kind of, they're, they're both kind of sacrificing on, on what they've all been, on what they went through. It's kind of a gamble. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because then what if the people who like Trump are like, no, fuck Budweiser. And the people who like Budweiser, and then they're like, no, nah, screw Trump. Well, we'll see. Spy rocketing up. What the hell is this? Bro, 10 points off of the bottom right here. 49.82. I don't know, man. Maybe we do it. Maybe we do. Maybe we end up pumping it up today. That's crazy. That's crazy. <sighs> Futures hit 5,000. Mm -hmm. Netflix green. Yeah, SMCI, that chain is crazy. But SMCI looks interesting. Again, like I said, if I could find the cheap contracts, I'm down, but they are a little pricey there. Yeah, it might again, it was just at 688. I mean, you're really you're right next to the 700 and then it hasn't hit 700 yet, has it? Yeah. So it's right there. Again, there's a couple of out of the monies. You know, you got to pay a pretty penny for them. And then the whole option chain is just messed up. But then again, they all just move 10, 20% right there. Good luck, my friends. Good luck. What is this? I don't know. 
I think this is just, again, not bad earnings. Anybody with uh, the how pretty much everybody digested all the rate cuts from yesterday or any talks and movement of rates being priced in and out, the discussion is still, so you're going to cut rates, right? And then that's it. Nobody's really caring too much on the timing. And then again, earnings has not provided anything bad for now. Microsoft on the high. Like, you got to think about it. What was the worst earnings you saw today or in the last month? Like, what was the worst one? The McDonald's are coming back a little bit, but they're still dead. Coharis on the high. They had earnings. Roblo coming down. PayPal's already down. Disney came up a little bit. Baba cannot get a bid. Uber's still trying to hold on. And then NVIDIA and SMCI, those are both active. VFC. Yeah, they were down 11, but like, then again, it's not like it was, uh, like, you know, they've, they've been failing. So just kind of like what, what has been like a high profile, big name that has been like bad snap and NYCB. But again, like snap, like, did anybody like really expect it to do good? <laughs> you know, they haven't had a good earnings in, in a year and a half. NYCB. I think that was probably the most surprising I could get behind that. I think that one, again, they cut their dividend and, like, you know, it was one of the cheaper banks out there. But, yeah. Tesla Green. Snap leaps. I think Snap is still up 50% from the beginning of last year. So, unfortunately, I just I would go buy something else with more value. I'd rather get Pfizer than Snapchat. Until If Snapchat goes below, like, 8 bucks, I might be down to grab a little more. You know, level out our 600 shares, get us up to 700. Palantir, Weezin, Pfizer. Again, Pfizer was on fire yesterday. And then I prefer shares over a leaps. But that shouldn't be too interesting. Again, I we haven't bought Snap in three years. So when Snap is up, I don't like to buy it. And then when Snap is down, I'm, I'll buy it when it's really, really down. Otherwise, you know, we could build out a lot of other things in the portfolio. I think it's been longer than three years, four years now. Again, the last time I bought Snapchat was in 2020. No news. Honestly, I think this is just kind of chip stuff going up. But other than that, I'm not seeing any news. Not even like war headline stuff. 498. Dude, are you kidding me? We might be doing it. We might be doing it. That's crazy. That's crazy. We might have had to get it. I'm getting it prepped up. That's insane. I I heard it. I heard it in the background. Yeah, ES futures already passed five. Dude, that's insane. Four nine eight seven. It's a little bit more insane than the day with the non farms, because remember we had that that was like a hundred point run up, but all you did today, I guess this was fifty points so far. 30 points you just gapped up and now we are running though and then again bonds are still kind of in the same exact spot at least this is better though where markets are going higher it's it's changing a little bit of the correlation mm. no snap puts the arm puts are up almost 100 so that's good we'll take that for now I forgot RG and X. That one's coming back. Interesting. Palantir, Spy, Roblo, Uber. Roblo coming down a little bit. I'm glad we sold those covered calls, but they're still up a shit ton. Starbucks came down from yesterday. Who's the other one recovering? McDonald's. So, again, value plays are kind of split up. Abby Vi's about to hit 175. My goodness. PayPal. PayPal's a little bit weaker, though, here in the morning. So, Viva C. Mm -hmm. 
how do you get over the rig market and keep it at this all the time? I'm struggling to care about the market. It's so effed. Because even if it's rigged, you are still a sailor. You know? Uh, and that's why, I mean, honestly, the real answer without getting too philosophical or giving you some analogy is just time. If the market is rigged, if you get a long term, it's rigged in your favor. That's it. That's at the end of the day, you could quit the gambling any given moment and just go grab the long term and let it just keep working for you. You know what I'm saying? Like that is really the answer. No matter what. Like, again, I like stocks. I like real estate. I don't care how messed up the world is, how rigged it is. Once you get some of these longer term assets, it's it starts getting rigged in your favor. That is the answer. You know, other than that, you know, the philosophical answer, you are a sailor at sea. The ocean is not always out to get you. But sometimes, you know, if you keep sailing in a certain weather and then sometimes, you know, weather, bad weather comes up out of nowhere, you know, you have to navigate it. But, you know, the more you kind of view yourself as cursed, the cursed will will arise. But, you know, with with all of the philosoph phil philosophy aside, it's just like just get a long term. Just no matter what. Yeah, day, tr day trading or anything short term is always going to be there. I got the LT. I just keep, I love tracking markets. It's hard. But what if you have the long term, don't don't make it hard. Just turn it off then. Like you don't have to keep, if it's bothering you, like remember we talked about yesterday, you know, if you make a habit out of getting angry, it's going to be easier to get angry. But like what's like, I guess what's bothering you? You know, you're saying it's rigged, but if you have the long term, Unless you're making plays and losing off of it and getting worked up about it. Like I'm saying, just take a step back. You don't have to watch the market. You don't have to trade it as much. You get a long-term and coast, and, and you'll be good to go. MSCI World Index rises to 0.5, highest level on record. So Global World Index is at its highest it's ever been. Oh my goodness. 4988. This might be a little level here. We'll see how this plays out. But Chad, I need to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I will see you in a little bit. BRB. No, how many people had that on their bingo card? So we talked about tech, we talked about healthcare, we talked about energy. Where are you avoiding right now? Well, I think that some of the areas that you have to be a little bit careful about, one is evaluation situation. So even though we like tech, you have to be a little bit wary of some of those valuations. We like the semiconductor space, but some of that stuff has run a lot. And so I think that there are places where you want to be a little bit careful. And even in places that we like, like energy, you need to be mindful of the fact that this could be, again, something you want to trade around. You want to make sure you're getting paid to wait so you've got a good dividend, you've got some buyback and some company support there. I think that there are areas where, you know, it's hard. Retail has been very difficult to piece out. You know, everyone is changing some strategies here and there. Amazon is still taking share. There are some places you just need to be careful. It's not so much avoiding a sector completely. Yeah, it definitely feels like a, a tra trend shift, a sea change that goes, is going on in retail right now. Sarah, really enjoyed this conversation. That, of course, is Sarah Hunt of Alpine Saxon Woods. And later today, on the note of healthcare, I'll be speaking with the CEO of Novo Nordis. That's at 12.30 p.m. New York time. Now still ahead though on this program, we'll take a look at the companies making the most social buzz today. Social Climbers is up next. This is Bloomberg. My name is Nikolai Costa Waldau. And I believe I this moment in time will be when we started to transform the way we likes to save time by going green that makes no sense i don't understand this commercial the fuck mm -mm. eli lily again everything that could be even lifting up the spy a decent amount too prometheum the only u.s registered crypto platform picks ether as its first product cd i don't know what that is all right man spy bro i think we're about to pump it up that's insane five thousand Again, on a week after pricing out more uh, imminent rate cuts, but data has been through the roof, and then now just earnings, though. I think all the earnings are hitting. You're at 49.90 now? 49.80. What? The chart won't even go up. 
49.89. Ten more points. SMCI now 6.99. That's about to break out. Netflix is starting to go up. I think all of your big tech. Again, Meta's even back to 470. Meta's up 3%. You just like spending time with the Chad? Maybe time to step away for a bit? You don't trade much, but when it's to the sell side? Well, yeah, if you're, I mean, if you're making bad decisions on it, it's just, if it's genuinely making you angry... Like, why? Like, yeah, you know, I, I don't disagree with you 100%. But, like, at the same time, too, you know, there's a there's a nice peaceful way. You either come to terms with it and don't expose yourself to where it bothers you or you just put get it in the long term and then just don't look at it, you know, and you'll, you'll be good to go. But if it's you're literally watching the stock market going on stream and just getting bothered every single day, and it's not, and it's not what I'm saying. It's just like the market, you know, <laughs> that, that boy just don't give it that much importance. And I think you'll be good. HD, but on the high still, that's running. Pfizer a little bit. Hey man, if it just holds up yesterday's gains, it's good. Marriott on the high again, Hilton had earnings. They went down and then came back up. Microsoft up. Where is Toyota? Come on, Toyota. Do it for the kids. A UPS break even. So, again, they're still holding. Airbnb is starting to come up now. Snap is still. So, we're about to get in the money on those snaps. They're just barely up, though. Just right under 40 cents. Uber, Baba, and they're not moving as much. Where's McDonald's? That one keeps going. I'm still in Snap, yeah. So, like, this now takes me down to my, like, break even on it. Or like a little bit lower after the covered calls. And then on the Schwab account, I feel like we're barely down on it now. So after this, now we go negative after this 30% drop. Otherwise, it's been good for us. Let's see. Where is the Snapchat? Yeah, we're down 4.5% now on Snap. And that's after a 36% drop. So otherwise, we were up on it ahead of it. I wish I sold those covered calls. That would have protected me a little bit more. But I got greedy with Snap. I wanted to do a lot of big money on that one. Thanks. I need to ponder. Let me clarify. It's nothing that you're doing. Oh, I know, man. I'm aware. I'm... I'm saying I've gone through trading. I've taken breaks from trading. I just I walked away. That's it. And it was a good time in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't. So I feel you, man. I think a lot of people, even in the Chad, man, it's just not always. Uh, but it's something you have to come to terms with. And, you know, kind of on your own, your own pace there, figure out, you know, all right, how am I going to handle all this? What do I want to do with it? But, you know, if something, you know, don't put yourself in a situation that, that makes you feel not good all the time. And that's what I'm saying. Just like balance it out with the long term. Don't trade at all. Don't look at it. If it's just the stream, you know, you could go put your efforts towards something else. Come back later. Never come back at all. It, does, it doesn't matter. All that matters, though, is that you make a, a good decision that, that keeps you healthy and happy. Four nine nine, dude. This is insane. This is insane, bro. Bro, seven, we're about to pump. I didn't, dude, the amount of times we have pumped it up already. Again, welcome to February, first couple weeks of the seasonality. This still is making sense for now, though. It's all going crazy. You have that seasonality on your, on, on your side, and it is definitely looking like that right now. This is insane, bro. High ticker gas in. You're about to pump it up. It is, what, 1030 right now? One hour in. 
you gapped up to a new high, and then now you're continuing to set more. $13 million in volume. Let's see where we're at market-wise. All right, you have 19 names red on the NASDAQ 100, 82 in the green, seven names red on the Dow, the other 23 in the green, and then SPY, 174 red, 322 in the green. I think, dude, even Enphase, I forgot about that. Solar, dude, Enphase is up 20. Some of these names that are like kind of broadening out, I think that helped out a lot. SPR on the high, crude oil inventories, SPR rocketing actually. 30 cent pop on SPR. That's a, that's like 1%, I think. Crude oil, negative 33 versus 1.92. Crude oil inventories, 5.5 million. Estimate was 2 million. Is oil getting knocked right now? Oil's going up on that. Interesting. Distillate draw of 3.2 million. Estimate was uh, 2.5 million draw. The Hateful Eight. Is that the new name? Hateful Eight? I have not heard that one. Mm -hmm. You covered Baba. Well, we just talked about it briefly. The earnings weren't that good. And then the China recovery stuff from yesterday wasn't enough to keep it going up like that. So honestly, I just think Baba Baba and the China stuff, if they don't find a way to bounce tomorrow, maybe it could just be the earnings reaction, then that's going to be not not a good sign for the uh the whole China recovery and what's going on there. Tesla flip green. Yeah, they were really green, though, in the morning, and then they sold off pretty heavy. That one is a weird one. For the automakers aren't moving much. Toyota's just staying pinned at this high right now. Disney's going to be a big one. I mean, again, Disney's already knocking on the door of 100 and then selling off on what is, I don't know, kind of good news. It's kind of hard to explain, but we'll see. Those arms are going up there a lot. And then Snapchat, you got 10 cents to 37. They're not doing much. Where's Palantir? They're still up. NVIDIA's killing it. SMCI, again, they were knocking on the door of 700. Pump it up level is at 5,000. We're there. I can't believe it. Again, just like last, last Friday, I, it was more unbelievable because of the data, but... This one just kind of crept out of nowhere. Again, there it's not like you had too many big events, but then I, I, in a weird way, I think there's some sleepers, like Enphase going up, Chipotle, Palo Alto, Fortinet, like some of those, like how they're spreading out through the market. I, I think it's kind of broadening us out a little bit. Russell's not doing good, but these aren't the small caps. These just aren't your mega cap, but they're they all still got size. Oh, Tiana and Marcus, baby, Tiana. Oh, God bless you guys. Thank you. I don't know how I didn't see those. <coughs> Horn. Get hyped, baby. You're about to pump it up. <coughs> Not really? I don't know. It depends on who you ask. On who you ask. My goodness. Emerson gave up 10 on earnings. Yeah, bro. That one's up. That's one of the biggest names on the S&P right now. That's number two. Emerson is up literally number two on the day. And then NVIDIA is still climbing. Again, Meta, that's the thing. Meta is up 3.3. So even Meta is running up a lot. And like I'm saying, Enphase, I think, is help adding a little bit. Even Roblo is up 10. So you got a lot of movers on, on just different fronts. Uber breaking out equal weight. I don't know. I feel like equal weight's doing a little better today. Four nine, yeah, equal weight is breaking out as well. It was higher uh, on Friday. So last week when we had that little Friday fiasco, equal weight was doing better. But 
it seems like you just have a different composition of names moving up. So literally, we hit another little baby high right there and then still another red candle. Prudential on the high. Humana bonds are running up. Bond just got a bit out of nowhere. I have one PayPal play, but I don't know if I'm going to hold it. That was like a pre-earnings play. It's bad. It's actually up 50% or 10 or 30%. NYCB in talks to offload mortgage risks, plans to sell RV loans. Mm. It's way too late. That's why I think bonds are making them. That's both either really good or really bad. But watch. That's why it makes sense. Bonds get a bid, but see if they sell off. But then that's more bond supply, but at the same time, banks more crumbling equals more fear. Bonds are when pop and lock on that. Again, I think off the NYCB news. Again, RV. Are they, are they talking recreational vehicles or I don't know, an RV loan, residential value? I, that doesn't make sense. I think they're talking about, like, recreational vehicles, right? Yeah, I think they're talking residential vehicles. Or recreational vehicles, excuse me, like camping. Like RVs. That's a very weird segment to sell off. Again, I'm sure there's money. I guess there's just loans for it. Just a different type of loan. Those are high interest too, I'm sure. Pinduo Duo's on the high. So again, Bob is down, but they're killing it. JD's down, Baidu's down. Literally, Pinduo Duo. I think they're just benefiting off of eating uh, Baba's lunch. NVO, another high. I'm surprised. We had like the 130s or something, though. I thought those NVOs would be running by now. They're just doing it slow. Snap puts. They came up 40 cents now. 10 cents to 43, so it's not too bad. But, again, their snap's down 33% right now. We'll see how it reacts there. Five cents from going in the money. PayPal, I'm only in on calls right now. Bond auction, I don't know. Because I, you know, I'm kind of leaning towards it'll be good. Because the three-year auction was good. But then also the way I'm just thinking about the bank stocks. I just think with all the bank stuff going on, we might watch a little bit more demand into the uh, treasury market. Three senators warned Biden against repurposing Defense Department radio spectrum for commercial uses. Are the snaps going to rock it once they... No, it just, it's going to move dollar for dollar. So that's it. The snap puts were just expensive. That's why the premium gain, like again, the stock dropped 33%. You're up 300% on a 30% on a out the money play. So, like, even the ones you get in the money, it's just moving dollar for dollar. So, if you have a $13 put, it goes down to eleven fifty. You know, you have $2.50 of value or, or $1.50 of value. That's it. So, it's just, and then if it goes to 11 you get another $50 a contract. So, bonds are starting to move. That's a big reaction there. NYCB, are they going lower? But I guess the warning, again, warning sign, they're selling off a unit. But then it's like it could increase bond supply, but at the same time could increase bank fears. So very weird there, but bonds are starting to move a little bit more. Watch the two-year. Again, shy might be a little bit more sensitive. That's not moving as much. 30 years moving more. NTLT kind of moving the same. And SPY coming down off the high. European Union said to be seeking sanctions and travel ban against Tucker Carlson for his interview with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uber. NYCB new low. Yeah, ECB wants to ban Tucker Carlson.
We'll get Riley, another small bank stock. Oh, they're kind of murdered. Remember, people were bringing up B. Riley a couple weeks ago. There was another bank that was selling off pretty hard today, too. Biomarin on the high. Amgen lower. You have CEW. They're staying kind of pinned. And then Spy's still holding. We gave up a little bit off the top. Bonds are starting to react a little to that bank stuff. But your high of the day is 49.95. That's amazing. That is amazing. Why do we level up? I can't really tell you. I think it's just a mix of uh, broadening out factors and a couple of the other big earnings out of like Enphase, Chipotle, Emerson, just a lot of random ass companies. And then your chip names and big tech also had like anywhere from one and a half to 3% boost, but no real reason. Maybe the China stability from last night, that helped out a little bit. You didn't see it too much this morning. No bad news. Everybody chalked up. Everybody's taking all of the Fed comments to still mean rate cuts, even though it's not as many as the market is pricing in a weird way. The market is still saying the Fed is wrong, but they're agreeing that the Fed wants to cut. So creating a very awkward dynamic, but I, I do think today's just broadening out, but I'm, I'm still pretty surprised that we're approaching 5,000. Is it true short positions take three to five days to cover? I mean, that's how long it takes to settle a trade, depending on how you're doing it. But you could cover a short whenever you want. It just depends. NYCB in discussion to sell $1 billion portfolio of recreational vehicle loans. It's also considered pursuing a synthetic risk transfer to raise capital versus home loans. Ah, so they are trying to sell. Remember the synthetic risk thing? So they're going to just sell off pieces of their bonds on like, and then, you know, have people put up capital to take on these higher risk. Ones. Remember, we made a video on that one. Interesting. Yeah, so beyond just the RV thing, they are trying to, it looks like they are looking to raise some capital. That's not good. Well, real estate is just in real estate's already in trouble on the commercial side. That's what already caused this. Yellen made some comments too, but the general idea here now is that, bro, if they need to raise capital, then that means the problem uh, might be a little bigger than we thought. Yeah, snap. We're at 50 cents now, 400% on the play. Woohoo. And then killing the long term. But either way, I don't know. I still. Maybe I'll sell out at a dollar. Hey, if we get a thousand percent, I'm down. They're saying deposits good and increasing. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're learning from last time, though. So instead of going out and saying we need capital, they're like, hey, our deposits increased. And out in abundance of caution, we want to sell out. Bonds are running, though, off of that, off the NYCB stuff. So again, a bank wants to sell assets. People are rushing to bonds, sell literally loans, and bonds are catching a bid there. So I do think that is, uh, I think that's NYCB effect right there. Mm. Destroying long terms in the chat, but the puts hit. Yeah, sad day. But again, any other time that's happened in the last year, Snap has came back. But you should be down 4% on Snapchat now. That is our, our cost basis after everything. So cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. We're going to catch on. I don't know. I think the bond auction might be a little better. We'll find out, though. Only bad would be bad, though. I think even good, though, might not necessarily be very good, if that makes any sense. So unless it's, like, super strong, I don't think a good reaction is going to, like, cause... Too crazy of an effect. I didn't know the wire. I think it's because I have to restart.
Yeah, this wasn't the snap LT killer. It just sucks that they haven't been able to go up. But, I mean, you, we did have good gains on it from the beginning of the year. I mean, we were up 75% on it. <laughs> so that's the crazy part. Snapchat was literally up 75% year to date. But it's, uh, what's it called? It's not even like, again, we haven't bought it in four years now. But one day, one day, Evan will have a good report. One day. One day. That guy tried to drop kick Arnold? Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. Or wait, I feel like that sounds... Wasn't that like from 2020? Wasn't it at like a school? That sounds very familiar. Unless it's like a new trend people are doing more than I thought. Yeah, that's old. National Security Sullivan says focused on plan to get Ukraine aid through Congress. Says we still believe we can and will deliver aid for Ukraine. SKRE short banks times two. I didn't know they had that. Yeah, inverse regional banks. No shit. Be careful. <laughs> that is wild. I didn't know that even existed. Mossy on the high. NVIDIA. So chips are making another move back up here. NVIDIA new high. Spy trying to tick back up. High ticker has a lot of activity. Again, Palo Alto. Ended up running more than Fortinet. That's insane. Scammers. Regional Bank ETH is SKRE. So just put an S in front. I've never heard of it till today. Chad just brought that up. Twitch Chad got Bitcoin. Disney, they're trying to climb back up. TSM's going up. Bond's calming down a little bit. Snap going a little lower as well. Options. I think you should trade that with shares more so than the options. And snap. Fills the gap at like 1140. Mm hmm. Oh, the Uber calls from this morning went up. Interesting. So Uber's back in the green. Yeah, Uber's running by Snap. I, like I said, Snap, I'd wait. Uh, you know, we have a great price on it. And again, this earnings, there's nothing exciting about Snapchat in the last couple of years. But I would just, just don't forget this stock was at $8. So again, it was up 75% up until yesterday on the year. Uh, or li literally, I think since last quarter, since last October, Snapchat went up 75%. So you're down 30, you're like halfway down from where it could be. So there's like another 50% it could drop, uh, worst case scenario. If someone like Meta buys them, probably, but at this point, I mean, their valuation is high. So it's still like a 19 or $10 billion company. Here at 11. It's not the worst part to buy it, but it's like you could also be patient. It just all depends. Like, again, if it does have a little rocket rubber band, like you're going to love it at 12, 11 bucks. But at the same time, if it goes down to eight, when there's a lot of other cheaper names out there, too, you're going to be like, why the fuck did I buy it? The Nevada Republican primary. None of these candidates won with 60% of the votes. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> what? Mm. 
They all got 33%. Oh, the none of these candidates option has won in Nevada's symbolic Republican primary. An embarrassing result for Nikki Haley, who is the only major candidate on the ballot. <laughs> what? for the White House. None of the candidates won the Nevada Republican primary last night. I mean, literally, that was an option on the ballot and it earned more votes than Nikki Haley. Former President Donald Trump was not on the ballot at all. So here's why. Nevada has both a state-run primary and caucuses run by the state's Republican Party. The caucuses are the only contest that actually counts toward the GOP's Republican nomination. So President Trump chose to take part in that vote, which is tomorrow. He is expected to win easily, so Haley opted for the primary instead. And despite being the only major candidate on the ballot, lost. Meanwhile, President Biden faced a little opposition last night. He won on the Democratic side. His next primary is in Michigan on February 27th. Interesting. Interesting. No, no none of these candidates. I was like, what do you mean? None, none of them won. That makes more sense. That's crazy. President Camacho, 24. Woo! It's happening, bro. It's happening. So maybe 28. Yeah, Mickey D's is coming back. Oh, those premiums on the ask are going up. We might get lucky on McDonald's. Disney is coming back up, 99.21. I'm surprised it's already recovered that much. 99 is a big level. Netflix going up too. Again, the way, doesn't Disney have earnings today? Yeah, Disney's today. Disney, PayPal, and Arm. And again, Arm even getting a run up there. That'll be good for all the chips. ISRG on the high. I think they have earnings as well. Cigna, Spy holding near the highs. We have Euro close in like 40 minutes. Dow is up. You got Net booking 52-week high. Airbnb trying to climb a little bit. Where's Abavacious? He hit 175 today. You want some Starbucks? Oh, that sounds good right now. That sounds good. Bro, I like the morning workout, though. I, I kind of feel y'all. It was cold, and I only got a couple sets, but that like that got my blood pumping. That felt very, like, it felt caffeinated. Like, it was good. I feel I feel a lot more awake today. Literally, I only did two sets. I did two sets, but it changed my life. Disney at 100 would be beautiful. And then, again, it's probably just going to hit 100 and then earnings. So then we'll see. We don't need to. I still need to go. I just, I only got a couple sets in. I didn't have enough time. I spent too much time trying to poop. And then I had to get, and then my, and then my computer froze too, which sucks. I did, uh, I did two sets of like dumbbell bench press. And then I did three sets of like tricep pull downs on the machine. But then like, it just like, that was only two little, two different workouts. Trying to get an ice bath in the morning. Now you're okay. Come on, man. Dude, I'm barely getting a workout in. You need to calm down. Now you want to take me, have me take an ice bath? I ain't Najee Wolf. Only Najee Wolf got that on lock. I think Ivan got it on lock too. I can't be doing that. You crazy, man. I got poop and then maybe we work out. Maybe. We got to get that in. Yeah, the arm call is good for now. I'm glad we got two of them. So I think even the arm puts, they're barely down. But now we we need like a little bit more. Five more cents, we'll get 100% on the arm calls, and then we could sell one. We could literally sell one, and then that'll pay for both plays, I think. That's the crazy part. No, I have to sell both contracts. I woke up at 5. I got in the gym at, like, 5.45. So I only took, like, 10, 15 minutes, and then I just came on right before we went live. So you guys heard me, like, two minutes after lifting, and then my computer froze. When do you go to bed? Like 10 o'clock? 
give or take. Is there a gym? I didn't go. I just went into my, I have a home gym. So I just went and like, I got a machine. I got a squat rack and all that shit. So I just went into the cold ass garage and started lifting. Got a Peloton. Nah. Maybe though. Maybe. I know I could get a Peloton cheap though. I know people who got Pelotons they don't even use. So I know they'll let them go on the low, man. Bowen's ripping to 1180. Palanter and end phase. Palanter, I think it's good after day two. Again, they, they surprised. They had the AI talking points. Overall good, especially to bring it back up. And then end phase. End phase wasn't good. People just got excited. And I, I really think... You can't underestimate like the effect of like Enphase and Tan and Solar and then all these other broad names that randomly came up today. I think they had a, a very big effect on the market. Dollar popping. I didn't check the DXY. UUP looks messed up. Dollar one oh four. It says it's down today, but yeah, dollar just rocketed up here in the last like ten minutes. The Disney options have premium. So my like far out the money Disney's, they're they're up over a hundred percent. That's the only thing you gotta watch out for. So like the whole Disney chain has actually came up and stayed up. Can you help find an earnings play for hood? You don't understand the two standard deviations. What are you not getting? So do you know how to price in the expected move? That's the first step. Tesla drop. Amazon M oh no M E H N D L. Fubo extends decline worse since May twenty twenty two. Damn, they're down thirty two. They didn't even have the snap earnings. They're just that's just because of the Disney deal. Guild puts. Uh, which one was it? No, guild puts were green in the morning. We had a hundred percent on guild a dollar ago, and then it bounced. And they stopped doing. It. I'm still in the Russell. Yeah, those plays are green. My M2K and Russell are still green, but I have an ES short that, that was supposed to print. Where and then I ain't seen Sidihu in a long time. Whatever his name was, he bailed on me so fast. But yeah, Russell's green, and then ES is red. I have PayPal and Disney. There, I I both went. I went early on both of them, and they're both green. I didn't close the guild put. No, I held it, but it was up, and then now it just came back. Just didn't move. And then Toyota that was up below, right below a thousand this morning too, and then came down. Then I sold covered calls. I actually made a thousand bucks on the covered calls. That's the crazy part. So, like, you could literally go buy back those Roblo covered calls and you'll make a thousand. I may hold them for a little bit because they have a lot of premium. But literally, like, on the ask right now, you'd make a little bit more than a thousand on those. What do I do in my free time? Just live, you know, do a little bit more real estate work, hang out with my family. My girlfriend got a puppy. I don't know. Just play a little 2K. Pray a lot. Live, laugh, love. I, I bought the sign. I put it in my kitchen. Not really, but 
I respect you if you got one. I feel you. I like Eli Lilly a lot. I just think it's too high. But then again, I've thought that for hundreds of dollars lower, unfortunately. Russian unemployment 3.0 versus 3. What do you add up? I use the ask price. You could use TD Ameritrade, but I use the ask price, or if the spread is too wide, use the last trade. So you could have a general idea. But homie didn't follow up with me. I asked him. I was saying I was trying to help him understand it. He wanted me to do the Robin Hood, but he didn't. he didn't answer my question. All right, spice still coming down. We got 30 minutes here till Euro close, like right on the dot. You're below 49.90, but remember, this was a new all-time high even for today. Even in the morning, we hit a new all-time high. Fed Kugler, pleased with great progress on inflation. Optimistic it will continue. Kugler, Fed job on inflation not yet done. Kugler will remain focused on Fed's inflation goal until confident inflation is returning durably to 2%. So they all just have the same, like, what's it called? The same, like, hawkish tone, but then all implying cuts still. Risk to dual mandate roughly balanced. Our policy stance is restrictive. Kugler, at some point, cooling inflation in labor markets may make rate cut appropriate. So, again, they're all, like, pushing back, and then the story still is rate cuts. PhD economists with research interests that range from labor markets to policy evaluation in developing countries. So she hasn't even spoken yet. She's been a professor at of public policy and economics. This is live and right now. Provost at Georgetown. So these are all her pre-written statements. And most recently was U.S. I'll put her on when she comes, but this is what she's going to say anyways. She says the disinflation progress stalls may be appropriate to hold policy rates steady higher for longer. Kugler sees reasons for optimism on service inflation where there has been less progress. Kugler core services ex housing still elevated, but expect improvement. This is just the intro to her. So I have the live video, but she's literally not even speaking right now. They're just introducing her, but her pre-written text has been released. Kugler continued moderation of wage growth, normalization of price setting, anchored inflation likely to contribute to continued disinflation. Pleased that cooled and labor demand has not led to rise in layoffs. What? Kugler, how spending momentum will evolve this year? An open question affecting disinflationary process. Honestly, if she's saying jobs with cooling, I think she's kind of more dovish. But again, everybody is playing the game. They they hit out with these statements. Sounds kind of hawkish or just as hawkish as the last guy. But then again, the whole point of the story, they're all still talking about cutting rates. Kugler says she expects consumer spending to grow more slowly this year. Should help with disinflation. Kugler, some measures of financial conditions have eased, but remain relatively tight and are consistent with continued progress on inflation. Kugler paying attention to upside inflation risk from geopolitics. I think Kugler is new. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if I've even seen her before. Like, I don't really know what she even looked like. I'm googling her now. Adriana Kugler. Oh, we've seen her, but we had we saw. Her. I think she used to work for FSOC. Yeah, she's. I think she's the first Latino to the board, or to the uh, to the governor of directors, or one of them. We've seen her before, but I feel like she, I feel like she worked in banking supervision.
I have not exited the snap play. I think it's maybe at 50 bucks right now. Yeah, 10 cents to 50. So 500, 400%. I think it'll it'll gap fill the last earnings at like 1040 here. Or like 10 or 11.33. So I might cover around 11.30. Okay, here she is. Dual mandate and explain how I view the current stance of monetary policy. So I know Cece did a great job and she was very generous in introducing me. But by way of introducing myself, I think myself, her effects have already factored into the market in both too, though. Academia and in public service has included a focus on labor markets and inflation. In my academic work, I have explored various aspects of labor markets, including the effects of labor market policies as well as the role of educational attainment, among other topics, as well as detailed measurement in terms of productivity and prices. As CC said, as the chief economist at the U.S. Department of Labor, I engage regularly with the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which produces data on both employment and inflation. I have approached these topics through both a rigorous focus on measurement considerations as well as a broader view of the real world experiences of the people who underlie that headline data. And believe me, I will continue to do that as a member of the FOMC as well. With that background, I will now turn to recent economic developments and the outlook for this year. The pace of inflation continues to slow. 12 month inflation as measured by the personal consumption expenditures or the PC index was 2.6% in December, WDC down from a peak short report. of 7.1% in June of 2022. And the six-month rate for PC inflation was even lower, at 2%. While the FOMC uses PC inflation for our 2% target, we also look to core PC inflation, which excludes more volatile food and energy prices as an indication of the underlying inflation trend. Core PC inflation was 2.9% in December, also down from a high of 5.6% um, back in February 22. Core PC inflation on a six-month basis was even lower at 1.9% in December. So we have made great progress. Indeed, the slowing in total and core PC inflation uh, that we have seen over the last year or so is the most dramatic we have seen since the early 1980s, even though obviously progress may be uneven from month to month. I like to look under the hood of the inflation numbers for clues about the inflation outlook. A lot of the disinflation we have seen has come from the goods sector, where many prices have actually fallen as demand has cooled and supply chains have mostly healed. Price declines in the goods sector have been helpful, though the core goods category constitutes less than one quarter of the total PC index. We have seen less, though I would say still meaningful progress on services inflation, but there are reasons for optimism. Measures of housing services inflation are naturally persistent. Tenant rents move slowly because of the prevalence of year-long lease agreements and estimates of owner-occupied housing costs are imputed based in large part using those tenant rents. So these measures react only gradually to data that comes on newly signed rental agreements. And such data do suggest continued, rental, continued declines in terms of housing services inflation, a category that accounts for about 15% of the total PC index. That leaves us with the important category, of course, services excluding housing. This category saw a 12-month inflation of 3.3% in December, down from a peak of 5.2% in December 21. Continued overall disinflation will depend heavily on core services excluding housing, which accounts for roughly half of the total PC index. While the inflation rate for these categories is still elevated, there is reason to expect improvement, as I will now discuss. 
So I see three factors as likely to contribute to continued disinflation, especially in this category of core services excluding housing. Continued moderation of wage growth, normalization of price setting behavior by firms, and anchored inflation expectations. First, the disinflation process is being held by wage growth moderation associated with the ongoing cooling of the labor market. The pace of payroll gains has slowed considerably over the past couple of years. The three-month average of payroll gains surged above 700,000 in mid-2021 and then trended down through 22 and 23. Of course, last week's payroll report was quite strong and the three-month average gain jammed to nearly 300,000. But the broader trend has been one of moderating gains. This moderation in payroll growth largely reflects cooling demand and actual and hiring and hiring plans have actually eased as is evident in the job openings and labor turnover survey or JOLTS data. In other surveys as well, we see the same trend. So job openings have also declined such that the ratio of openings to unemployment has come down to 1.5 from a peak of two and is now closer to the pre-pandemic ratio of 1.2. I am pleased that this cooling of the labor market has been accomplished without a marked rise in layoffs, which would impose hardships and difficult transitions for individuals, families, and communities. At the same time, labor supply has improved significantly, returning to pre-pandemic levels. Labor force participation has risen for prime age workers since early in the pandemic, particularly among women who last year reached the highest participation rate on record. And we have seen an increase in immigration, a source of workers that is particularly important in certain sectors. For example, in the construction sector, about a quarter of all workers are non-native and in leisure and hospitality, the share is about one-fifth. With easing labor demand and robust labor supply, we have seen a slowing trend for wage growth. Of course, as a general matter, I prefer to see robust growth of workers' wages. But for wage growth to be sustainable, it must be consistent with 2% inflation. Further wage growth is slowing is likely to be important for ongoing disinflation, particularly in the labor-intensive services industries. For private services overall, 12-month growth of average hourly earnings was 4.4% in January, down from a peak of 6.1% in March of 22. More specifically, in leisure and hospitality, earnings growth was 4.4% in January, down from a peak of almost 14% in late 2021. In education and health, earnings rose 3.7% in January versus a peak of almost 7% in late 2021. Some of these sectors did see a pickup in wage growth in January, but overall, the broader trend is one of cooling. I mentioned these sectors because they exemplify just how labor-intensive the services sector can be. For example, labor costs are roughly 60% of value added in leisure and hospitality, and more than 80% of value added in health and education. An easing of labor cost growth in these and other labor-intensive sectors is likely to be passed on to consumers as lower wages and to help reduce inflationary pressures. Let me now turn to the second factor that I mentioned before. The second factor that is likely to contribute to continued disinflation has to do with how frequently individual prices are adjusted by firms. Research by Federal Reserve Board staff and others has found that the rise in inflation during 21 and 22 mostly reflected firms changing prices very frequently rather than firms making very large adjustments when they did change prices. In particular, before the pandemic, the median price lasted 
more than 10 months. But by early 2022, the median price was lasting less than five months. Encouragingly, the frequency of price adjustments has declined. And since then, the median price duration is moving up to seven months. I am looking for a return to pre-pandemic price adjustment patterns in the services industries in particular, as cost pressures ease, and as the FOMC's action to support a return to price stability continue to affect consumer and firm behavior. There's some signs that businesses may be more wary of the responses by consumers to higher prices and may already be responding by raising prices less frequently. For example, mentions of consumer price sensitivity have become more common in the Fed's recent page book, which reports economic conditions across our 12 districts from various market participants. The third factor that is going to favor continued disinflation, in my view, is one that is related to the other two factors that I have been talking about. And that's the stability of inflation expectations. Inflation expectations can fit into wage demands and negotiations, as well as into price setting decisions. To understand why this matters going forward, let me first look back. Over the past couple of years, some workers have demanded large pay increases to catch up with higher than normal growth in the cost of living, resulting from various pandemic-related shocks. Some of these wage gains, in turn, likely pass through higher prices as part of firms' frequent price adjustments. If expectations for future inflation had become unanchored or persistently higher, then workers might have continued to demand higher than normal wage increases going forward, and firms might have continued to pass on these costs to consumers. But inflation expectations have stayed reasonably well anchored. As inflation expectations stay anchored and in tune with inflation is slowing farther in the future, employees many of whose wages have recently been rising faster than inflation, are less likely to continue demanding very large wage and salary increases. Similarly, as businesses expect the prices of labor and other inputs to rise more slowly, or for some inputs even to fall, they will be less likely to plan to significantly increase their own prices throughout the year, which in turn helps to reduce inflation. Survey data from the Richmond Fed show a close relationship between the firm's expectations for overall price inflation and those firms' own price setting plans. In particular, as inflation comes down, firms become less reactive and inflation expectations play less of a role in firms' price adjustments. Several data sources support the idea that expectations are indeed well anchored. One closely watched source is the Michigan survey in which expectations for inflation during the next five to 10 years have remained fairly flat recently, near levels seen for much of the past decade. And, inflation, and, and expectations for inflation in the year ahead have come down a fair bit after peaking in 2022. Expected inflation in the New York Fed survey of consumer expectation shows a similar pattern, with both one-year and three-year expectations close to the pre-pandemic norms. Expectations also appear well anchored in surveys of forecasters and in market-based measures of future inflation. This information suggests that firms, workers, and investors understand that price and wage setting behaviors are likely to return to pre-pandemic norms, which will help us to return the price stability that we enjoyed before the pandemic. So I have noted three reasons I expect for continued progress towards FOMC's 2% target for inflation, and I believe monetary policy has played a key role in driving these factors. An open question moving forward is how spending momentum will evolve this year, which may either help or hinder 
this disinflationary process. I expect consumer spending to grow more slowly this year than last, which would help with disinflation. Large balances of excess savings accumulated early in the pandemic have supported household spending during the past few years. By now, these excess savings are likely exhausted, at least for the lower half of the income distribution. And we have begun to see signs that some households have come under increased stress, such as rising delinquency rates in credit card and auto loans. Just two days ago, the Federal Reserve released this January survey of senior loan officers, or SLUS, and that survey showed continued tightening of credit card lending standards, the latest in a string of such surveys documenting tighter conditions for a variety of consumer lending. These signs of tight financial conditions point to slower consumer spending. Business spending growth is also likely to be a bit slower this year, since the widely discussed boom in factory construction may level off, albeit at a higher level. Eventually, equipment investment should rise to fill those newly built factories with machines, but the process will likely be gradual. And I closely watch developments in broader financial conditions as well. Some measures of financial conditions have become a bit less restrictive in, in recent months, but remain relatively tight. Indeed, the FCIG, a measure of financial conditions published by the Fed and other indicators, suggests that overall financial conditions are consistent with continued progress on our inflation mandate. So I am pleased with the, the inflationary progress so far and while. expect it to continue. Interesting. I must again, emphasize, else, however, her whole speech already that the committee's the job part. is not I had to done go to the bathroom, yet. But I came back. Consumer spending was surprisingly strong last year. Gross domestic product grew at a nearly 5% rate in the third quarter, laid by consumption. And even though spending and output growth moderated some in the Bond fourth quarter, at 1 p.m. Eastern. consumption contributed nearly two percentage so points hour to fourth quarter GDP growth. So consumers could surprise us again this year, and that could slow progress on inflation. Last week's employment report was also surprisingly strong amid a broader cooling trend. It is important that supply and demand in both product and labor markets broadly continue moving into better balance. I am also paying close attention to some upside risk to inflation posed by geopolitical developments. Russia's ongoing war on Ukraine and the widening the of the conflict pricing. in the Middle East could I swear contribute I was going to higher commodity prices and disrupt yeah, no, global no, I think trade, open face, he in turn the other pushing one. goods inflation what do you think up it's in the U.S. In? I'll just confirm it for when you, I worked at the World Bank. The I followed these issues and international supply chains and commodity prices closely, and I certainly will continue to do so now. I will remain focused on the inflation side of our dual mandate until I am confident Bonds are coming down. that inflation down. is returning durably to our 2% target. I am keenly aware that high inflation vastly complicates Business Uber decision making. Those Ubers from and the morning are up over 100 now. Creates serious hardships for our most vulnerable individuals and households. Having lived in Colombia during periods of high and volatile inflation, I know firsthand how destructive it can be. It is critical that inflation returns to 2%, as that is indeed the pace the committee has deemed to be consistent with price stability. Of course, I am mindful of our employment mandate, and I am closely tracking labor market developments. While historically, we have sometimes seen a trade-off between inflation and employment, as Sisi pointed out, the recent experience of this inflation has been sustained without a significant rise in unemployment. I do expect job growth to continue. However, history has shown that labor market conditions Uber can change very quickly, next best sometimes before we see but didn't they just write off in spending data. 
Thus, I am watching very closely the totality of the data with risks on both sides of the mandate in mind. I am also cognizant of international risks to our employment mandate. For example, a broader slowdown in Europe or China, two of the engines of global growth, could become a drag on the U.S. economy. For now, I see the risks to our dual mandate as roughly balanced. Our policy stance is restrictive, but the target range for the federal funds rate has been a study for some time now, and the most recent summary of economic projections by FOMC participants suggests that the rate is at its peak now if the economy evolves as expected. At some point, the continued cooling of inflation and labor markets may make it appropriate to reduce the target range for the federal funds rate. On the other hand, if progress on disinflation for some reason stalls, it may be appropriate to hold the target range steady at its current level for longer to ensure continued progress on our dual mandate. In summary, I am pleased by the progress on inflation and optimistic it will continue. But I will be watching the economic the data closely another high. to Uber, verify the Boeing. continuation of this progress. And then new low on SNAP. This approach is the surest path to achieving and maintaining both of the FOMC's economic objectives and promoting an economy that benefits all Americans. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if they do any questions. I don't think so. Though. Oh, wait, there's two seats. They might. All right, this could get interesting. So, again, we already responded to everything well, like 10 minutes ago. thank you very much, ago. Governor Cooler. I think you lived up to CC's billing. Is that Bernie Sanders? Uh, no, it's not Bernie Sanders. You had a lot of information there on inflation, labor markets. You made your views very clear. So we're honored that you chose uh, Brookings for your first speech. And, and it was a, it This was is a her one. first speech. Thank you, Don. Wow. So I, I think let's... See if we can dig in a little bit here. You've emphasized that the committee's job is not done, that your eyes are on inflation, and the primary emphasis is right now, anyhow, is hitting that price stability part of the dual, the dual mandate. So what would you be looking for? I mean, we've heard Jay Powell and others say they're looking for some more good data. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Could you spell out a little bit more what you mean would like data. to see before you decided that it was time to begin easing those interest rates off, that you could be confident that you were getting to the 2%? So um, that's a great question, Don. Um, I don't want to speak for the chair, but I will NYCB speak for myself. NYCB, right. And I, I remember to, having to say that all the absolutely, time. <laughs> absolutely. Especially with Ben in the audience, I had to say it. <laughs> Ben Bernanke's uh, there? Uh, what, I, what we have seen, obviously, as I said, is uh, rapid disinflation, in particular in the second half of last year. And if you look at the, some of these six-month and even three-month measures, yeah. we're already hitting the 2% or even below the 2%, right? So people are wondering, well, what else, right? Uh, so the issue for me is if you look at this, three categories of inflation that I mentioned, goods, housing, and services ex housing, they're very telling. All right, goods I inflation sold the SNAP put started falling for 53 all the way cents, back at the beginning $10 of to 53. Housing inflation, we'll as I said, some money back on that. It's either going to dump further or now it's filled that last it's earnings gap. But we expect it to continue coming down given market rents information that we have and better data on new rents. So that will continue coming down, but that only started in 2023, uh, maybe around mid-23. Housing services, uh, uh, services ex-housing, on the other hand, only started coming down in the second half of 23. It had been very, very persistent, very stubborn. And that, as I mentioned, accounts for 50% of the PC index. So that's the element uh, one of the elements, I should say, because there are many other elements, too, that I'll be watching for. But that's one of the elements that I'll be watching to see continued and sustained declines in, 
right? I will be watching for that services ex housing to continue showing us this inflation because that is a key component indeed. Of course, there are other components such as wage growth moderation. That's key because as I explained in my speech, right, that feeds into services ex housing inflation. So there are a number of elements, but that is certainly one of the elements that for me is important. And it's not that we haven't made good progress. We have. Indeed, we made very rapid progress. It's about seeing that it's sustainable and that it's durable. And that is very important to all of us. To clarify, that inflation doesn't, the services X housing inflation by itself doesn't need to get down to two in order to, but it does need to be low enough that a lower level of goods inflation would then, you would average the two, is it? Absolutely. I mean, goods inflation, um, we, have been defla we have seen deflation in, in terms of goods prices, right? I mean, we have seen a decline in prices in many goods categories across the board. Yeah, you have Fed so Collins comments already. coming now. So that may level likely up to some. cut rates later so this year if economy meets direction. expectations. That's about a of the total PC index. All right, hold on. You got pre written uh, statements from Collins. The monetary policy is well positioned for current outlook. Progress back to two could be uneven and bumpy. And then Fed Collins, when cuts start, they should be general and methodical. Uh, supported FOMC decision to keep rates steady last week. Needs more data before supporting rate cut. Goods inflation, which means That's another Fed speaker right now. So as you said, with this other aspect, which before had been very stubborn, but it's certainly moving in the right direction. And we see, we want to see that. Well, she commented on jobs report. Fed Collins says job data in January shows why caution is warranted. Economy needs to moderate to get to 2% inflation. Age growth. So do you think, some people have said that if productivity is one and a half-ish, then wages have to be, wage growth has to be three and a half-ish. So are you waiting until wage growth gets down there? Is that one of the key factors? Or uh, how, how are you judging whether lab, labor, you said labor markets are nearly in balance, but not quite in balance? What would you be looking at to see those, whether those labor markets are in balance? And how, what, how, does, what, how do wage, wage growth factor into that? Yeah, assessment? thank you. Thank you for that question. I, I definitely think demand and supply for labor are coming more into balance. Uh, we have seen some moderation of, of the demand for labor. We have seen job postings come down by about 25% since their height. And we're seeing a little bit less hiring. As I said, the good news is that we haven't seen that lower demand for labor show up as layoffs. At least, uh, I mean, I know there's some people in the media here, the technology sector. There's some. Okay, I'm selling out of my in, Disney. In parts of the economy, but it's still showing up in aggregate data, right? So it's not coming up in big numbers. I'm going to show you what um, I'm about to do with So it. that's one side. So we got a hundred bucks from fifty. Some moderation in labor demand. Labor supply has really helped, I would say, in the last year. As you know, during the pandemic people withdrew out of the labor force in big numbers. Um, and that has really changed. There were some excess retirements during that time. So many of those people will not be coming back. The good news is prime age workers and labor participation of prime age workers is at pre-pandemic levels or above even. In the case of prime age women, and then I we bought the two standard deviations. I made a new Disney play. From prime age so this is ten dollars out of the money. Time. It's pricing and in five. And those numbers are still not a, at oh, record. Me, I don't know if you can hear me. Levels, to be honest, so that's so not a recommendation. You will lose money. I sold out of the Disney's, and then I bought the Disney eighty-eight put, and then the one ten call uh, to play for the uh, two standard deviations. So pretty much use the earnings play to make them free. Uh, leisure and hospitality, they make up 20% of the labor force, so they really make a difference in certain sectors. And according to census, uh, so back in December, census just released new numbers on population growth and labor force growth. Uh, they tell us that about 1 million people enter between June of 22 and June of 2023. The CBO has released numbers, which tells us that those numbers are even bigger. Right. So those numbers 
are probably helping in terms of labor force participation. And maybe some of those immigrants haven't even fully come in to participate in the labor force. So maybe we're still to see some, <coughs> some impetus in labor force participation <coughs> uh, from that side. So that's helping. And again, that brings us more into balance. Another aspect which I would say is usually unappreciated, but you know, as a labor economist, I pay attention to these things, is uh, improvements well, in you. match Thanks. quality match quality and the speed of matches. That's essentially um, an increase in effective labor force participation. And there is evidence of that. So that, that's another additional impetus on, labor for, on the labor force side that really helps to bring us into balance. Now, as to your question, we do need wage moderation. We have been seeing it, especially in the services sector, as I mentioned, from 5.2 to 4.4. Um, all of the data, whether you use ECI, whether you use the average hourly earnings, no matter what data you use, show you that trend down um, has been happening. And in some sectors, as I mentioned, leisure and hospitality, they came down from 14% to 4.4%. Uh, so that, that's happening. It's, it's very real, and it's making its way through, right, in terms of filtering through prices to lower prices. Now, where do we need it to be exactly? That, that's not so clear, right? I, I wouldn't pin it to a number. I do want to see that continued trend, but it depends on productivity. It depends on markups. It depends on many other factors. So I would say roughly we think it needs to still come down some more, and we're not quite there yet, but it's definitely moving in the right direction. So I was about to ask you about productivity. You just brought it up. We've had two big quarters of productivity growth. Do you think productivity is in the process of picking up, or is that just make up for earlier misses? I think from 2019 or so, we're still about 1.7 or so, something like that. So how, how are you looking for, at productivity? So the way we usually measure productivity is as, as productivity per worker, right? So naturally, as there is some moderation in labor demand, that's going to pick up. Uh, that, that's one factor that is contributing to that, and if that continues, that will continue to happen. But the other part is, is technical change, which everybody's talking about, right? AI and, and actual technical change and, and productivity changes that are here to stay. And I, I think it's too early to tell, right? Mm -hmm. we, we need to see if generative AI is, in fact, going to to be here to stand to make a difference um, across the board in many industries. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Like what <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the factors you've cited, so the increase in labor force participation, maybe even the degree of immigration, the unwinding of the COVID, uh, COVID supply chain issues, some of the, so the, the remarkable performance of the U.S. economy is importantly, as you've emphasized, uh, a result of increases in supply as well as the Fed's damping of demand. Is there a risk that, that those increases in supply won't continue, would make, uh, would make your job somewhat harder uh, to uh, continue that progress toward inflation? Is that one of the things you'll be watching? Absolutely. I, I think your characterization is, is right, that the, the situation we're in now is related to both what has happened from our side at the Fed and on the demand side and the increased uh, restrictive stance of policy, as well as the supply side, right? I mean, we see supply side uh, issues as winding down, as I mentioned in my speech, they have been healing. But I do not think they're fully healed. I think mm. there's still room. Okay. There's still room to go on the supply side, both in goods and in terms of labor. I, I mentioned extensively where I think we can still potentially make some in increased progress in terms of the labor supply side. In terms of the goods side, I would say there are many measures on supply disruptions and how much uh, they have gone away or not. Um, the Institute for, for Supply Management, for example, has some measures. They show that 
um, delays in deliveries, uh, backlogs, all of those seem to have gone away. But on the other hand, if you ask people in manufacturing about whether they have full access to work at capacity, they tell you they're still seeing shortages in materials. Mm -hmm. There is about 20% of companies that still see shortages in materials, um, in production, in manufacturing. That did come down from 45% back in 21, but, but there's still some substantial uh, right, disruptions that are, that are still there that, that kind of still continue to, yeah. to work their way through and help us. So some of the goods disinflation could be Pardon, pardon my language, transitory. I said that, you didn't say that. But some of it, it may not persist, right? I mean, RGNX, a, I think, was this the other bio we grabbed the other day? As I said, there, there has We're been back a to green on that one, but that one had, they had phase two data. Since, uh, since early 2022. Right. And, and right now we're seeing deflation. Yeah. We're seeing a reduction in, in prices of many goods. So let me ask a little bit about where uh, we've discussed a little bit about what you'll be looking at for when to begin easing off policy. Let's talk a little bit about where the ultimate destination would be. So in the Federal Reserve's uh, <coughs> quarterly forecast, the median, F the median projection by FOMC participants is for interest rates to settle out, nominal interest rates at 2.5%. But there are a lot of people who think that there are upward pressures on those longer-term interest rates. There are increased deficits. There are building supply-side resilience, um, all kind of, uh, things like that. So how, how are you thinking about once the path begins, where is it going to – is it going to – portend a bit higher uh, our star a bit higher final settling place for for interest rates so as you know there is a lot of uncertainty in measuring the neutral rate of interest so deficits coming persistence of uh, of demand persistence of these uh, dissolution of supply side disruptions but even technology and population right so there is a whole lot of uncertainty. So I, I don't think anyone is about to find out what our star is today, right? But, but we do think about these issues, right? I think more important than thinking where exactly we're going to end up is what that path will be and thinking about the different factors that will be relevant in determining where we need to go next. So as I said before, I think... This inflation is clearly happening, and it's happening at a good pace. It's continuing. We see reasons, as I mentioned, to see that it would continue. I think uh, growth and employment have been resilient. So we see that side of our mandate also as, as moving so far in the right direction. Now, the job is not done yet, so <clears throat> we will certainly move forward in terms of the federal funds rate and that path will depend on how we get and how we start seeing our movement towards our target, mm -hmm. towards target inflation. So that will be critical. Having said that, I do think, and I am watching closely because historically we have seen incidents where unemployment rises suddenly without much warning. Mm -hmm. So we're watching that also closely, and that will also determine our path. But I, I would say the path is what is most important than the ultimate end goal, which, which we won't know until we're done with it. Right. Thank you. Let me ask one more question before we turn to the audience. Financial stability issues. So very prominent uh, in the news today are concerns about commercial real estate exposures at regional banks, uh, their equity, their share prices are down sharply. Uh, do you see the CRE problems, office buildings and some retail as a real threat to financial stability? How do, how do you judge how, how well is the bank, will the banking system cope with this uh, oncoming repricing 
of, uh, of commercial real estate? Yeah, let, let me just generally say that, that there, there are significant sources of resilience in terms of financial stability. Uh, for example, the balance sheets of households and, and businesses seem to be solid. The banking sector, despite the, the events last March, uh, seems to be sound, generally sound, though we continue to monitor closely. Uh, I do... I do pay Damn, a lot AXP of attention at 207? to CRE as a source. It's another broaden name out there. I think it is um, something we need to continue to monitor. Um, valuations appear to be much higher than than the actual fundamentals, uh, and this applies in particular for uh, office space. And I think you know we have seen changes in return to office uh, policies in people working from home, all sorts of things that that change that need for office space. So there seems to be some issues uh, with valuation, which haven't fully realized because there have been very few transactions in the recent past in those right. properties. So we don't know exactly, but we're certainly watching very closely that side as well as non-banking sector institutions. All right, as well. not a recommendation. I but sold but one of the Ubers. Say the regional banks. Uh, the from the uh, morning, I had a hundred percent on them, so I spent twenty dollars and I got for two of them. I, mean, I just you, sold one you, for twenty-two dollars and got my money back. And now we have one free Uber call. Have the exposures. I do, I actually do serve in the subcommittee for okay. small and regional banks, uh, and so that that's something we pay attention to. Right? We pay attention to exposure to commercial real estate. We pay attention to how well capitalized banks are. So we're definitely keeping a, a close eye on those issues. Okay, thank you. So let's turn to the audience. Yes. When and are you going to cut rates? Let's make sure there are questions. Tell us specifically. <laughs> Yes, um, you've presented and discussed a lot of very favorable ma mic macroeconomic data. But a person who cares about who the next president is Please is well aware of the fact that um, at a micro level, people don't think the administration is doing a very good job on the economy. <laughs> so what has to happen for the macro developments to be reflected in micro developments? So I'm, I'm not going to speak for the administration because, as you know, the Federal Reserve is an independent and non-political agency. So I'm going to, I kind of speak oh, for how I see. Oh, it's independent and non-political. Uh, okay. Right, that, that potential disparity that. between the macro data and how people are feeling that data in their real lives, right? So I, I mentioned I care about this. Right? I don't just care about right, the aggregate numbers and the average numbers. I realize we, need, we talk to a lot of people as members of the board. We talk to a lot of people from across the country, from different communities, to hear their stories as well. So I think there's an issue, right? The, the data that we see is the average. And we do realize uh, there are differences between different groups. For example, as I said, uh, household balance sheets are, are in pretty good shape but we're seeing some weakening of household balance sheets for those in the lower half of the distribution. Uh, increased pressures in terms of excess savings disappearing, right, after some of the help that they received during the pandemic. Or uh, they need to start repaying student loans again. Or the very high prices of auto insurance, right? Things that affect, like, day to day, right? Your bills and, and how you see things. Um, I think that's where you see some of the disparity. I, I think also it's important to remember, right? Prices have gone up, the level of prices have gone up, and that's something that people see every day, right? The price of gas, the price of eggs, milk, bread, what you consume every day, every week when you go to the supermarket, when you go to, to the gas station, right? This is kind of how you, you view things. So those prices have gone up, but wages have also gone up and they have gone up by more than prices. So I think people will realize that real wages have gone up at some point. They'll start seeing that the two things are coming more into balance. And that, that is, I think, in part why maybe sometimes people are not feeling that progress 
uh, in their daily lives, and they're not seeing the improvement necessarily. Yes. Introduce yourself, please. I will, Don. Thanks. Rich Miller at Bloomberg. Uh, thank you very much for doing this. Appreciate it. Uh, the Fed seems to have set a fairly high bar for the first rate cut. Um, Chair Powell has said it will be a highly consequential decision. Um, Governor Waller has said the worst thing, a, a big mistake would be to cut and then have to reverse. And, and, in, and the FOMC itself says you need greater confidence. Does that suggest that once you clear that bar, you can move with some alacrity to reduce this uh, amount of restriction that we see? Thank you. Thank you for your question, Rich. I, I think it is um, something that we're paying attention to. I would say that, that we, we, don't, we don't actually know, right? Because even from now until March, right, we're going to get two new reports on inflation. We're going to get one new report on jobs. We're going to get another new report on ACI, so compensation, right? We get a lot of new data even between FOMC meetings. So I would say we, we cannot say, oh, yeah, we'll, once we cut, we'll go gradually or we'll cut right away. It, it will depend on many factors. I, I don't think we can call it out now. Were you part of the median 75 basis point cut in December? You know, I've been uh, at the FOMC uh, yeah. for the past four meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so that tells you, right? Okay. All right. More questions from the audience <laughs> before I stick my foot in my mouth even more. <laughs> Louise. I, I, I'm there, right? I mean, I, I'm in all those meetings. That, I'm in the SEP for, for the past two cycles that have included a SEP. Hi, Louise Shaner from the Hutchins Center. Hi, how are you? Um, so you mentioned sort of thinking about inflation in three buckets, which is how I think about it. We've got housing, we've got goods, and we've got uh, services X housing. Are you worried about the possibility, or how would the Fed look at it, that you actually go below target next year? Because with those pieces, with deflation on goods being higher than it is normally, it seems quite possible that you might say that underlying inflation is still this not is quite Fed a target, but the actual Krugler, Krugler. is below. But there's a lot of people in the audience here, which, again, it's the Brookings Institute. So there's a decent amount, um, so and then these are live said, questions. None of these are pre-written. A little bit of well, or pre-written statements. On the good side, we, we don't actually know, but there's some factors that could create upward pressures and goods inflation. Uh, I think the issue is how it averages out, right? And we are thinking, as, as you mentioned, about what's measured and what's measured. For example, in housing inflation, we definitely think it is lower than what it looks like right now because if you even look at this research series that the BLS has put out on new tenant rents index, right, that shows you plus market rents that we estimate using open sources show that that's probably lower than it looks like right now. So we're taking account of all of that. We're definitely looking at, you know, not only what's measured, but what we, where we actually expect it to be. I'm just saying if goods deflation continues the, at the rate it's been, you could get an inflation number of, you know, one and a half next year, and you might still say we're not done. And I'm just wondering about that kind of difficulty, if that could arise. We're definitely thinking of that, yeah. <laughs> but, we, you know, we, I, I think the, the whole issue is that, that it averages out, and there are still reasons why it makes, we may expect upside surprises to, to inflation, as well as downside surprises on employment. The risks are roughly balanced, so we don't know where it will go. Another question. Yes, the back of the room. Pedro da Costa from MNI. So to follow up on Rich's question, you mentioned we'll get a lot of data between now and March. Is March a live meeting in your view? And then secondly, why do you think it's taking so long for shelter inflation to ebb given how long new rental you go. That's the question you want to hear. rentals have been uh, falling? He's coming in with some, with some guns. So let me start with this second one. Um, as I mentioned, there are these year-long lease agreements. So the way 
the BLS collects the data on housing inflation, which fits both in the CPI and PCE. Um, is by by looking at a sample of, of renters. They they interview people every six months. A six of the sample is interviewed every six months, and then they slowly add people to each of those six of the samples. So it's very slow moving. That's why they created that other series that I mentioned, the new tenant rent index, to capture only new renters. So that's, that helps to kind of look at actual changes in prices of the same property, holding The market's still climbing right? back up. So Again, you had Euro close. That's one of the reasons, We haven't right? done much, but when you are we higher. Look at that new research series that they're creating, when we look at uh, market rents that come from other sources, uh, Chip makers are still working their way back up. Something different. We see a faster decline in housing prices. It's just and not Google. coming through the data yet. We think and that's Meta. already starting to happen more quickly than it shows up. Um, so can you can you repeat your first question now? Is March a live meeting? <laughs> you knew the question. So look, every meeting is live. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. We don't make decisions or close the door because we will get new information. We have to react to new conditions. We have to react to information that is coming at us. We are not going to make a decision now for a decision for something that is going to be um, made in, in seven weeks from now. Uh, certainly, March, May, June, every <laughs> meeting from now until the end of the year and moving forward will be live. Every meeting is live. Okay. All right. Yes. Why'd they ask? He's trying to get more insight into March. I like the question, but no answer. No answer, Habibi. And then Spy going up. We got one hour until the bond auction. You are getting close to breaking out on that high again. Hi, um, Brian Senna with SW4 Insights. Um, I'm curious for your thoughts on the role that wages play in inflation, and is it perhaps time to de-emphasize how much of that is a trigger for any potential concerns about the inflation rate in terms of like the, the wage price spiral? And should we, because I feel, I feel some would argue that, especially between the Great Recession and now, wages were sort of lagging behind, and then we had the pandemic, and you saw this acceleration in wage growth. But it seems that inflation was caused by other factors outside of wages. So do we need to be as concerned about people getting higher wages? So first let me say that real wages are up, no matter what measure you use, right? Real wages are increasing at 1%. If you use the ACI, they're increasing at 1.5% if you use the average hourly earnings. So they're going up. That, that is the reason why I mentioned, right, if people see that, they're going to start demanding lower wages because they can keep up with the cost of living. That's really important. So that will, that will continue to play in until we're more into balance, right? Um, of course, there are other factors. I, I would say we have not seen a wage price spiral. I would say we have not seen that type of dynamic, and I described that in my speech. I, I just don't think that actually happened in that way this time around. Um, and that was managed through uh, inflation expectations and precisely, right, both firms, businesses are realizing, well, they cannot keep posting prices at that level because consumers will push back. And by the same token, workers are realizing, well, my salary is now above uh, what it was to sustain my cost of living, my usual cost of living, and, and so that that's something that, you know, makes me think that it can not put, put it this much pressure in terms of, of increasing, asking for higher salaries and wages. And that, that is happening, and we hear stories like that. All right. I think that we're about out of time. So thank you, Governor Kugler. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Kugler. Thank you, Don. Feel free to come back of anytime. Course. We'd be happy to welcome you, you again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not bad. Honestly, a couple. She had a couple of moments, but I mean, sadly, I do think from the Fed futures, they, they got a little bit more hawkish when she was talking. But for the most part, and then you got Fed barking right now. He says it makes sense to be patient on rate cuts. I know that was a little bit ago, but 
pretty much all of them are causing the same reaction. They are all pushing back against the rate cuts happening soon, but then all of them are still saying we are going to cut rates this year. I've been saying that all day, even monitoring that whole reaction there. It's playing out the same way. So the market is just kind of focusing on the conclusion there and then the little details. The market's still doubting that the Fed isn't going to be that is going to be cutting rates uh, later in the year. The market still believes we are going to get a, a rate cut sooner than not. But everyone's just kind of focusing on the uh, reaffirmation of them all saying, you know, later this year, we're just waiting for data. yibbity bobbity boo mm -mm. And then again, Fed Collins. Who was it, though? Where's Barkin? Fed Collins, is she still talking? I'm getting headlines there. Powell on the high, P-O-W-L. Yeah, so I think Barkin and Collins may still be speaking. I don't know if they're live here, but for the most part, again, Fed futures kind of pulled back a little bit, but they're still a little bit more bearish than yesterday. So, or a little bit more bullish, excuse me. They got a little bit more bearish throughout the day, but honestly, I, I'm... Right now, I'm looking at the market, seeing what that's doing, the broadening out of today, and then the rate cuts, though. Everybody is just chalking it up to they are still going to cut rates. So we'll react once we have data to react to. Again, Powell probably holds the most weight, and you saw the reaction he gave us from Sunday, but now everybody else, there's not anything crazy. See, Fed Collins right now says we'll be appropriate to begin easing before end of the year. So again, she said, important to be sure it's not on the path to lower inflation. They say something about the speed, and then they say, we still believe we're going to cut at the end of the year. And that's what pretty much everyone's riding on. But Fed futures stopped moving. Bonds did come down during that speech on the long end. And remember, I think today with the bonds, uh, may just be a bigger effect here from the banking stuff. So keep that in mind. And then we do have that auction here in an hour. So one hour till the next event of the day. I'm sure we're going to get a couple more Fed comments. So that was a lot of them. Mm. Powell, no, no, no. He doesn't. He spoke on Sunday. So we just have random Fed speakers. We have a couple more tomorrow and the next day. But what I was saying is that, like, Powell's comments, when Powell says what these guys say, the bearishness hits the market a little harder. But so far, every Fed speaker, even from yesterday, we have borderline, you know, sifted through everything they said and then just said, yeah, uh, they're going to cut rates at the end of the year. And then the markets, even the, the equity prices and how people are reacting to what's priced in in terms of rates, kind of ignoring it again, because everybody is still saying there's going to be rate cuts. Even the Fed saying it, the market and the pricing is just saying they think there's going to be more than the Fed is currently expecting. Yeah, Meta star. Meta, dude, Meta's up 3.6, a big company there. Again, Google was just running up. I think you had Tesla. You have NYCB off the bottom, still down 11%. What can make TLT move? The, the bond auction itself. So if weak bond auction, TLT is going to die. Uh, a strong bond auction, TLT should get a little bit of a bounce. But I'm, I do think... It should be better, but even a good reaction on today's bond auction, it may not give it like it may not give it the juice that you saw last week. Remember when TLT was going up last week, everybody was getting hyped on it. I don't think a bond auction that's good is going to move it like that today, but a good reaction will help. But then a bad reaction will have uh, pretty negative consequences on bonds. This is if you could play any long term bond, the 10 year specifically, it'll be IEF. That'll be the 10-year ETF or slash ZN for the futures. I'm in ZB, but the 10-year, uh, this is the literal 10-year auction, so that will move the most. You tell if it's good or not based upon the results. So it's going to be at like 1 p.m., and then like three minutes later, you get the full results of the auction, and then it lets you know what the bonds sold at versus the price of the bonds before the auction. So if the bond yields are lower than before the auction, that's a good auction. If the bond yields are higher than from before the auction, then that's a bad auction. Mm 
Tesla. And then again, we sold out of the Uber. We sold out of the Disney. Then rebought another one of the Disneys. And then we got out of the Snapchat play. 10 cents to like 55 or 53. Bond yields higher is bad. Yes. Very simple. Uh, and, and again, don't tie that to the market too much because, I mean, again, on this year, bond yields have gone higher and the NASDAQ has hit new highs. So, but just for the sake of bond auctions, higher than the when issued, negative, lower than the when issued, positive. Arm, those plays are good. I'm glad we did that. I'm going to make those free eventually. I think we need a little bit more of the gains, but even the puts are holding up on arm. Was that Uber again? Yeah, Uber's still up there. Uh, again, Baba, no love on Baba. Pindu Adu, I think, is only China play that's up. Some of the metas came back from last week. They're not up at that premium they were at, though, but they are moving. Toyota, dan, 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 dan. Escondido. Last few philos got my soul at all-time highs. Appreciate you, brother. Mad love for the chats. P.S. Like the video. Oh, tell him. Oh, I could like it. I could I could get a like to the super chat. God bless you, Kevin Wells. Oh, no. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> and, man, we got we got philo and uh, earnings previews later today. Today's kind of flying by. It's already 9 o'clock. We got like an hour. And we'll get into it. Pump it up. Uh, bro, Procter Gamble and AXP, I keep seeing those on the high. Remember, those are the good earnings from a couple weeks ago. Mm. Tesla. Fed call it says it's possible that R star has increased. Uh oh. So she's saying that the level of restrictive rates may be higher. So she's saying the rates aren't restrictive? Fed Collins jury is out when it comes to Fed's neutral level. Mm. Might take to see how demand is slowing. I found her. Keep front of mind as well. We will look forward to hearing how your thoughts evolve on that one. What I thought we would do now I is shift after. our attention to a few questions that uh, were submitted ahead of time from our members and then open it up to the live, um, you know, to the floor to see, see what else is on, on everyone's mind. So uh, this one is moving to the mandate of financial stability. Uh, one of the things that we have, of course, seen are um, some bank failures that occurred last year. And post SVB, um, Vice Chair Barr proposed a number of capital requirements, and Basel III continues to be debated. Can you talk a little bit about what are the lessons and how should we assess the level of adequacy of capital, especially for regional and smaller banks where we've seen yeah. some of that stress come through? Roblo yeah, so back happy up. To, to talk about some aspects again, uh, you know, a large uh, number of dimensions to that. I'm not going to say a lot about the Basel III, about the Basel III. Um, so as you mentioned, the, uh, in the aftermath of SVB and the, uh, you know, the banking stresses that we had um, back in March, um, there was a, a really in-depth study to try to pull out what the lessons are and then to work to address them. And there's a lot of work going on as we speak to try to follow up on what the, the key lessons that came out from that report were. What, are, what were the key lessons? And just, uh, just to kind of summarize, there, um, you know, the, the management and board for SVB did, you know, there were some real failures in terms of the, um, uh, you know, oversight of operations. It's also true that the banking supervision missed some Booking vulnerabilities. Booking all-time highs and now. Things that were identified, there could have been, you know, more assertiveness in terms of, of addressing them. Coca-Cola is running up. That's weird. The broader regulatory. Pepsi was already up on the day. Some of the tailoring that had happened. 
um, perhaps, uh, or, or one of the conclusions was that that, that led to perhaps uh, less uh, And then bonds have given up all the gains well from them. Again, I think this was on the NYCB stuff, challenges. but a lot of so pressure in bonds, quite a bit of work key. underway um, to really follow up on that, and, and that's, that's unfolding. You know, I, I will say that the situation that we observed um, really highlighted some of the different dimensions of the context we're in, things like how quickly um, runs can happen, but also um, the extent to which uh, this very small group of banks can have Im impacts on broader confidence. And so, of course, that leads to a much closer and somewhat different uh, approach to um, engaging with financial institutions, understanding, working with them to really address risks, and there's a lot of that work underway, and certainly that's true here in the first district. So overall, I see uh, banks as well capitalized. I think that you know we've seen a lot of those stresses really recede, and again, it's something that we continue to monitor very closely, and will certainly do so going forward. Uh, and again, there are a number of uh, additional changes that I expect will be implemented in that aftermath. Another piece of the financial landscape has been the growth of private assets in this economy. Uh, I know they're not directly uh, where you're focused today, but I would be curious to hear how you're thinking about private credit or private equity, that, that suite of products, which uh, and, and what that impact can have on the financial system and the U.S. economy. Yeah, so uh, the private credit space is also something that we continue to monitor. Um, it, you know, the, we don't have full line of sight into that space. So the data that are available, the trends, the... Um, you know, um, we certainly monitor that. There's been very rapid growth in that sector, and uh, you know, some indicators suggest doubling in a relatively short time period. It's also not only diverse, but perhaps growing in diversity in terms of the kinds of instruments that are involved, in terms of uh, some of the, the business models that are involved in terms of um, you know, the, the private credit space. So while it is still a relatively small overall component. Um, anything that is growing so rapidly and evolving so rapidly really bears watching closely. And so that's uh, you know, something I also will continue to do. Um, another BEC question is uh, related to something that I, I know um, I've been watching carefully as well, which is the female labor force participation rate. Uh, it has uh, come up some in this expansion. It's not still at record, record highs, but, but we have seen some improvement here. Uh, how would you think about that, especially in the context of inflation, but you know, broadly for the economy? Yeah, um, let me say a few things about that. And I will say, you know, over my broader career, women's involvement, engagement in the labor force and experiences has been something that I've you know, had ongoing interest in. And, I, you know, if you, if you go back from the 1950s until about 2000, the women's labor force participation in this country nearly doubled. I think it was like 33% and then is, went up to, you know, a bit over 60% and lots of changes there. And that really drove uh, expansion in U.S. labor force participation um, and the labor supply, really key. And then after 2000, flattened off, declined uh, for, for some parts of that time. Um, and so lots of interesting dynamics there to watch. And then the pandemic hits, and we saw this just huge, sharp decline in women in the labor force. Mm -hmm. And um, with all of the childcare facilities that were closed, the uh, schools that were closed, you know, a lot of real concern that what we were going to see was an ongoing she session, right? There's a lot of discussion right. about, you know, we had a deep recession and it's turning into a she session. Um, and actually what, what happened, which I think was surprising certainly to me and to many, was it took a little bit of time, but the labor force participation increased pretty, uh, pretty sharply. And for prime age women, has exceeded, exceeded. pre-pandemic <laughs> levels, and that was one of that was the biggest driver of the labor supply increase that I described in my remarks. And even uh, not, uh, also unexpected, the um, 
group that had some of the biggest increases were women with children under five. And so there's some really interesting dynamics and uh, analyses to try to understand why that happened and, and what. But, but anyway, the increase in labor force participation over the past yeah, year has been so part kind of, in the of, the of the next favorable supply developments that so I get talked the body about. And in terms of inflation, that um, you know, rapid increase okay. in, or the, uh, an expansion of labor supply um, is disinflationary and I do think has helped when one of the factors helping to moderate inflation as we've seen uh, inflation rates come down. So that's been a part of the story, absolutely. It's, it's definitely been a welcome part. I want to make sure that uh, I'm leaving enough questions at this point uh, for the floor. So maybe let's just open it up and see who would like to ask a question. And when you do, please uh, introduce yourself uh, to President Collins and, and everyone in the audience. I know there are mics coming forward, so we're going to take one there and then come back to you. Thank you for your uh, participation. Um, Question of moving back to normalcy. Will if, you introduce if, yourself, sir? I'm David Thompson. I was past president, Thank and um, they let me come in. He's a pair um, recognized. Thank going you. Going back to the question of, of say, normalcy, suck. we've had a half a decade president. of zero interest rates, which what? unquestionably what? resulted in, in a lot of speculation since it didn't cost. With a 2% inflation target, and maybe a real interest rate of 2%, does that mean we move to a positively slope yield curve and the 10 year is grounded someplace between three and a quarter and right, four and a half percent? Let me ask a question. So I'm, I'm not gonna give kind of specific numbers of <laughs> Somebody where, clapped, um, they're like, Whoa. Where, what my outlook would be and there's a range around any outlook, but, but I would say that um, I, I think that there is uh, you know, a, a reasonable uh, chance that the, um, the levels that we would see as we go back towards something that would be more medium term, and that's gonna take a bit of time, um, that those rates w could be higher than what we had seen pre-pandemic. But again, I think there's a wide range of uh, possibilities around that, uh, that uh, kind of baseline view. And I think there are a lot of things to watch, including some of the things that we had talked about earlier in this conversation. When do I see B again, some green question. shoots? Morocco on the high. Spy trying to work its way up too. Uh, we're seeing data now that's demonstrating that mass out migration uh, here in the state is at a 30 year high. And that the workforce that's also leaving is. Netflix again, PayPal pop, T Mobile on the high. A couple of names on moving. What are your thoughts about this trend? And is it truly a powerful trend? So I will say that I haven't looked uh, closely at the state-by-state -state migration trends. I do think that there have been uh, yeah, interest. Yeah, PayPal trying so to work all, up. They're barely green. Is Netflix is near the high. I watch Meta and Google. The nation and then and SMCI, the Google's breaking out. Was based on and the chips. I think that's what's going to get us but above a high. That can mask get a little participation from some others, too. What experiences Dexcom are in different up. regions, different states, even different parts of states. It's certainly something that yeah, I've we're heard probably going to get. I mean, travels, this might be our 4,500 push, and this could actually hold up. 4,992, three points below the latest the high we just said. Challenges are, uh, you know, more specifically in parts of New England is important both for the our bank, um, just in terms of how we understand things, but also as we work with others in different parts of our region to try to really uh, foster that vibrant economy. So I do think that. Um, uh, migration levels are, are really important and how they evolve, and that is true both in terms of international migration, which oh, nationally is back up to He's the fighting. trends that had been, but how that's fighting distributed back. across the country, I think, does seem to be very different. And then on top of that, we've seen extensive migration within the United States across different regions. First pandemic with people working um, from home, uh, finding new homes, and many of them coming to New England and, and then uh, moving in different places. The cost of uh, living costs are important in terms of people's decisions about where to live. So I think quite a bit of that is still in flux and uh, is a really important thing to look at more closely. Um, I, I see questions here in the front, second row here. Um, just Hi, this is uh, Jack Moore from Harpswell Capital Hi, in Maine. 
I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about inflation and deflation. It seems like up until uh, just a few years ago when we had the perfect storm for inflation with the COVID events that deflation was a, was a real risk. I was wondering if you could talk a bit about deflation and technology, specifically things like chat GBT and how you see those advancements playing into the inflation deflation debate. So, um, you know, I do think that the uh, context that we're in now and the context and the discussions that we were having around inflation uh, in 2019, you know, back pre-pandemic are really uh, quite different. And um, I think that some of the changes are likely uh, could be short-lived, but I do think that some of them will be much more longer lasting. And it's uh, probably premature to have suggest too much certainty in terms of what that balance or mix will be. Um, I do see less likelihood that, uh, you know, as we settle things down, that we are going to have the same kinds of discussion and concerns about the possibility of deflation as we were having pre-pandemic some years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, it's, it's kind of yet to be seen. There are a range of different views about the extent to which AI, chat GPT, some of the other innovations will have, uh, especially in the short run in terms of productivity. Over the longer term, I do expect to see productivity gains there. But of course, that's only one of many factors that influences what the inflation trends look like. So, uh, you know, so again, I think they're both secular changes. There are some changes that might be long lasting as a result of um, some of the developments that have come. We've learned different ways to work. Uh, and some of that can increase productivity as we find what the right balance is. And then on top of that, some of the additional um, opportunities that come from um, some of the AI innovations that are still unfolding. Um, but again, my personal view would be that I am expecting to see less concern about the possibility of deflation than um, many had uh, just a few years ago. So we're, we're running out of time. I know there were two questions right here. If we ask them together, that maybe we can ask wrap them at that the same time. Go. How's that? Uh, Please introduce yourselves. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Greg Peterson, I'm the secretary of the Boston Economic Club. Uh, first off, thank you so much for coming to address us. Uh, My question is, uh, in looking at inflation, a significant component, of, as you mentioned earlier, is still housing. And part of that, obviously, is the level of interest rates, the affordability, or not on affordability, the switching of low mortgages to higher rate mortgages, and being able to afford the levels now of the higher rate mortgages. Yeah, the audience isn't that diverse. They all just bald. <laughs> That's all That's I. That's one question. All I see is my brothers out point. there, man. Remember them my lack of hairline brothers. Look, even in the front row, bro. This is look. This man. I feel like I would target this with Bosley. If I worked for Bosley Hair Restoration, I would be targeting this with ads. Yeah. So, uh, so let me start with data, and then I'll come and talk about housing. Um, so there have been some data surprises, right? I mean, the, the labor market data that we got just, uh, you know, <laughs> um, for January surprised uh, me and surprised a number of other people. Oh, the labor data surprised um, You know, I had been watching uh, monthly inflation numbers, and if you looked at monthly inflation numbers pre-pandemic, of course there was some volatility. Billionaire Ackman but then, launching um, new investment you know, fund pandemic, aimed at U.S. retail investors. It's gone back down somewhat. So we are in an environment where the data are, uh, have been quite volatile. There are surprises. They often go in both directions. It's one of the reasons why I continue to say don't overreact to any particular indicator. Uh, one reading might, you know, it's noisy, it's uneven, it's bumpy. We need to look more holistically um, to try to extract what the signal is. And it's also true that they're big revisions and um, some information, for example, the employment survey versus the household survey have bigger gaps in terms of what they're suggesting. Um, and so I think we're gonna have to really continue to dig deeper to try to understand where the signals really are 
And to recognize, to your point, I don't think there's a simple answer to that question, but I do think that it's going to require us to uh, you know, work collectively. There are a number of agencies that are worried about some of these things and trying to, to figure out then how do we appropriately extract what the signal is. To me, it's looking more holistically and seeing where do the data all point in a similar direction. That feels more convincing and compelling. And maybe we need, when we can, to be a bit more patient to gather more information so we'll really have more confidence in the direction. As far as housing goes, um, you're absolutely right. It's a really important uh, sector, and there have been unusual Pinterest on the high now. They were down because well. of SNAP. They're still From down. From an inflation about to go standpoint, green. I do find it's really helpful to unpack core inflation. The goods inflation, we know goods price inflation came down uh, significantly and, and rapidly. But housing price Bond inflation in 30 minutes. has been coming down more slowly, as well as the non-housing services. Um, and so that's something that I'm watching carefully. And uh, you know, we have a team that has uh, kind of estimates. Are we tracking what we would expect to see? Because we know that takes some time. You know, we also know, to your point, that with uh, lower interest rates, there are many households that are locked into their mortgages. And that's one of the key reasons why the inventory is so incredibly low. And you know, even though uh, you know, the variety of other dimensions, housing prices in some areas have remained high or come down and gone back oh, up. Yeah. So there are a lot of dimensions there to watch. Um, Many of those are shorter term as we bring inflation down and resolve things. We will start easing interest rates. But there's a longer run set of dimensions that influence the housing market. We have uh, researchers here who are experts in that area. That's something we continue to, to watch and to monitor. And we're also working with, um, with teams in parts of the country, uh, parts of our region, I should say, who are really interested in issues of affordable housing, uh, issues of um, approaches to trying to address some of the, the housing challenges. I hear a lot of employers talk about how difficult it can be to hire because um, you know they find great people, but then those individuals aren't able to find housing and end up not accepting the, the, the jobs. So it impacts a lot of things more broadly, I think, than many realize, and it's absolutely one of the things we pay attention to. Thanks for that question as well. I know there are a lot more questions in this room. Well, so President Collins, we're just going to hope that you're going to come back again and spend some time with us. Thank you so much for your insights. We've really enjoyed this discussion with you today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not much, man. They've all just been saying rate cuts, though. That's all market hears, even beyond the hawkishness. They A couple of comments on the jobs report, though, with people saying that it was surprising. I think her and uh, Krugler said the same thing and then you have a headline right now attack at the red sea keeps creating incremental demand for alternative routes panama canal not in a position to absorb it authority sources reuters mm, not you think rate cuts are coming well by the sound of it i think at some point by the end of this year but you know every we're going to find out at every data set, but like I, I also, in a weird way, I kind of believe uh, I, I believe that rate cuts may not happen. It's a small chance. I think it's more probable as of now that we get a rate cut, whether it's because the economy slows down or because mission accomplished, uh, if that's how the Fed wants to put it. But at the same time, I mean, it is, you know, right now, even with the market kind of holding up, ignoring rate cuts, for what it is now, I mean, we still have a, the market still disagreeing heavily with uh, Powell and the Fed. So, you know, if the right if the data just moves slow, it's all revised this and that, you know, I mean, maybe the rates stay up. Uh, and again, the closer we get to the election, I feel like it gets even more awkward. But there's a chance. But for now, the going notion is that we will cut rates again. Every Fed speaker, including Fed Jerome Powell. And all of them, they're they're all saying the same thing. They're all, no matter what they feel about the short term, in the midterm, the long term, but really the midterm at the end of the year, they do believe that, that we are going to be cutting rates. And they are still all saying that, and that is kind of causing this. But then again, I mean, all, all it takes is one set of data. You know, imagine if we're going this slow with the data working in our favor, 
what's going to happen if you get one set of data going the other way. That's That could add a lot of time on the shot clock. Hmm. All righty, let's see. You think Tucker will move the market? Nah, probably not. Just people are pissed off about it, but I doubt you know, anything uh, groundbreaking will, like, to shift the S&P 500, I don't think it'll arise from a, the first interview with Vladimir Putin. You think seasonality, if, it looks nice. I don't know if, I don't think it's because people break up. Do people break up? I thought it's, this is the holiday of, uh, like, love and affection. Do people break up before Valentine's Day? I don't know when the Tucker, he said he was doing it yesterday or when he made that announcement, he said he was going to interview him later in the day, but I do not know. People do. They break up on Valentine's Day. I thought you break up before Valentine's Day. Like I thought you're supposed to, you get in a fight in October and then you take a break till February and then you're good. I don't know. That's just from the Toxic 101 handbook. ZLT, well, it's all going to be on the bond auction, but even then, you had a little bit of bond demand off of the bank fear, I think, a little bit this morning. But then bonds coming down, it's, a, it's quite a decent amount of pressure. Low key. Why are people mad about the Tucker thing? Well, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think most people, if they are upset, it's because you're kind of giving a, you're going to give a platform to a, a guy who started a war and then they're going to see it as misinformation. I, I'd assume, is anybody mad that Tucker, if anybody is mad that Tucker is interviewing Putin, let me know. Let me know why you're mad. Pawns down, bud up. They used to interview Stalin. That is true. No, not Chris Tucker. Tucker Carlson. That'd be crazy, though. I would totally watch a Chris Tucker interview with Vladimir Putin. You understand the words coming out of my mouth? I'm going to name Putin, Putin. That would be hilarious, bro. I would love that. You have no idea. That's the type of journalism we need. I'm not mad, but I'm disgruntled. The other bad guys got interviews, but not by someone who openly defends them and gets promoted in their country like Tucker. Mm. Okay, good take, good take. Tucker's known to be completely truthful. Well, I think he just he's a he got fired from Fox, right? So I don't know. He's kind of he's a Republican, I'm sure, but I think he uh. He's not really affiliated with anybody right now. Just bonds, we're going to just see if there's demand or not. That's it. We want to see if, because uh, again, like think about that big bond sell-off, the jobs report, all of those factors lately. Bonds, you know, dropped a lot. So people want to see if there's like, did the bonds sell off too much or is there demand? And this auction today will show. And there's also, it's also big supply. It's $42 billion. Oh, we'll see. PayPal, we're going to go over those previews a little later. But PayPal, that's like the ultimate value play. They might pull a Snapchat, though, again, especially after their last meeting. 
I do think they are going to have more good news to talk about with the uh, job cuts. But then again, you know, some of these companies, you know, if, unless something has really changed, if they've already had bad earnings for like a year and a half, two years, they may not have it. I mean, my the funniest thing about like Fox is that it's owned by Disney. I think that's great because I feel like I've seen. Di I got clapped. My YouTube is down. Damn it! Too much Tucker Carlson talk. Fuck you, this man. Twitch stayed up. Yeah, YouTube. I I said too many. I said Tucker Carlson. I said Putin. I said Disney. That's it. And then YouTube just took me. They said, hold on, review this. They had to review the play there on that. I'm back. The Twitch didn't go down at all. So, no, I'm good, though, man. That's crazy. Too many keywords in an election year. Novo sees underutilized part of Catalent as an opportunity. Do they cut you out? I mean, I don't think they cut me out for that. That's just our long, our long-standing joke. But I was talking about that, and my YouTube did disconnect. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any now. My even my E-Trade went out, but my Twitch is still working. Disney puts. We went both ways. Yeah, my YouTube just started tripping out now. Come on, my YouTube and my. Uh, E trade. Oh, they own twenty first century Fox, not Fox News Corp. But I mean, what part do they own with the uh what's it called? The one with that Disney deal yesterday. I think it was just all of their companies. Mar and my backup, my platform's not working again. I don't know what's happening. Well, the high ticker is running, and then my TD Ameritrade's fine. We're at four nine eight five ninety one. You have to wait till the uh, YouTube comes back, or the uh, E Trade. Yeah, my platform's clapped for now. I heard you mention Tucker. Yeah, I mean, I was just having a discussion there. Just having a discussion. Look at Dexcom. I use the product daily. Is that heart monitor or diabetes? Dexcom. They're big. They're in San Diego. Holo's up. Wasn't that thing up like 400% earlier or 200? You being spied on by the feds, bro? They spying on you too? the hell you don't see they see your guys's quotes every single one of you that made a negative comment about deis you know that's it they you are on a watch list already they saw you in the chat they're like this guy goes in youtube chats and gets mad political and he doesn't support our agenda they already got you on the watch list man Four nine eight five. Come on, there you go. We're back up. We're back up. Yeah, Holo's up four hundred ninety nine percent now, and then Spice has been slowly coming down. In a weird way, it kind of liked it when the Fed speakers were on there. And then Netanyahu says only total victory will allow us to restore security both in North and South. Netanyahu says to hostage families, "I say your loved ones are always on my mind." says continued military pressure is necessary for the release of hostages. And then Yahoo says the day after is the day after Hamas, all of Hamas. 
Netanyahu says Israel must be able to act in Gaza at any time. So no peace deal? Is that what it sounds like? That's blood sugar monitor for diabetes. Yeah, I've heard good things about their product. Again, I think uh, Illumina is the one that's struggling. They do a lot of stuff in San Diego too. But Dexcom, they've been uh, on fire. Again, their stock as well as uh, just, again, a lot of people, they, they say good things about their product. Bond auction is in 20 minutes. Top of the hour. Top of the hour. You used to work there? Oh, no way. San Diego. And the ceasefire and peace deal is to pump the market. Well, it, it's had weird effects even through oil in the market, but, you know, I would just say it's been a long time since that scenario happened. It was beginning of October that the war and the first attack happened in Israel, and now it is the beginning of February. So November, December, January, it's been four months of another armed conflict. So we've had, you know, in the last couple of years, you've had leaving Afghanistan, having that issue, then a Ukraine war, a war in Europe, and then now another war in the Middle East. Uh, but unfortunately, it just I think it's just the timing. Like, again, is nobody asking the question, how has there been hostages for four months? That's a long time to have hostages if this isn't like a real big you know drawn out confrontation which is pretty much getting to so it's like if you're not getting any sort of peace deals or any sort of like resolution to this situation I mean it's 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 going on a very long time so now it's just it starts to kind of morph into uh something bigger than just like a a conflict it just it gets it gets worse So I do think, because remember, I mean, even if you compare things to the 70s, you know, like uh, eventually we we did ask for certain things on the American side for things to hold on. Not drawn out. It's been going on 100 years. But yeah, I know what you mean. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the Middle East, Habibi, a lot of problem, you know, the same thing. It is the same historical issue, but, you know, up until October 7th, you know, you didn't have to think about it or worry about it, let alone up until October 7th. I mean, these are the same hostages from that date on both sides. And that's that's a lot uh, for going on for a long time. You know, I think there's what over 100 hostages still. And then for now, four months, that's that's turning to quite the uh, the, the situation, not to mention any of the humanitarian problems that have have gone about in the in these last four months. Was NYCB? They did come back up, but bonds, bonds and banks lost that correlation a long time ago, at least an hour ago. You're shorting the market on escalation fears. Iran is way more dangerous than the general public perceives. Well, they have been. I think it just depends, though, on on how it all plays out. It's a weird. Uh, I don't know. I saw like a video. It was supposed to be like a meme. It was kind of funny. But it was talking about how, like, you know, all these other countries, like, they shoot down our drones. You know what I'm saying? They don't really necessarily, like, try to start beef with the United States military. They just get in the way. So, I mean, Iran isn't really, they haven't really been trying to beef with us. They're just fucking with us. You know, again, you shoot down an unmanned drone. You do this. Hey, it wasn't us. You know, they're not really, again, that's why when, uh, those soldiers died in Jordan. It was a big deal. Again, I think it was Syria. Uh, that's who, or that's where they're saying it came from. But it's like that you actually killed American soldiers and put yourself into that conflict. That's like the escalatory part. But even then, like Iran was even trying to like distance itself to a degree. So I don't know. 
I, I just, I, you know, there's a, there's a lot with the, with the politics of it all, but I don't think Iran wants to beef with us per se, unless like there's actually something to beef over. That's like a big enough issue or you have enough, you know, alliances globally. Uh, the live feed cut out a little bit. Twitch is up. I don't know if you hear me. Can you hear me? But yeah, I don't know though. This feels like it kind of feels like 2001 to like even be or like 2008 and beyond. We're just kind of in a we're kind of in a perpetual war state. New Rolex perpetual war. What? With like it just seems like dude, literally one conflict after the next. I mean, Russia has still been going on for 3 years now. That's insanity. So, and then then you get another one started and then when one goes away, another one comes back up or just like you still just we're just slowly worked our way into a you know problem after problem and then conflict and we're we're in it to some degree Russia has been going on since 2014 yeah but we haven't started sanctioning them cutting them off from you know finances that that all started in 2021 but yeah uncle was talking about Russia in 20 in 2015, you could hear some of that, but it's like another, another escalation and another thing, but there wasn't like, dude, there's a lot of people dying around the world. You know, I'm not a fan of any war, so don't get me started. Team America. Look, yeah. Wasn't that movie? They stopped making those. That was like the peak of like offensive movies, I feel like. It's funny though. Yeah, Toby Keith passed away yesterday. PayPal got a little pop there. And then Spy right off VWAP. This was like what? Was this around Euro Close? We were a little higher Euro close. You're actually right back to the Euro close level. You went to this first candle that, remember, we just moved 10 points and then started going crazy. Now, all we need is a Chris Tucker interview with Putin. Wow. All I'm thinking is what I wonder what translation I wonder who's going to play the voice of Putin on the Tucker interview. Like who's going to they're like he says he is fighting for his nation. You know what I'm saying? They're going to you they could they I wonder if they use AI voice or if they like use Snoop Dogg that'd be even crazier. Yeah, Putin speaks English, but he doesn't like to speak English. It's like a power play. Like he will, he's gonna speak in Russian. Just because you know another language, don't mean you like. You got to show your your own country's strength. You know what I'm saying? Morgan Freeman would be a trip. Fed Barkin says challenge on inflation coming down is not that broad. Fed Barkin, still a tight labor market. Fed Barkin, services and rent inflation have stayed more elevated. Fed Barkin, there's a lot of people still looking for workers. So he's saying the jobs market's still strong.
I think you have to pay to watch Barker. Bob Barker, Fed Barkin. He says we still have to see if more inflationary pressures to come. Challenge on inflation coming down is that it's not that broad. Still a tight labor market. Yeah, Barkin, he's usually, he's been bullish lately, but he's kind of talking bearish. Why YouTube show? I don't know. The last two days has been tough. Uh, some people have been reporting it, but just YouTube, and then it's an election year. You know what I'm saying? Europe is preparing for a transatlantic trade fight with Trump. Dude, he's not even the president. <laughs> the amount of head, dude, I've been there like, Trump is going to wage war with China. Trump is already getting ready for European terror. I'm like, dude, he's not. Like, isn't Biden like going to L.A. and shit, right? Like, Biden is the president. He is the acting sitting president. Hmm. <clears throat> How come the Fed is so standoffish about national debt or doesn't have an interest in the amount or existence? They do. Uh, again, Powell always, he says the same thing. He says it's not like what we deal with, but he says he is concerned about it in the future. So he says they always say like we could handle it now, but it's going to have a future cost to future generations. That's what they always say. I don't know why. I mean, it's it's accurate, but it also avoids having to do it it isn't their mandate they're not again they're not if you put the fed in charge of government spending i mean I, I wonder if that would be good or bad it would just make the fed more political but it just him kind of always just talking about you know he warns of the risk but doesn't really do anything to change it and he can't ten year bond action eight minutes acceptable punt language it's like better than a punt because he he does talk about the warnings right and he's like it will hurt the future generations but he said we could handle it for now i don't when is the future generation though there's not really any uh specificity towards that netanyahu says hamas only has six brigades left and we must eliminate them so i don't think you're gonna get a peace deal it sounds like i don't know Weren't arms earnings good? Uh, yeah, I think they were good, and they just didn't. And, and then it's an IPO, but then they went up later. So, like, they didn't, like, pop on earnings, but, like, a couple days, a couple weeks later, they ended up running up. Bond auction dump. It could, but if anything, we're, we're going to be a little more focused on bonds, and clearly today there's a gap between bonds and stocks. But if anything, maybe that, that bond auction will close that gap, make stocks come down or bonds come up, but... I'm more concerned on what actually happens with the bond market more so than not. Jamie Dimon says debt cliff is 10 years down the road. Hey, man, that's 10 years. We could do a lot if AI saves us in 10 years. If we switch to all like solar power too, you know, a lot could change. I'm holding long into the bond, long on bonds. You're just taking a bigger risk long on stocks. I mean, it kind of just depends. So stocks may, it may kill premium because like, let's say the bond auction's bad and bonds get destroyed. I could see a scenario where the spy dumps for five minutes and then just rockets right back up. So it'll just kill premium above all else. But if anything, the real effect is on the bonds. Have you heard that one joke? He's like, they always talking about like, we owe $30 trillion in debt. 
the national debt, every American, we owe $30 trillion. He's like, nah, man, I owe Sprint forty nine ninety nine, but I don't even mean I owe three. Who's we? I love that joke because it is kind of funny if you think about it. I don't know how we signed up for this, but apparently we all do have a bill technically attached to your, it's not like on your social security, but it's there. You were born. Have you have you guys seen <laughs> have you seen these sovereign citizens try to use that in court? Booty lover, Mr. Andy. So so it's kind of weird to say booty lover out loud, honestly. I haven't said that probably since I was young and I call people like you booty lover. That's good. I love you, man. God bless you. I love to see it, man. Love to see it. Horn. <laughs> Yeah, man, I love Andy. I love Andy. Say my name out loud. It's getting weird now. You know what I'm saying? Like considering the title of your name. And now you're like, look me in the eyes and say it out loud. I'm like, yo, it's getting real weird, bro. I'm not going to spit on you next. Calm down. <laughs> okay, man. Thank you for the gifts, bro. Thank you for the gifts. I don't know what you were expecting for twenty four ninety nine here, but... Hold on, bro. Hold on. I'm just I'm glad to be here. You know, and I'm I'm I love you, man. I know you got a long term too. Just say all of it. S say say all of it. Don't blink. What the fuck? All right, man. Calm down. My thoughts on Telvisa? I don't know about Telvisa. TV Oh, and a ticker sounds familiar. Well, Grupo Televisa, is this foreign TV communications? I don't know anything about Grupo Televisa. That's not the one. What's the one on Channel 13? Is that Telemundo? I remember Telemundo when we had basic cable. I would watch Telemundo sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't understand anything they were saying. Univision is killer. Yeah, Mexican TV. I'd have to look into it. I don't know if you use it. And no, I'd try to look into their financials, but low key, I'm kind of bullish on Latin America and anything they got going on. They own Univision? I know Univision. So maybe they got a little bit more brand power. I'd have to look into it, though. These foreign companies, you got to really know your shit with it. They got a dividend yield worth $1.7 billion, yielding 2.8. Not bad. The way you say Mundo is cute. I'm conv I don't know if you were like shit talking me or if you're hitting on me after the follow up comment. So I'm gonna just say thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Shout out Telemundo. But yeah, we st we need some Latin American investments. I went with China beforehand. Bro, and I was thinking about it. I don't know. I don't want to be that guy. But I, I hope China comes back a little bit. Because I was looking at it, man. I'm like, man, what if this is... Everybody's looking for the next China. But I'm like, what if, what if China comes back, though? But then again, China is so much different than it was 10 years ago. Literally in 2015. I hate America. No, I do. Uh, I just again, just that the, there was a glory day of uh, of Chinese economies, more or less, you know, so I just it's back to that. But then again, I don't I don't know if China is to blame for all of the problems we have now.
One minute. All right, get ready. Get ready. It's going to take a couple of minutes. So remember, one minute, it ends the auction, and then we're going to go through, and it takes like two, three minutes to get the number. Someone post the when issued when you have it, though. And then Fed Barkin comments coming out right now. All righty. Five seconds. Roughly like two minutes in five seconds, but it's a good start. Yeah, UPS is going nuts. All right, high tickers running too. A little bit of a bond auction bid for now. So let me know when you got the win issued. So 4.105 before 40. That's pretty low. It's probably going to be for a 4.2 auction though, or 4.2 bill or 4.5. So 4.1. Anything below 4.10 is good. Anything higher is going to be bad. It'll come up on here when we get those numbers. It'll take like two minutes. Four point one oh five, four point one oh five, four point one oh five. Uh, let's say it sucks because even if it rips up, it'll just get to where it was at earlier today. I don't know. And then watch even some of the bank stocks too. Four point one oh five, four point one oh five. After you add the two standard deviation, what's the second step? Nothing. You just go and see where up and below. Or you double it. So after you get the first what's priced in, you double that amount, and then you go looking for those strikes and then see the prices. 4.105. It's been almost two minutes, and there it is. 4.09. It was a strong auction. Wow. Wow. So there you go. And again, remember, bonds sold off hard after the jobs report. That that came in lower. It wasn't only like, I mean, I guess it was like, like what, 0 0.010 lower. But yeah, that came in with demand. So even after the jobs report, even after the sell-off, even after the rate cut odds being priced out, people still want to buy bonds, even with $42 billion of supply. That's crazy. So they just sold a $42 billion auction with more. That Oh, that's a 4.0 note, though. Interesting. I think, I don't know. I don't know if that should be the caveat. It's for a 4% coupon, but people bought it for 4.09. So in a weird way, they still had to sell it a little higher than what it was worth. But then again, more people were buying. Then again, you could have bought it open market today. And people, after that demand, people are willing to pay a little bit more. It's not shabby at all. Not too shabby at all. It's not, it's, it's good considering. Again, Bond just got murdered. So, like, after this type of movement, you would have expected, you know, it's it would have been pretty clobbered, but it's good to kind of see a floor, more or less, that some people are willing to buy that. But then again, it is a 4% coupon. So, the last, like, three or four auctions, the yields were lower than the coupon. So, today, the coupon is still higher, or the coupon is now lower, and what you actually got is higher. No, I think it might move around. We'll see what happens with it, but I'm figuring the bonds will stay up off of this. Again, market even did market hit a new high off of that? Are you serious? Yeah, market hit a new high off of that. Four nine nine five. This affects banks. Well, either some of them are holding it or in general it may just show people are still worried about them if they're buying into the bonds like this especially after the jobs report. Again, there's a lot of factors to both not want bonds and to want them right now. So again, just the auction is showing that, you know, people are, are still in the game on that, regardless of whatever's happened. Yeah, 42 billion, 10 years, 
4.09 versus 4.024 at the last one. So it's higher than last auction, too. Bid to cover, 2.560. So nothing unusual. Directs were 71%, a lot higher than indirects or sales. That was a lot of demand. So again, direct demand was way higher than, again, indirects would be the bonds or the banks sweeping it up. It's not bad. NYCB up. Bonds still not really getting out of it. Check uh, IEF. That one's holding on a little bit better, but TLT still kind of clapped. Maybe people don't like the four. Those are the two bad things. Again, the yield is higher than the actual coupon, and then it's lower than the last meeting. Fed Barkin, I am in no particular hurry on policy. Barkin says, I'm waiting to see if disinflation becomes more broad-based. I didn't expect this strength in the last jobs report. Fed futures dropped on that, ironically. So rate cuts got priced out a little bit more after, after the auction and those comments. I think that's the interesting part. In 2008, we crashed because bank turmoil. Nowadays, we pump because of bank failures. Kind of. It's just, it's just what happened last time. That's it. Just last time, the Fed immediately stepped in and band-aided it all up. So I don't know. The only way bank failure would probably bring us down is if we are... If we're aware that the Fed won't help us out, that's the irony that the Fed has to eventually and the government has to encounter a problem and say, nah, we're not going to do anything about it. But l lately, I mean, you haven't seen that in how many years? You know, when was the last time a financial issue that regulators, government agencies, the Fed, when was the last time they were like, nah, we're not going to help? That was the largest 10-year auction on record. And then it came in lower than the when issued. So, again, that means a shit ton of people bought into that. And that's after even a big sell-off in bonds. It was pretty wild. Yeah, consumer credit at three. That could shed some more light on some things as far as how strong the consumer is or not. And then SPY hit a new high off that. It might come back up. Bonds got a little pop, but they're still actually lower than earlier. I'm surprised. Reverse repo could be below 500. Maybe that's why the bonds getting a bid too, though. Because remember, once that reverse repo goes empty, the Fed is going to start buying bonds again. That's the irony to all of it. I could see the Fed saying, nope, not stepping in this time so they could just control everything. I don't know, though, but, like, there's there's like a big aversion to pain, you know, lately in the last decade. But even as of recently, again, right when SVB was going under, like, I would have got fucked. A lot of people would have got fucked. So I think it just depends what bank, honestly. I think if you have too many too many donors in in a certain bank, they won't let it fail as long as it's not, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, SVB was controlled by San Francisco. Damn, Mary Dolly and the rest of the fun bunch, they were they were, our, they were watching that, all of that. That was their district. And, and again, all of the tech companies who had money in there, like, everybody would have got cleaned out. But till CPI, we might. So, Spy coming down a little bit. Bonds just staying pin, but holding a little. Bonds should rip. Honestly, again, I, I think there was some bad factors, but generally, with how big that auction was, you would expect that thing to hold up a little better. And even with the banks having problems, rumbles on the high. NYCB, again, I think I'd just be concerned about the price and if they keep trying to raise capital like they announced today. Otherwise, uh, I'm just, I care more about the bonds in terms of bank failures, sadly. They should have got cleaned out. They should have, but like I'm saying, that's like kind of the general thing. Anytime there has been an economic issue, the government agencies have stepped in. 
that's just that's all like it just no matter what so the time like if you were wondering like when are bank failures going to be bearish like literally right here right now you have a bank on the cusp of failing again or getting into issues and everybody's like buy the bonds because the fed's going to step in people aren't even worried about the bank because they know a bigger bank is going to eat it up take the good assets and then they're saying well why why even care about the bank when all that matters now is what does this do to policy and bonds? You know, people are looking out four steps ahead of all of this. So until uh, like until a bank fails and nobody steps in, I don't th I don't think we're going to reverse that reaction, unfortunately. Rumble, I don't know. I've, well, where's that Tucker Carlson interview going to be posted? Either Twitter or or Rumble, I assume, right? Arm going, yeah, he's holding up good. The unexpected thing would be if the Fed does nothing. So if the Fed is like, let's say NYCB goes bust, and the Fed is like, nah, we're not, we're not doing anything, and then maybe the FDIC steps in, but then if there's no, no sort of liquidity method or or facility created or they say that doesn't affect their rate cut odds then that would be the unexpected spy getting a green shoot now again 4995 bonds are still holding up after the auction but still lower on the day believe it or not and then spy is starting to rip up then there's arm at the high again a couple of the pre-earnings are moving up nycb recovered like five percent there disney's a little higher PayPal, what do we have for tomorrow? Disney, PayPal, you got Conoco, anything good in the morning? Spirit Airlines, Philip Morris. You don't really have anything too big tomorrow. I think after hours, PayPal, Arm, Win, Confluent, Mattel. Peach. Snapchat hit a new low, 11.17. They failed after that. Oh, Philo should be having it now. I didn't realize it's 10 already. I guess the bond auction got in the way. Spirit Airlines, $40 round trip from Oakland to Vegas. What? I say it's I just say it's crazy though, going from Oakland to Vegas and then back to Oakland. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, maybe I make sense why it's 40. Because that just seems like that's how it sounds like a wild 48 hours. Mm. All right. Well, give me a second. Let me go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. Good morning. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We, we should have a philo coming up. So let me see. I'll be right back. Some kind of ability to extend the budget right now. I don't know how they're actually going to process that. But their their track record isn't very good. I think you're going to have chaos in the next month. And I think a lot of, the, again, is going to be, be the talking points for Donald Trump. It's it's just that simple on the GOP side. Democrat side just going to have to roll with it and try to do the best they can in that circumstance. I mean, it's it's chaos right now. And it is it is a function of the leadership. But also, there is some body rot in Congress right now. Well, and then there's the question of a potential leadership change as we talk about how right now the Senate is going to be voting as to whether or not to pass this bill that does not include border security, just the other uh, supplemental requests when it comes to Israel and Ukraine aid. Then it, if it does pass, Mike Johnson's going to have a choice to make as to whether he wants to put that on the floor and potentially risk a motion to vacate in the process. Does anyone come to mind to you, Denver, as to who would replace him if that were to happen? After all the votes <laughs> with McCarthy, it's, right. I don't know. A few others I mean, have tried. Yeah, I might. I, I have a better chance than a lot of people to run for speaker right now, right? Um, <laughs> I think you know. I you know. Um, but I, I do believe you know. If you're looking across leadership right now, if they had to go back and do it over again, I think they would go back to a Tom Emmer type for speaker uh, on the House side. Uh, 
you might see Scalise roll back up. I think if, if Scalise comes back, and I hope he does right after his cancer treatment, I mean, nobody wishes that on anybody. I think Steve Scalise might be back in play as speaker uh, if he comes back regardless of what his prognosis or diagnosis is. I think he's really the only one, him and maybe Emmer, that can rally uh, the GOP to what they need to do. There's one problem, though. It's Donald Trump. And he might want somebody else in there that's absolutely insane. Uh, he's not a big fan of Emmer. He's never been over the moon about Scalise. I know this personally. I, I just know that. So who would it be? Would it be a Matt Gates type? Impossible. Uh, it made too many yeah. enemies, too much of a charlatan. So again, guys, again, I think the Emmer Scalise, I think you're going to see some retreads from the prior vote hmm. that sort of come back out of the woodwork. He said too much of a charlatan. We're spending time with former Republican Congressman Denver Riggleman of wow. Virginia here on Bloomberg's Balance of Power. Kaylee, I don't know if you saw this uh, quote from Mitt Romney. Mm. Uh, another fan of Mar-a-Lago. Uh, Denver, I want to read this to you. This is Mitt Romney talking to Bob Cole. Politics used to be the art of the possible. Now it is the art of the impossible, he says. This is the former standard bearer of the Republican Party, meaning let's put forward proposals that cannot possibly pass so that we can say to our respective bases, look how I'm fighting. All right. I sold one of the arms. So those arms from yesterday, one of them went up 100%. I sold out the calls for 70 Got our money back, and then where's the next part? What I'm going to do, uh, which one's the put? I think 60. I'm going to sell one of the puts and just get my money back on that or lose like $3. Okay, or $5. Yeah, so I sold the put, though. So think about it. I spent what? Now, my total outlay for the play, I spent $67, and I got back 70 So now I've made that play free by going bigger on the pre-run-up. Does that make sense? So I sold one of the calls for 100%, and then I sold the put for like a slight loss of only like $5. And then now the amount of money that I spent, I've made back more that pretty much then that's what then uh then what we spent on both plays. But now I have two plays top and bottom. Beautiful. What did you do? I sold out arm. I sold out one of the calls for a hundred percent. And then I sold out one of the puts for a slight loss so that now the play is free. So I have all of it uh, all of it for free. So it's very simple. I just bought into uh, Arm yesterday, and I got multiple contracts. And then they went up enough today where I was able to sell out for, you know, now I'm only holding plays worth about $60. And today I took, a, you know, we got like, what, 70 bucks back? So it wasn't all pure profit, but it's pretty much just paying for the play. PayPal. I still have those PayPal's. They went up and then came back down. So we'll see. The bonds are still staying pinned over here. This one's interesting. Mm. Is it over for the Bears? Um, no, I think the Bears are going to get started around February 14th. So literally middle of this month. After It depends what the CPI shows, though. So if that CPI uh, middle of the month is good, then I think it's going to, uh, I think it's going to, uh, that'll kill the Bears at that point. But other than that, uh, just I'm looking bad seasonality plus uh, bad data, then I, I do think the Bears will come right back. The V-Day Massacre? Well, I guess so. Is that is that a thing? That sounds so harsh. CPI should be good. I mean, a lot of the leading indicators say otherwise, but then again, do you guys know what's happening tomorrow? That's the crazy part. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Do you know what's happening tomorrow? It's really kind of funny. It's not Fed speakers. 
Yeah, there's something happening tomorrow. Damn, those armpits, I could have got back my five extra bucks. Friday Junior, it's a big deal. Not the 30 year. Not my birthday. It has to do with inflation. That's your hint. CPI is next week, but can you elaborate? Not Japan. What about CPI? Yeah. They're doing a CPI revision tomorrow. So it's like the annual CPI revision. They don't do it when they release the report. So we're going to get a new update on CPI and revisions. So just like you saw with the jobs report, you are going to get that same info now on the CPI. So yeah, you guys are like, it's a scam. So it's probably going to come in lower unless it does get revised higher. That'd be insane. But yeah, there it is. That is tomorrow or Friday, I believe, but I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. Let me double check. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Oh, no, no, it's Friday. Excuse me. Yeah, CPI revisions Friday. I think for the whole year. So they're going to come out with how they're rebat the new rebalance, and then they're going to change any of the past CPIs. They're going to be like, oh, well, we had another year, two years of data using the rolling average that we averaged with the other rolling average and then the 12 months. And now that we have the full sample size of the full sample that we didn't sample, but now we got the full sample and it's a rolling sample. So we have to make alterations based on seasonality and adjustments. So CPI was at zero. What? Yeah, because the statistics and then the rolling CPI and then the full sample and then you sample the sample and then the full data of the sample wasn't available when we took the sample and now the sample is available and now we've redone that and gone back all the way through even though all the other years have not been resampled for this year we're still going to resample it on a rolling average and then roll that average and then balance and then exclude any substitutions and anything else we need so it's zero what so like I said, it's a rolling CPI and then the full sample gets sampled. And then once you take the other full sample and go back and then you got to just look back because it takes two years to find out what happened in any six months. So every two years you got to wait and then take the rolling average of the sample and sample it. And once you get the full totality of the data, you got to re-roll that over, exclude any outliers, and then you carry the one and then inflation zero. I'm not following. It's very simple. All you do is. <laughs> so, no, but that I told you, bro, I've tried to damn fucking read that shit, man. You know, I like to think sometimes that, like, I could understand shit, but, like, nah. <laughs> Dog, if you ever see the Bureau of Labor Statistics, man, and, like, if you read what they do for it, bro, I can't. I really can't. Let me see where it's at. Remember, I've read it to you word for word. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, bro, I can't make this up. So here it's saying they're updating seasonal factors in February 20 in 2024, February 9th. Each year with the release of the January CPI, seasonal adjustment factors are recalculated to reflect the price movements from the just completed calendar year 
This routine annual recalculation may result in revisions to seasonally adjusted indexes for the previous five years. Recalculated seasonal adjustment indexes as well as the recalculated seasonal adjustment factors for the period through January 19th through December 23 will be made, made available on Friday, February 9th, 2024. The revised index and seasonal factors will be available on this page and it could be contacted after 8.30 a.m. on the day of release. So this is how they do it. They say consumer price indexes, both unadjusted and seasonally adjusted. Seasonally adjusted is computed using seasonal factors derived by the X13 Arima seat seasonal adjustment method. These factors are updated with the, what do you mean? Are updated with the release of January data and reflect the price movements from the previous calendar year and the previous five years. So yeah, they are going to go change the last five years of CPI data. And if you don't know what the X13 arena, I didn't know Elon's child works at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Wow, that's crazy. That's that's the formula you use. You could download it. X13 Arima is a seasonal adjustment program. That's crazy. It's a seasonal adjustment software produced, distributed by the Census Bureau. Oh, my gosh. So you could download it. I don't know how you get it, but I think you might be able to. Crazy world. High ticker. Even spy ticker. There's bonds now. Microsoft, again, watch Microsoft, Meta. And like I'm telling you, it's both big names and the names that broadened out today. You just got a lot of influence there. Even Airbnb on the high. Uber. Disney. Disney came again. We sold out one of the calls and then I just rolled into the... Uh, the newer updated version of the place. Don't sleep. Do they? Is Robin Hood today? A lot of people were asking about that one yesterday. Robin, 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 Robin Hood. Robin Hood bonds. All right, man. I don't know. This is getting weird. Because, like, I want to do Philo, but, like, we're, like, really close to pumping it up right now. Because, like, I can't stop the Philo to pump it up. And then, like, like, you know what I'm saying? This is a very weird time right now. I don't know what to do. I think the market is highly priced at the moment, yeah. I wouldn't be, uh... I wouldn't be buying anything at all-time highs. I mean, I hold stuff at all-time highs, but... I do think we are at a at a very high price, but then again, it kind of also makes sense, you know, with everybody with the the level of both fear and optimism, and so many things competing ahead of a big policy shift. I feel like it's just high risk, high reward. I don't I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> Tesla flip green. I don't know. If we come back down, I'll start the Philo, but I don't know if I could start on a pump it up watch. This is getting awkward. I sold the snap play for like 56 cents. I think it went down a little lower. Philo with pump it up. I know that'd be weird. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if I could handle that. Fed speakers were both hawkish and not, but the market doesn't even care. It just seems like as long as they're hawkish and then end their speech with, I still think rates will be cut in the end of the year, everybody just gets happy still. But yeah, Marvel, Marvel, excuse me, uh, Russell went green. Marvel's on the high. But does that make sense? It's literally like, I don't know. It's like, 
It's like a girl coming up to you and saying, I hate you, you're ugly, I'll see you on Friday at 6 p.m. That's just what, you know, it's, it's like getting roasted and then they're still making plans with you because that's what's happening. Every Every Fed speaker, even if they say anything like negative or not, it just like it ends with we're cutting rates at the end of the year and everyone's like, oh, yeah. You got your first ticket for expired registration? No way. Haters, bro. Haters. I told you, they towed one of my cars before for that shit. Haters, man. All right, 4996. Chattadonia, that's it's either going to hit right before and sell off or, or it's just going to go crazy. NYCB is going up. Oh, Robinhood's still going up there. Again, bonds are now near the high. If anything, equities like the bond auction more than bonds. That's the irony of all of it. And then bonds are still climbing up a little bit. You considered people putting percentage of their taxes in the market. Some people got their taxes already. Oh, I guess that used to be kind of an effect. I remember a little bit of that. Chattadonia. Sound of loud, loud blast heard in Iraq's Baghdad. Reuters witness. 4997. Um, more business coming in. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot going on, baby. It's not there yet. Yeah, Russell's actually getting pretty active here. Russell went red to a quarter percent or just under real quick. But hold up, man. For that dude, you're, uh, what, two and a half points away? It's still a long way up there, but it's moving again. Bonds ain't doing it that much. Oh, my goodness. You do get to pump it up at 5,000. Bank of Canada minutes. That's coming out right now. Again, spy, dude, it's about to be 5,000. Dude, we were at 4,000 at the beginning or end the beginning of November. You were at 4,100. You were up 900 points in three months. That's crazy. 4,99779. Oh, my goodness. Shout out on business, baby. God bless you. This is crazy. What comes up must come down, but we ain't coming down. I got the same old spot and the rate cuts ain't really matter. But no, okay. That's whatever. You remember when everybody used to say that though? Anytime you say what comes up, someone be like must come down, but we ain't coming down. No, they don't know. Four nine nine eight six five. Oh my goodness, Chad Adonia, these guys is a crazy. Mm -mm. Power hour should be it's, it's What's going to be more interesting is if we sell off right now Because every time we get up to these levels A lot of times we just sell off right before That's the only problem I hate to be that guy to remind you of it But that is the reality Many times we get right up to the level And then it'll just sell off until we break it tomorrow I've seen that too many times in my life. Mm. Again, you have Bank of Canada minutes, so you're a little bit lower. See, man, this is getting in the way of the philo. Four ninety nine, bro. That's insane. Eli Lilly selling shares. I thought they were doing uh, bonds. I don't think they're like dumping shares. Or are you saying you're going to sell some shares? If you want to, I like I like Eli Lilly. If you got a good price, I would be riding that through. I like to ride the winners in the long term. Bro, we've hit year-end price targets. That's the it's been one month. It's been one month and one week and we are already 
hitting, I think, at least half or 75% of all the analyst price targets on the year. Most people were at 5,000 to 5,200. 5,200, I think, is the highest. And you're like, already, you're already at 5,000. That's insane. Maybe here in year in price targets is actually good. No, it's not good. Well, yeah, it just means that everybody was wrong the year before. And then even in their optimism, they were still wrong again. That's it's just kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's one thing like last year, nobody had a right price targets. And then you had that move. And then now all the updated price targets are still wrong. This just means everybody is like the pendulum. How far the pendulum is swinging is insane. We're going from extremely bearish to extremely bullish, and then everybody is still ending up on the wrong side, uh, more or less. Kind of crazy. Uh, we have had stream alerts come out, yeah. I don't know in the past hour, but uh, actually the last one was at 10.16, so 15 minutes ago. We sold out of ARM. I made that one free. Yeah, most of the spy, it is mega caps. Again, I mean, last time we made a crazy climb to 5,000, we had to pull up the equal weighted index. It's doing a lot better today. But like you see, the equal weight index hasn't broken out, hasn't broken out since end of December. So we've been continuing up. And then again, you pull it out. The equal weighted spy is yet to hit an all time high. Equal weighted spy is still uh, down like 5%, a little less from all time highs. But that don't matter. $10 puts. Because again, remember yesterday, Snapchat was pricing in a lot. So even then, even we got like 500% on our plays there. But, you know, we caught a 30% move. So unfortunately, uh, I just think the premiums on Snap, you know, everybody was expecting a big move. So even though it moved big, it didn't do anything. I sold out of one of the arms. Yeah. I sold out of one of the arm calls and then one of the arm puts to make it free. Short puts. You can. I mean, there's limited downside on the. Remember, a put max gain is at zero, right? So a $10 put, the max that contract could make is $1,000. So just keep that in mind with how you set up your plays. Because again, that's why, like, sometimes the puts on the cheaper names, they may, you want them to move a lot, but like, how far do you think it's going to go, right? Like, think about it. If you have a $10 strike price, you have to, uh, like, the max it could go is, is 1000 bucks. You sell premium. No, no, that's what I'm saying, though. Factor that into the premium sell because sometimes it could be offering a decent amount of premium, but your downside risk is if it goes down. So on some of the lower strikes, if, you know, your downside, you're kind of near the floor. But then again, your upside still will be limited probably too. Puts could only... It depends on what the stock price is at, what you pay for it, and where zero is. Right, like if you bought a forty dollar put for a dollar, you know, one cent, and it goes, you know, down to thirty bucks, or even if it went to zero, you'd make a lot of money. But like again, a ten dollar put, the stock, the only way you get a thousand dollars on that contract on a ten dollar put is if the ten dollar put, if the stock goes to zero, because then you'd have ten dollars per share in the money. Otherwise, if it goes down five bucks, you only make five hundred, and if it only drops a dollar. Max, you're going to squeeze out of that is another hundred dollars. That's why the percentage we got on Snapchat was good, but it was a small amount of money. That's why, and then again, they were already pricing in high from yesterday too. Would you short the market at these levels? Maybe around February, middle of February, and then if pretty much the next set of data. I mean, last set of strong data, we rocketed up, but I do think inflation or Fed or summary of economic projections, that type beat, 
I think those are your your moments you could try to shift with the market. We had Holo up a couple of times throughout the day. The last time we saw it was up 499. Troy called it out at like 190% or something. I think a couple of chads are in on it. I have no idea what they do, though. Come on, bro. We're trying to get into a philo. I don't know, man. We might. Maybe we just philo. We didn't do philo. We were way. We we're about to do philo, and then we just started going to five thousand. All right, but if I do philo, I can't pump it up. You will have to wait. You will get a delayed. You will get a delayed pump it up. So we're taking a risk here if we get into this. I'm just letting you know now. Mm -hmm. Just wait. I'll give it a couple more minutes. Because it's already 140. Mm -hmm. I'll give it one more minute. One more minute to do it unless it just rockets up. Bonds are moving around. I don't know. We might hit it. We might hit it. A lot of them do. The high ticker is gassing. I'm actually kind of surprised. You have eight names red on the Dow, 22 in the green. NASDAQ 100, 28 red, 73 in the green. And then S&P, 169 red, 333 in the green. Mm. We're safe. Yeah, it's kind of it kind of looks like it's doing the dribble down. Maybe by the time I'm done with Philo, it'll hit 5000. It just needs to pull back a little bit. It just needs to pull back a little bit, you know. Oh, Nomad, you raiding us, baby? What's up, man? What's up, man? You rated at a good time. I got a simple one for you, man. I got a simple one. It's the same old thing. We need Philo. Oh, well, it's coming. It's coming. The Philo is on the way. I have alerted the troops. I've alerted the troops. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your philo. You know that? It's time for your philo. And this one, I like this. This is a story. This is a parable today. And you're going to, you've heard this parable, but I really hope you uh, pay attention to it. You know, what, what caught me off on the parable this time is the similarities and differences and above all else, there is a good message of today, my friends. A very, very good one that I enjoy. So before I begin, I will tell you, congratulations if you are living out Fila. If you are doing things to better yourself, educating yourself, learning about personal development, learning about yourself, and putting things into motion to actually get fruit from all of your labors, rather than just enjoying it and not letting it have a real effect on you. Oh, my goodness. So with that being said today, Chad, we are going to talk about the parable of the wise man and the foolish man. You may have heard this. There's a story, and it's something along the lines of that there's two men, and they want to build a house. One of them... He builds his house on a rock, a foundation of rock, and the other man builds his house on a foundation of sand. So, do you guys understand that? 
You see how rock would be a little bit more better than sand, but why would you go with sand? Does anybody know why you would use sand? Anybody? It's very simple. Like, if you really had the choice, you mean to tell me these two why, and this is what I'm saying, one of the same similarities. They're both next to each other. It's not like there's a big geographical difference here. Yeah. It's literally easier and cheaper. So even back in the day when people would do that, it's not as if you could build, like, it's not as if you built your house on sand, you would automatically, your house would crumble. No, it didn't work like that. But it was just, it was literally a cheaper and faster way to get something built. That's all. So the story goes, though, one builds on rock, one builds on sand. And then a storm comes. And then the one on sand gets washed away. The one on rock is able to hold up. So the, the conclusion is that the wise man is the one who builds on rock. And the fool, foolish man is the one who builds on sand. All right, you've heard this before. I think a lot of you, you're like, yep, that's the philo. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not here to talk about the story as much. But I do want you to understand something about it. Have you ever thought about the similarities and differences between the wise man and the fool? That's what I want to talk about today. And I just want you to realize something. You know, there is another conclusion to it, but just think about it. Both the wise and the foolish want to build. Oh, y'all don't feel y'all don't feel me. Oh, I don't know if they feel me, Chad. Did you hear that? That don't blow your mind a little bit? I don't know. It blows my mind to think about it. In this same story, the same parable, I think you should realize one simple concept. Both the wise man and the foolish man want to build. They both want a house. They both have an aspiration, you know, and again, back in the day, you know, these times where people were still building on rock versus sand and, and this ancient parable, like a house was a big deal. You know that, like a house, you got a house, you built your home everywhere. There's, you know, there's multiple houses in the world, right? There's houses you live in. I mean, there's a house of Congress. Your work is its own little house. A house has a structure. It's where people congregate. It's a, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. There's a lot of meaning to the word house. You know, maybe that's why people trip out when houses get out of reach. It's, it's a, think about it. Maybe a lot of other things are out of reach as well, too. But both the wise and the foolish wanted to build. Hmm. You know what else is interesting? So one, I mean, the first thing just tells me that both wise and foolish people have the desire to build things. Just because you want to build doesn't mean you're not a fool. And just because you build doesn't mean you're wise. Every man, woman in this earth, that desire comes about. It doesn't. That doesn't define you. Are you ready for the next one? Because in the story, if you read it, it's in Matthew. It's talking about him. And it says both of them, both the wise man and the foolish man, they both heard the word of God. That's what it says. It says they both heard from God and said to do this or do that. Both of them. Oh, y'all don't feel me. I don't know if y'all feel me. So what does that mean as well? That means both the wise man and the foolish man can both hear God. You may be exposed to some great wisdom, and it don't matter if you're a fool or if you're wise. Just because you made up your mind in one area doesn't mean you'll hear a voice sometimes. Oh, I don't know. That's crazy. Because, again, how that story plays out, it's dependent on what they did. I really hope you feel me. What you did will determine where you end up in it all. 
but both of them heard. So it don't matter who you are. You think you're wise, foolish, I don't believe, I believe in this. Man, you may come across the thing that'll change your life. Both the wise man and the fool will always have that opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're giving something, if you don't, what you, it's all what you do with it. Again, what house do you actually end up building? And then what's the final thing? There's one more big similarity. This one you all going to love. This is very cliche. You all going to cheer. You're going to be like, hey, man, Joshua. Hey, man. You want to say my full name? You're going to say Joshua. What's the last one, bro? There's only one final thing that they both have in common. Both the wise man and the foolish man had to deal with a storm. Oh, Chad. Just because you're wise doesn't mean you're going to avoid the storm. Just because you're foolish doesn't mean you're going to have a storm or not. But everybody will. That's the that's the similarity. Again, that's how you got into this whole story. Two men, they're right next to each other. One does this, one does that. Both of them hear the word. Both of them want to build. Both of them encounter a storm. It's funny because it is how you deal with it. But once the storm already hits, you can't do anything about it. Both of them were in that scenario. It was what they prepared for ahead of it. So, Chad, today's philo, man, the final thing about it all, it's literally what they did differently. Even if the man was foolish, he still heard the good word, but he didn't listen to it. One guy, he heard the same thing he chose. It's what you do with it. That's the main point of all of this. But why didn't the foolish man do it? If he heard it, how come he didn't do it? If he knew, oh, I should be smart to build on the rock. Oh, wow, this is a word from God. It's because he had a bigger God. He did not make it God in his mind. He chose something else. And now I'm not here to tell you this uh, to make you convert and give your life to the Lord, okay? That's not why I'm saying this to you. I'm saying this so you understand another philo we've had in the past. Even Uncle said it in one of his songs. Are you not are you trying to not understand what you already understand? The problem isn't with things you un, you don't understand. A lot of times our problem is with the things we understand. Do you get it? You may have the answer. You may know what you need to do. The problem isn't that you need something else. The problem is you are avoiding what you already have in front of you. Oh, I don't know if y'all feel me, Chad. I don't know if you feel me. So, it's very simple. What word are you making the God in your mind? I'm not talking, you know, that's a thing, because like when we do talk the religion side of it, you know, this is why I do respect certain guidelines, because it's a good God to follow. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You know, there's things in there that make sense to, you know, it's like that's the one I want to follow. But think about all of life and everything else, man. What are you listening to? What's the thing frustrating you right now? Are you going through something and you're trying to figure out all these different things, but then the one thing you do understand, you just keep making that same mistake or keep dealing with it? You already had the good word, but you're just ignoring it? Or is it really you're having a problem with something you truly don't understand? Because I don't think that's the case for a lot of us. At least myself. When I make problems, it's because I make them myself. It's kind of like finding anger. You don't just stumble upon anger. You don't stumble upon confusion. 
It's about the voice that you're making God. And you all get to choose who that is. So Chad, focus on what you understand already. Be wise. Be wise, build on rock. But remember, nothing separates you from the other person. It is what is really in your head. And what word and what sort of line of action and sort of lifestyle you choose to live and grow and build on a foundation of. So on that note, the market's back up a little bit. I hope you enjoy that one and take it to the bank. But that is your philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. You're on mobile. Press hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link nightly. Watch this and main channel. First link, Scream of Large Boot Camp and Real Estate Course. And you got real estate today. Where are we at? Oh, three, four points below. All right. All right. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I think maybe by the time I come back, it'll be on. Hey, the whole idea of Scare of the Warfare is not what you think that you think. Almost that pump it up. Like the Spiritual Warfare is much more subtle. And it's much more tricky. It's a call, baby. It's a letter to the people, I'm penning it like a ball It don't matter about the evil, it matter about the God It don't matter about the weapons, it matter about how you armed All that matters is the weather, when weather to bet the farm <laughs> I ain't gotta see it to believe it If it's signing then it's needed, then my eyes don't need a reason I won't even try to explain it, let's just say I got a feeling I'm gonna sing my praise like David, but the king is still a killer Listen up and go and get the tropes Hope you know you ain't scared of them, they scared of you And I know you might be scared to take that point of view You see them arrows in my back, yup son, that's gon' happen too But the harvest on the way, you gon' barter every day That means you have to make a trade, either life or it's the grave The result will not remain, every day will bring a change Kinda funny and it's strange, how the hope will pave the way Hearing what I say, the only difference between you and them comes down to faith. There's a difference in the man who believes in a better day. Cause once you believe it's past, you're willing to wilt away. We was never willing to be the same. We want it all in the long run, they want it all today. My father is really awesome, don't bother with giving snakes. Regardless, I can't control it, so either way, giving thanks. Yep, you could take that one to the bank. A leader without a rank, a speaker without a face, a people without a race. They eating without a taste, they scheming without a safe. The meanings have been replaced. Another time, another place, we could talk about it. Keep some oil in them lamps, don't get caught without it. Want them once, want them twice, then never talk about it. If you never get a second chance, then that ain't meant to happen. What I understand is you ain't trying to understand. Take a hundred, hundred grand, then a hundred undergrads. Pay them all to make a plan, but they couldn't comprehend what it means to. To never die, but somehow still be born again. It's a letter to the people, I'm penning it like a Paul. It don't matter about the evil, it matter about the God. It don't matter about the weapons, it matter about how you armed. All that matters is the weather, when weather to bet the farm. It's a cow. It's a cow. Alright, man, don't pump it up yet. I thought it was about to happen. I thought it was about to happen. You got your philo. You are right at all-time highs, man. Right at under 5,000. They just teasing you now. They just teasing you. Sold off, make it go down, go back up. No, no. Bonds are still holding, though. Very, very subtle. Maybe end of the day they get a, a crazy move. Mm -mm. My goodness. What time is it? 10.57. Two more hours left. <laughs> My goodness. Disney back up. I am. I already made a earnings play on that. Actually, uh, let me see it. I got to find the, uh, I got to get the earnings previews. You guys want to watch Senate border security? We got Club Shay Shay with Monique on Hollywood. That's live right now. <laughs> that came up on my top live feeds. Uh, I don't know. Is there no press briefing? Previews, I will find out here in a second. Well, let me get something here while I could go through the previews. Uh, Disney, we, we made them free. I made two earnings plays early free today. We will go over those in a second. Uh, what's, what's press briefing? No press brief? How come they don't make a brief press? 
German Chancellor Scholz, Biden has a good chance to beat Trump. Thanks, Germany. Thanks. Thank you for weighing in. There's a briefing on Super Bowl security. Can I interest you guys in that? I think I think you guys might have to watch the border security. People are watching this right now. You guys are going to get so an act mad. to amend Title 38 United States Code and so forth and for other purposes signed by 17 senators. Yeah. By unanimous yeah. consent, the mandatory this. quorum call has been waived. The question Locally, is, yes. is it the sense Proposed of the Senate that debate on the motion to proceed to H.R. 815, an act to amend Title 38 United States Code to make certain improvements relating to the eligibility of veterans to receive reimbursement for emergency treatment furnished through the Veterans Community Care Program and for other purposes shall be brought to a this. close? The yeas and nays are mandatory under the rule. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Bennett. This is too much. No, nah, man. Maybe Club Shay Shay. Well, let me see. Or I could just talk intermittently, but I don't want to leave you guys too. Because uh, I could I could do it a lot faster when I'm not talking. Mm -mm, weird Baba Candle. DraftKings, 60 Minutes. Let me tell you how thrilled I am to have either Biden or Trump as president. I feel you, man. I'm just excited either way. Fed Bowman doesn't comment on monetary policy. Oh, Michelle Bowman. That'd be nice to play, though. Get you some Fed speakers. Yes. Oh, I have to register. This one might make you guys mad too, though. That seems to be another uh, February 7th, 11 a.m. Oh, do I need to update my Zoom? Damn it. Oh, join from browser. We did it. We made it. Forgot it's my birthday till now. Happy birthday, baby. Oh, man. That's a good one. It's a good one. Horn. Happy birthday, my guy. Oh, wow, that, horn was... that horn's kind of dying, bro. Well, that's good, man. Another year, baby. Another year, Mr. Lebowski. All right, man. I don't want to update. This is a big update. All right, you're going to have to wait a little. Taking real estate exam on Sunday? Good luck, my friend. It's a cult, baby. Hey, Amen. That's good, bro. At least you didn't delay. I love to see it. Love to see it. Man, and another birthday. Lebowski, man. That's it. Hopefully your hairline is still intact. You know, but other other than that, that's it, man. Once I think birthdays, I'm like, I'm getting old. But then I love it. Shout out to long term. Damn, those arms went up to 85. <sighs> arms is one of them. I'm trying to get this thing so I could play this. I just got to update my Zoom. I didn't know Zoom takes this long. 
Hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing well, Hunter. I'm chilling, man. Can't complain. I can find things to complain about, but not complaining currently. Other than that, man, it's good. I'm excited. The market is a wild place. I even think by the, just like last year, how the beginning of the year and the end of the year and just the differences we may see, kind of wild. I'm excited about what the future holds, the election. You know, so much excitement everywhere. Okay, now I need to install it. What? Come on, Zoom. Unwise to buy the SPY, like for the long term, or are you saying like options? But I mean, have you not heard this question answered here before, though? I don't know if you've asked it before, but I feel like my stance has kind of stayed the same, you know, uh, just the last couple of days or the last couple of months. You know, I think it's all all the same. Connecting, come on. Recording in progress. Typical hurdles for entrepreneurs and okay. startups. The pandemic created new complications for businesses, small and large. Firms owned by women and minorities were particularly vulnerable due to many being newer businesses, All right, let me more get my fragile previews. financially, and more likely to be part of the sectors hit hardest by the pandemic, including food services, personal services, and retail. Yet while many small businesses shut their doors due to the effects of the pandemic, in 2020, the U.S. saw a boom in business creation, which began shortly after the initial lockdown period. This increase has continued long after the labor market recovery. In fact, the Census Bureau's November 2023 analysis of business applications shows that business formation since 2021 has remained 32% higher than in the previous 10 years. Many of these new businesses were started by minority business owners. Increased rates of workers voluntarily quitting their jobs and high levels of unemployment during the pandemic appear to have encouraged workers to become self-employed or to become entrepreneurs. This growth in startup businesses could help to address the challenge of closing employment gaps for workers who typically face the greatest headwinds in the labor market. For example, startups are more likely to hire new workers and workers with lower levels of educational attainment. New businesses have also been responsible for a surprising amount of job growth, with an average of nearly 1 million jobs created each quarter from early 2021 through the beginning of 2023, which is significantly higher uh, at a higher pace than was typical prior to the pandemic. Of course, in order to create jobs, small businesses need to access, need access to sufficient amounts of affordable credit and capital to form, grow, and succeed. Otherwise, they may underperform, so not we raise reaching their growth to the potential highest point ever. either in revenue or employment. The share of small businesses reporting that they rely on pers personal sources for capital increased about half in 2019 to two thirds in 2022, according to the Fed's small this business. This is a Fed survey, Michelle Bowman. She doesn't talk SBCS about monetary policy from that year. But I needed something to play here while I got these earnings previews. This suggests a high degree of personal risk for owners and their workers. Moreover, personal financial resources are she often might be limited, an AI. which can constrain growth. I don't growth. know. Ideally, small businesses should be able to access external funding, which can be a key to their growth and to their stability. Most businesses that seek external financing turn to banks, community banks, and some larger institutions. Community banks remain an essential resource for many small businesses to access capital to support their businesses. These banks are focused on relationship banking, which uniquely positions them to meet the challenge of, of assessing the creditworthiness of local small businesses. Community banks make greater investments in small business lending relative to larger banks, 
Furthermore, according to the 2022 SBCS, small businesses were more likely to be satisfied with their experiences when dealing with small bank lenders than with large bank lenders or other finance companies. I'd like to take a moment to share some of the ways take the, the moment, Fed supports right. small businesses through community there banks. First, right, the Fed engages Again, community banks progress. through its Community Depository Institutions Advisory Council, or RCDAC, which advises the board on matters of public policy. CDAC members include community bankers who provide insight and information about the economy, lending conditions, and other issues that they see firsthand in their communities. Second, the Federal Reserve sup uh, supervises and regulates smaller banks based on a variety of factors specific to their size, their condition, their risk profile, and their business model to assess their safety and soundness. One of the Federal Reserve's unique strengths is the localized nature of our supervision, which relies on regional reserve banks that understand their local markets and their community needs. Many banks also have a mission to serve historically underserved population. These include minority depository institutions, or MDIs, women-owned depository institutions, WDIs, and community development financial institutions, CDFIs. These banks are vital sources of capital to many underrepresented small businesses. For example, the Philadelphia Fed found that community banks, including these unique banks, are traditionally more successful than larger institutions at small business lending in times of crisis. This finding was well supported by the volume of lending conducted by these banks through the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, during the COVID-19 pandemic. The, as everyone knows here, the PPP provided loans to small businesses to keep their workers employed. The program was implemented in large part through community banks, including these MDIs, WDIs, and CDFIs. The Fed supported the PPP by providing liquidity through its emergency lending program, the Paycheck Protection Program Liquidity Facility. Notably, MDIs originated more than 20,000 PPP loans to support small businesses during that time. The Federal Reserve has also supported CDFIs and MDIs through their work with the U.S. Treasury Department on the implementation of the ESIP program. This COVID relief program provided $9 billion in capital directly to CDFIs and MDIs. These funds were, were to be used for loans, grants, and forbearance to small and minority-owned businesses, especially in low-income and underserved communities. I'd like to close with a brief note on the CDFI Fund's recently released revisions to the CDFI City opens certification day negative watch on CoStar. In addition to ESIP funding, certified CDFIs are eligible to access other federal resources, state and local governmental funds, philanthropic support, and private sector investment. I look forward to engaging with community banks as they and other financial institutions begin to digest these revised application requirements. I also look forward to learning about how the, these changes may affect the certification process for renewing or obtaining a CDFI certification. The Fed continues to support the growth of startups and small businesses as a means of creating opportunity for all workers. This afternoon's discussion will focus on how employer structure and financing may affect employee wages and benefits. I'm excited to see that new research will be presented at this event, and I look forward to our ongoing discussions about labor outcomes. Exciting. Okay, now what? Well, hello. Hi, Sarah. Thank you, Governor Bowman. Uh, we titled today's panel, Who's yeah, Minding we'll the Store? The Firm level we'll characteristics start. and I'm worker ready to go. Outcomes. Great timing, great timing. The relationship between employer or firm characteristics and job quality is not really well understood. Today's speakers will discuss how firm structure and financing may affect worker compensation and other job characteristics. 
The full bios for all the speakers are available on the conference website. Today, you'll hear from the following. First, Nate Wilmers, Associate Professor at MIT's Sloan School of Management, will provide framing for today's topic. Paige Wiemey, Professor of Finance at the University of North Carolina, will present her research on non-wage compensation and implications for firms and labor markets. Wen Ting Ma, Assistant Professor of Finance at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, will present her research on access to financing and racial pay gaps inside firms. Andrew Jung, PhD candidate at the University of Michigan, will present his research on identifying alternative work arrangements in the United States. And Adria Scharf, Associate Director at Rutgers School of Management and Labor Relations, will discuss the research and moderate questions and answers. And finally, you'll hear from Doug Weber, Senior Economist at the Federal Reserve Board. We're excited to have Doug here to present initial findings from the Fed's research on geographic inequality and labor market indicators. Uh, and now I'll turn it over to Nate Wilmers. Great, thanks so much, Sarah, and thanks uh, to the organizers of the conference for, for putting together such an exciting panel and exciting several several days of uh, research discussion. So Sarah had asked me to sort of frame the research area that, that these papers come out of. And this is sort of a, a hard task because although Sarah notes that like, we know little about this general question of how and why firms affect worker outcomes, I've actually been working on this question for like 70 years. So this goes back to, you know, in the 1940s and early 1950s, researchers were kind of surveying employers okay. in uh, Boston and Cleveland and New Haven and just asking, you know, how, how much do you pay here? for different job titles? And a surprising thing that they found even, you know, way back. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Now we're going to get into earnings previews. Uh, but before we do that, I need you guys to acknowledge the uh, gap in pay between men and women in this country. Otherwise, I cannot begin. I'm just kidding. You guys did very good. You usually freak out at any of this stuff. So I'm proud that you guys uh, chose to uh, be calm today. That's good, man. I'm glad you're here. You guys ready for earnings previews? You did miss the philo. We do have PayPal. Wait, was that what was on? Yeah, I know you guys, they were talking a lot of stuff. You guys, I don't know. I think you were just subdued or something. Something just got you hypnotized. Okay, just making sure you acknowledge it, though. That's the only way we could continue. But here's the deal. We're going to do our earnings previews. Yesterday, we should have had a hit on FTNT. The only hit today was Snapchat, but it did not make us that money, thankfully. We only made 50 bucks back. We spent 300 so we're down like 250 And then we got a little bit, again, Toyota. I still haven't realized profits on that. That was our other hit that's holding up. We did take profit on a couple of plays already, so we could go over some of that here. But uh, like I've been telling you guys, you know, these plays are designed to lose. If you want a play that's going to hit, go for one standard deviation. If you think you have an idea, play one standard deviation. The main goal of what we're doing here is finding small exposure plays if there is an outsized reaction or an outsized earnings report. Pretty much if something happens not priced in, not expected, usually these plays will do very well. If not, you're going to get clapped. I wouldn't expect anything otherwise. Even then, some of them like Fortinet, They've Fortinet was up 100%. Stock went up 15% yesterday. And then by opening today, uh, the stock sold off and now it's break even almost 1%. So you did not get paid out on that one. So you got to watch out. Not all of these plays are going to be there. So be careful. Maybe they're scratch off contracts. Maybe that's a better way. Some people said lotto. I, I think this one's more scratch off if you're going for two standard deviations. But quite simply, what should you be doing with what every all the info we're going over here? I'm telling you, I would listen to what's priced in. I would listen to two standard deviations and find whatever play you want after that. Because you can, if you know what prices are coming up, that could help you a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's because, again, even Snapchat, it went right down to the 1150. I don't think that's a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these plays, they either end up right within one standard deviation and if they move and really stay moving they're magneting up to their two standard deviation number all right so play responsibly be smart and if you have a gambling addiction please call 1-800-GAMBLING see no it's not this is not a DraftKings commercial but seriously 
Do not let these plays hurt you. Best thing you could do on a lot of these plays is simply wait and play them in the morning. So again, Uber, uh, there was a we hit a hundred percent on that one. It was small, but that was post earnings. Again, a lot of the post earnings plays you definitely have an opportunity there. So you don't really need to get too much FOMO. You could always play pre, the day of, or the day after and save yourself some money, all right? Sound good? Sounds great. All right, let me load these up. Who's going to be our first one? Yeah, Palanter the other day. That one you could have hit even for the last two days. Number one on the list. Here is our earnings. Again, we're going to be going over PayPal, Disney, Arm, Win. Uh, do I have Excellus? No, I have Confluent, Paycom, and then Mattel, and then McKesson. And then for the next morning, we're going to go over Philip Morris. Uh, I don't have CCJ. And then we're going to go over Hershey's and DT and Lightspeed and SPGI. And then I skipped a couple on purpose. I didn't want to go over the oil place. You know, make sure we could have enough time to do all of this. So we'll see if I'm missing any and you want me to come cover them and they're big, then you let me know and we'll, we'll we'll put it up there. I don't have a CCJ preview. So, Troy, if you want to get that one, I think, Chad, some people want CCJ. But let's get into it. Let's start with PayPal. The PayPal. The PayPal and the PayPal. If all the people want the PayPal. The PayPal want the PayPal. It's so very, very interesting. So this one we have in the long term, you can see their three-year chart, not glorious at all. As far as their earnings preview, uh, they are expected to do $7.88 billion, implies 6.8% versus guidance of 6 to 7. Uh, whoa, hollow is going crazy. Uh, Non-gap operating margin, 21.9. EPS of $1.36 versus guidance of 136 Transaction volume, $405 billion. Ending active accounts, $427 million. Total take rate, 1.93%. Transaction margin, 46.59. Uh, price history since last quarter, November 1st. PayPal is up 20%. S&P is up 17 and XLF is up 19.7. Near-term options imply a 9.1% move. That one is kind of high. So last four quarters, they have gained seven, lost 12, lost 13, gain of three. Revenue has beaten 13 of the last 20 quarters with one in line. EPS has beaten 16 of the last 20 quarters with two in line. Forward quarter revenue guidance has beaten six of the last 19. And forward quarter EPS has beaten six of the 19 quarters with four in line. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. So now let's see what they're pricing in. Again, that one says 9.1. So that's already kind of a lot there. So PayPal, I mean, my pre-earnings plays are up, so that could say a lot. So they are pricing in what, 560? Five, we'll go with 550. So 550 would be $11. So 550 one direction. If you want something that is going to go in either direction, what is expected is $5 either way. So pretty much if you're going to go anything outside of the money of $5, that contract will get clapped. Even if it does move $4 and you buy a $5 contract, you will probably get clapped as well too. So double 550 would be $11. That's two standard deviations. We go one week out. Let's see where $11 takes us. That'd be like what? 74.79. You go 74, about 60 cents, kind of a decent amount. 50, 60 cents. It is a cheaper stock. So you're paying quite a bit. And then 11 to the downside would be what, $52? $52.50. The puts are cheap. That's way better than paying 60 cents. So I do like the puts there. Again, if they do do good, I think people will like it. But 52, weren't they just there? No, nah, they were at 56. So a little bit outside of where they were. So I already have a play on this one. So that's kind of the issue here. Let's switch this up. Where is PayPal? PayPal. So I bought these early. I grabbed the paper. I bought these after they ran up and then they sold off after your boy with the whole, uh, what's it called thing? Your boy with the, uh, remember they were like, we have a big event in the layoffs. And then I played it after it killed that pump. So I have two of these contracts at 41 cents. They're going for 62 now, 59 to 62. 
So I already have these. I don't know if I want to uh, reposition, but 74, is that literally, I'm, I'm like a little bit closer. So yeah, it's 60 cents. They're kind of expensive there. And then I don't have a put. So what I'm going to do is since I spent $40, I could sell out one contract and get like $20. This would just pay for my put. So I'm going to sell one of these, uh, get my 50% back. And they scam me at 59. So I sold out of that one. And then I'm going to buy the put, which would be what? We said $52, 52.50. I'm going to buy the put for 20 bucks. So now my total investment is $60. And then I've realized $20 of profit. So $40 both ways is my exposure. So I have one put, 52.50. And then I have one call that I'm up on that we grabbed earlier. I have both ways now. But I sold off one of my calls which helped pretty much make my put for free. So yeah, do not trade. You will lose money. That's play number one on PayPal. Any questions? That's it. I don't want to repeat any plays once we come over them again. That's why you got to pay attention or pay the premium. I would love to answer the questions while we're talking about it. You know what I'm saying? But the early bird gets the worm or the early worm gets the bird, depending on which one you follow. Any question? Any that was pay I grabbed one PayPal put and I sold one of my calls to make my put free. So I have one call and one put, and my total exposure is about $40 for both of those plays. It's called ghetto standard deviation because not all the time is this going to be two standard deviations. We are just kind of forecasting a price that we are estimating based on what is priced in. What direction do I believe in PayPal the most? I believe in the calls. However, the puts are a better deal. That's why I went and I sold one of the calls and then I, I grabbed a put. So I think there's a lot more upside on PayPal if they have a good earnings, if they come in with good guidance finally. That's a growth name. They Again, they are still doing $450 billion in transaction volume. They're doing a lot, but the put the calls have already gone up 50%. So I think there's a lot of upside on the calls, but I do think that the puts are priced better. It reminds me of Snapchat yesterday. Snapchat, the calls were expensive, even the puts, but the puts did have a better value in terms of what you were actually getting for it. I get those better than Netflix. College to Yemen of watch list. About 7470 is two standard deviations. So 75 is just outside, but if you wanted to save a little money, 75 is still right within the range. But technically, I think it's like 74 bucks. And then when I ran the when I ran those calculations a couple weeks ago, that was two standard deviations and sure enough it, it worked its way in there. So any final questions before we move on to the next one? Speak now or forever hold your peace. The next one is Disney. Any questions? Any questions? The put was a 5250 put for about 18 or 20 cents for next week. So last call, last call. In conclusion, well, in conclusion, you might be able to wait because if PayPal doesn't surprise up or down, it's just going to cuck and all of these premiums are going to get wiped out and you'll be able to trade this a lot cheaper in the morning. That's because, again, calls are juiced, puts are still far out the money and they're cheaper. But if they don't die and then they don't do good enough, I mean, welcome to Cucklandia. Oh, no. Uh, 
All right. On to the next one. Thank you, PayPal. Next one is Disney. So Disney. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Disney, uh, they are expecting to do $23.7 billion in revenue. Operating income of three point four three billion, EPS of a dollar, cash from operations one point seven billion, free cash flow loss of four hundred ninety two million, subscriptions total DTC two hundred and twenty four point one seven. Uh, since last quarter, they are up fourteen point four percent. S and P is up thirteen point one, and XLY is up by eight point one. They're considered XLY. That's discretionary or staples? Discretionary. I was like, no way, they're a staple. How is Disney? My goodness. And then near-term options imply 5.8% move. Last four quarters, gain of seven, gain of five, loss of nine, gain loss of one. Revenue has beaten 11 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten 14 of the last 20 quarters. So let's see what they're priced in. So they're at ninety nine dollars. Looks to be pricing in what five, five fourteen. So that'd be like ten, eleven forty. Am I right, or is it twelve forty? I think eleven forty, right? So again, it's pricing in. Is that right? Two eighty eight, two ninety five, four yeah, five eighty. I think five eighty is a better number. So 580 times 2, 1160 plus $99, 11006. So one tens would be the calls. That's two standard deviation. 110 for 60 cents, not bad considering they're higher priced. They are pricing in less than PayPal. And then what? 1160 Minus 1160 minus 99, 87.4. So 88, 88 for 23 cents or the 110s for 60 cents. So I already have plays on this one too. I did uh, different plays. If you don't remember, where where's my Disney? So Disney, oh, I had other ones. I sold out of them already. So I had the Disney 105s. So let me get up there. I sold out of both of these. Remember, I played these earlier. So I had the Disney 105s. I bought these for like 50, 60 cents. They went up over 100%. I sold out. They went up to 130. I sold out at 100 today. But I got my money back and then I moved. I bought because I had two of these contracts. I took the profit of that and I put one into the Disney 110s. So these were what we're priced in. I grabbed these at 40 cents. So I'm actually up almost 50% on these. I bought these at 48 cents in the morning because I did that whole little rollover. And then I grabbed one of the puts. I did grab the $88 put, exactly two standard deviations. I grabbed these at 25 cents. So I'm already in these plays. I made these early. I have one Disney at 25 and then I have one Disney 110 at 48. I spent $60, but I made that back, and it's pretty much free through my other play. Disney, I'm leaning, again, more towards the upside, but they, uh, and my plays don't reflect this because my plays are free. I just wanted my shit free. I had good run-ups. I decided to end up making them free. But in general, I think if Disney has a good report, there's a lot of upside. But then after how these stocks have moved as of lately, the puts are a better deal. Are you guys following? The only thing I like about Disney, it's only pricing in 5%. So if it has a crazy move and they move 10%, none of that is priced into the option chain right now. It's pricing in less than any of the other earnings so far that we've seen in the last couple of days. So like I'm saying, I made mine free, uh, but I'm not really lean too heavy, but I think there's more upside. And then uh, the uh, downside is just it's a lot cheaper just because of the run-up that the stock has had. So any questions on that? 110 to 88. Those would be your levels. And it was just at 188 not too long ago, earlier in this in this year. So that's the good sign. And then 110 uh, hit above there in 2023, then came down, and then had some issue there in 2022. Anytime it's gone up above there, it's been nice. But if it doesn't get above there, it gets smashed. 
I grabbed a 110 for next week. And I sold out of my 105s so that it could pay for this play. So literally, I have zero exposure on this play. So again, literally, PayPal is the only exposure, but we used other contracts to lower that exposure. Uh, Disney, I've made free through a pre-earnings play. And that's about it. Any questions? Mm. Friday contracts too risky yeah I mean I'd rather you're paying more volatility so you're actually paying more premium for Friday so if you actually go to March you'll probably get a better deal the bond auction is over bond auction was positive surprisingly though Bonds did not go too crazy. Going further. I did next week. So all of these plays were pricing in the weekly because of the earnings and then doing one extra week. Sometimes I'll go a little further beyond, but this case I did February 16th. All right, last call. Any final questions? Once we move on, we are moving on. It's too late to ask for plays. We did it. Uh. All right. The next one, man. Do you know what the next one is? Do you know what the next one is? Arma. So again, these top three earnings, I think I have all of these for free right now at this point. But we made this play yesterday, so if you got in on that, you should have made 100%. So we'll go over that in a second. But ARM is expected to do 762 versus guidance of 720 to 800. Gross margin, 96.5%. Operating margin, 36.2. EPS is expected to be 25, per, uh, 25 cents versus 21 to 28. Next quarter revenue, 780 is expected for guidance. Gross margin, 96.4. Operating margin, 28.8. And EPS of 20 cents. Full year guidance for March. EPS of 110 to 100 or $1. Excluding items. Revenue of 2.9 to 3.0 billion. And non-GAAP operating expense of 1.76 billion. Since last quarter, November, ARM is up 30.5. S&P is up 12.9. And XLK is up 15.1. Revenue has beaten one of the last one quarters. And EPS has beaten one of the last one quarters. So I don't know how good this earnings preview takes us, but remember, they have that IPO effect. They, this is their second earnings ever. Ta-da. They sell arms. No, they sell chips used for AI, I believe. Remember, NVIDIA was going to buy them, and then they got a... Regulators struck down the deals. So ARM is pricing in at 75.50, right in the middle. That's seven. It's like 820, 810. Let's go with 810. Because again, those are a little in the money. So eight dollars and ten cents is what's priced in for one standard deviation. Two standard deviations is sixteen dollars and twenty cents. Add that to seventy five sixty nine. Oh, I messed that up. Ninety one eighty nine. So two standard deviations would be ninety one eighty nine. Oh man! So the ninety fives are at eight. Are these the ones that we have? Holy shit! They are. Yeah, so we bought these yesterday for $0.30. Cents. Today, they're going for about $0.88 cents right now. That's crazy. So, yeah, we had, this is the one I, I sold out at 70 earlier today. And then I, I, I turned that into a put. But, yeah, those are super juiced right now. Mm-hmm. And then to the downside, 16.2. Some of you may be more comfortable with the 5150. Mm -mm, a 5950, so $60, 28 cents. The puts aren't bad. 
Again, I grabbed those today at 32. But yeah, it's the same thing. You're pricing. How much is it pricing in? I didn't even do that calculation. 810, we said. So 810 divided by 75, 75. About 10% priced in. So the calls are juiced, bro. The calls are juiced. The puts aren't that bad. But again, 59.50 would be like what? Oh, you were just there. Yeah, that one's tough. So I already made this play free. So again, I'm already in this play as well. I literally bought these calls in front of you yesterday. I, if you remember, I did this one in the morning. I bought these at 35 cents yesterday, and then they went up, and I bought two of them. Remember, I told you I was going to go bigger, and I sold one of them out at 70 to pay for my plays, and then I sold one of the puts down. So now my total exposure is $60, and then we pretty much got that back here today. So we still got a little bit of game, but I have one put, one call at those strike prices. I have 195 that I paid way less for, and then I have one of the 5950s or the 55, which one was it? The $60 calls. I have one of those at 28 cents or 30 cents technically. So yeah, this is another one. All three of these, I've pretty much lowered my, my exposure dramatically or I've made them free. So yeah, I'm not making any new plays on that, but we already moved those around today. Shares would be better, but like it's going to move 10%. So if you grab 100 shares, be prepared to either make or lose $800, $8 either direction, no matter which one you go to. So not bad. Any questions on that? Hmm. What company is next? It's, I'm just look. I'm looking at the text I wrote. What did I write down? W. L. A. V. Dude, what company is this? Do you guys know what I wrote? Let's just see if you. I figured it out now, but yeah, I can't even read my own handwriting. That's win. It's supposed to be win. I kind of see it. W, then the Y, then the N, N. Yeah, I just, I scribbled. Yeah, it's win. That's the next one. But again, any questions on ARM? I think that one, again, IPO effect, chip effect. It sucks the contracts are already juiced, but that thing literally, uh, that one's going to be an interesting play. But it is pricing in 10%. No shares. I think shares if you're down to risk $800. So if you're down to buy 100 shares and risk $8, then, I mean, not bad. Calls on arm. I went both ways, and my play is free. So I have a call and a put, but, after, but thankfully we got it early. It helped us out a little bit. What the hell? Start with photos? All right. No final questions on ARM. No price target. Just two standard deviations. Mm. Expiration is February 16th. Oh, shares and insurance, maybe, because the puts are cheaper. It's not a bad idea. I'm still $10 risk, $5 risk for 200 Again, the puts would only, you would still lose, though. The puts don't get cheap until you go two standard deviations out. Maybe a 65 but your risk is still $10 a share. So if you if you bought shares 
or and then you wanted to buy a put to protect it, you would still get clapped if it dropped but didn't drop more than 10%. The call was a 95 call, but the problem, I literally bought those 95 calls yesterday for 35 cents, and they're going for 82 to $89 right now. So unfortunately, the calls are mega juiced. Even again, compared to yesterday, the calls have already gone up over 100%. Mega juice. Disney is pricing in, I think, $5, so $10 both ways. Disney's only pricing in 5%. In a weird way, Disney isn't that bad. All right, next play is win. We have field all final questions. So win, uh, here's their two-year chart. Net revenue, $1.74 billion is expected. Adjusted EBITDA, 521.6, 270.4 in Macau, EPS of $1.15 per share. Since last quarter, WIN is up 7.0, S&P is up 14.1, and XLY is up 11.7. Near-term options imply 5.8% move. Last four quarters, loss of six, gain of three, break even, and gain of five. Revenue has beaten 11 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten eight of the last 20 quarters. So Young win. Right there in the middle, 150. He's like 510. 510 is about right. So 1020. So 510 is one standard deviation. And then 520 or 1020 will be two standard deviations. So like 11070. So pretty much like 110. And then $10 below will be like 90, low 90s. So the put's not bad. And then the call, call's not bad either. It's a little bit up there if you went a little further out. But that $5 gap is pretty big. Hmm. A lot of activity on the calls. He's saying then the puts. These puts were jack the other day. That's crazy. I think they ran off the China stuff. Mm. I don't like 90. And they only, they move like five bucks on a big earnings. Win has the ability to move though. I don't know. I don't really like the calls. I feel like those are juiced up after the China stuff. Literally, these calls went from 23 to 50. Hmm. Yeah. We'll come back to win. I like the puts though. Getting close to pump it up, baby. Getting close to pump it up. What are we at? Four nine nine seven twenty four. You're making the move again. All right, what do we got next? Confluent C F L T. So honestly, those are like the bigger names there: Disney, Arm, Win, and PayPal. Now C F L T. Confluent. Oh, this one looks like it could move pretty big. This one's gonna be mad expensive. I could already tell. Are we going up? Or no new high. Let me know when we hit a new high. So Confluent, CFLT, uh, they're expecting 205.3 million versus guidance of 204 to 205. So analysts are on the high side, non-gap gross margin, 75.6, non-gap operating, 
0.4 versus guidance of 0 to 0.1. EPS of $0.05 cents versus guidance of 5. Free cash flow, $200,000. Cash flow from operations, $6 million. Ending deferred revenue, 355 dollars Revenue for next quarter expected to be 211.2. .2. Non-gap gross margin, 74.4. Non-gap operating loss of 4.2%. EPS of $0.02. Cents. Cash flow from operations, 5.6. Free cash flow, 1.7. Deferred revenue, 3.5. $9 million. Since last quarter, they are down 14.2. SPY is up 17, and XLK is up by 21%. Near-term options imply 17% move. Oh, man. 17.3% move. That's huge. So you need, like, what? 34% for two standard deviations. So last four quarters, loss of 42 Gain of 16, gain of 16, gain of zero. Revenue has beaten 10 of the last 10 quarters. EPS has beaten 10 of the last 10. Short interest, 11%. Forward quarter revenue has beaten eight of the last 10 quarters. This is for CFLT. Confluent. Pricing in a shit ton. Yeah, 520. That's crazy. 480. Dude, I think it's pricing in more than 20. This is taking into account the more time, but that's nuts. Yeah, we'll go. Maybe we'll go five bucks. So ten dollars either direction. So either thirty-four, and that's forty cents on a thirty-dollar stock. Out of any of the other plays we've seen, that's the most expensive. You get the thirty-seven for twenty bucks, and then ten dollars to the downside would be fourteen. Those are five cents. So two standard deviations is the lowest you could go on here. And then remember, in these contracts, it might move like Snapchat. Because remember, even if you get in the money, the max this contract will make will be $1,400. And that's if the stock goes to zero. Uh -oh. So I don't know. Something about the call side gets me excited, but they're still kind of juiced. I mean, the question is, would you rather play Confluent or just go for like a Disney or PayPal? Because again, if you're going to spend $60 on any of these contracts, I mean, you could just go and buy. You could literally go and buy any of these. Uh, you could go buy any of the other earnings that kind of have more attached to them. Yeah, bro. These calls went up 300%. These are going for $0.05 cents now. So, unfortunately, I think you just have too much of an earnings pump. And why are people buying the puts? Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna have to say no deal, Howie. No deal. But that one could be exciting. But, no, I don't, I don't think the option. I'd rather play Disney or PayPal. For the same $30. The level on the ES is 5,000, bro. I don't even know where our levels are. 4,998. You're half a point below all-time highs that were just set today. I sold one of them. I sold one of the Ubers from this morning. What does juiced even mean? Just it, just it. It's just like it has a lot of juice. So there's, there's a lot of premium you're paying for for the juice. You know, if it was dry, it wouldn't have that much in it. They wouldn't charge you a lot. But a lot of juice, you got to pay extra for uh, extra large, you know. You get a lot of juice in there. That's, that costs some money. It's juiced up. That doesn't sound familiar. Video new high. Well, we're about to hit an all time high. All right, that was Confluent. The next one we have is Paycom. Pay C. Oh, they could move around a lot. They got killed on their last earnings. So, Paycom, they're expecting 422.5 million in revenue. 
versus guidance of 420 to 425. Gross margin, 84.1. Adjusted EBITDA, 171.5 versus guidance of 169 to 174. Adjusted EBITDA margin, 40.6 versus guidance of 39.8 to 41.4. EPS, $1.78. Cash from operations, 134.1. Revenue next quarter expected to be 500.2 million. Gross margin, 85.9. Adjusted EBITDA, 233.7. Adjusted EBITDA margin, 46.7. EPS, $2.60. Cash from operations, $136.4 million. Price history since last closed. Paycom down 20. S&P uh, up 18.2. And XLK down 23.3. Options imply a 12.5% move. Last four quarters, loss of 38 Loss of 19, gain of 2, loss of 7. Revenue has beaten 18 of the last 20 quarters. EPS has beaten 19 of the last 20 with one in line. And forward quarter revenue has beaten 16 of the last 19 quarters. So Paycom, they're pricing in a lot, but they have moved. They seem to be... Having some crazy quarters lately. Only February options. Yeah, twenty. I'm getting twenty-seven. Twenty-seven dollars. This says twenty-nine. I think twenty-seven bucks. So twenty-seven dollars is priced in one direction. Fifty-four. So two fifty-four. Give or take. Right in between there. So like either 160 or 95 and then 50 bucks lower. That'd be like what, 95? Or 145? 75 cents. Hmm. Yeah, we already went over PayPal. This is Oh, this no, this is Paycom. This one's expensive, but this shit can move. Remember, it's fintech. Yeah, fuck sixty dollars. I'll take these at fifteen. All right, I grab one at ten. I'm down. I only did a ten dollar call to the upside. I don't know about a put. I'm down ten dollars. There you go. Those don't exist anymore. Yeah, I got the two ninety for ten. That was just somebody trying to get out. And then one of you just picked up those final ones at fifteen. But yeah, I like it. To the upside, I went I went literally almost that's three standard deviations, but I bet I was going to buy the other ones for 60, the 270s, but even that one's still out the money. So I figured just keep it cheap. Those are going for 40 now. Which asshole just market ordered that? Do not market order those, man. You will lose money. Be careful. Another buddy, somebody else bought them for 40. Another person. All right, they came down. That's insane. Yeah, that's more than 100. I'm already up 100% on the bid. Oh, no way. Oh, 
If they let me ghetto spread that, I'm down. No, I grabbed the two nineties for ten cents. Mm -mm. Oh, someone bought. Come on, don't scam me. Which one's this? Paycom? They're worth 90 now? No, they're worth 20. Or are you saying the arms? The arms are crazy. That one was 30 cents to 90. Yeah, I wouldn't buy that one for 60. Again, we bought that one for 10. I'm trying to ghetto spread it. If I could get a free $1,000 upside, I'm down. I try to make them free. I should have. Right now, they're going for 15 on the ones below it, but I'm getting greedy here. I want 20 for it. So we'll see if that fills, though. I'm down. I mean, again, that's not too bad, though, for Paycom. I like the one we got. I wouldn't pay more than what we just spent on that. U.S. approves 1.2 billion foreign military aid to Poland. Arm we already made free. That last one was Paycom. Where was Paycom? All right, what's the next one? Next one is Mattel. So these are all still after hours, I believe. And then Spy won't hit that 500. Bonds are moving around. Consumer credit rises 1.5 month over month. Estimate was 16 billion. That's not bad. I didn't some people think it was going to go crazier. I think that's actually a good sign for them. Yeah, but I don't know if that's bad news good because, again, some people thought it was going to be like $30 billion. I don't know what the estimate was, but, yeah, that's a little lower. Watch out. If anything is going to give us that 500 push, though, so we'll see. No, firms tomorrow after the bell. We have not gone over that yet. NASDAQ's up one or just under. Not too bad. Pinterest. Yeah, one point estimate. Yeah, bro, that's crazy. Consumer credit came in at one point five billion Estimate was 14.9, and last month was 23.48. That's really bad. But then again, I don't know if you're going to get bad news, good news reaction. That's what you got to watch out for. So literally, the consumer credit, dude, that makes no sense. Remember last quarter, everybody was freaking out on how that played out. My goodness. Synopsis said to kick off sale of $3 billion plus SIG unit, SNPS. Oh, are they selling on that? Crackheads on credit. But yeah, but like they just disappeared. So again, the expected reading was that credit was going to go up by $14 billion. It only went up by $1 billion. That's very, very odd. Oh, the 290s, the play's leveled out. No more ghetto spread. Yeah, you could get that 290 now for 15 cents. Interesting.
Yeah, no, I'm looking into that. People are kind of surprised. But there's now you're going. Now we're making a move because that's bad news. That should be good reaction, but I wonder if that's going to spark any fear. 499. Senate votes to kill border deal with Ukraine aid. 49919. Chad Adonia. 49921. Oh, my goodness. Is it really happening? Is it really there? 49927. That is your high. Oh, my goodness. 49953. 49961. 62. 64. New high. 75. New high. Oh, 7-2. Oh, my gosh. You're a quarter of a point away. Quarter of a point away. Arm is ripping into it now, too. Everything's going up on this. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 49981. 89. 81. 83. 89. 86. 89. 78. 74. 63. 68. 74. 75. 77. 78. 67. 6. 41. 39. Two three. Oh no. Three one. Four three. Two nine. Oh one four. One six. One five. Oh eight. Oh one one. Oh nine. I can't even. Now we're not even at four nine nine anymore. No 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 no. Four nine eight. No no no. I can't till we. We're not even. Oh man. Oh man. Consumer credit. Come on, consumer credit. Give us some credit. It's not even at 499 anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. 49888. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We're almost back to 499. 49904. 01. 9898. No, no, it's not there anymore. No, it's not. It's, it's over. It's not. Until we get, yeah. Yeah, this is getting weird. No, I'm just. Sorry. Nine nine, oh eight, oh nine, oh seven, oh five, oh nine, one three, one four, one seven, two five, two seven, two eight, two nine, three four, three nine, four five, four eight, five one, five six, five eight, six two, fifty nine, fifty seven, fifty two. 64, 69, 66, 56. It's all 33. What, the, what just happened? 31. Oh, no, 34. 30. Oh, 16. Oh, 14. 23, 27, 30, 22. Oh, 27. Oh, 5. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, it's not there. It's not. It's power hour. That's the crazy part. It is power hour. This is very intense. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It's right here. I'm not looking at anything else. It's right there. We just had consumer credit. You just went up to 49989, and now we're not even at 49899. Oh. Oh, man. No, can I have a chip? I'm kind of, I need a protein chip while I'm waiting. Can I eat chips while I watch this? Is it tomorrow? No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What up, preforms? The Twitch is front running it again. It's the buffalo protein chips, bro. Buffalo protein. I'm excited. It's like the Super Bowl. If we get the Super Bowl this weekend and spy 5,000, that's crazy. Bro, it's not hitting. Are you serious? We did this earlier today, and it took us another hour. No. 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 Can y'all hear it from here? You can. You can hear it from there. No way. Oh, man. Well, back to earnings previews, I got, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
know, Chad. Sorry. I guess we got to move on. Yeah, man. I have my speaker out. I did too, man. I did too. I was ready to go. God bless you, Rosa. Is that orange bag? Yeah, the chicken chips. Uh huh. From Costco. It's fi it's fire, bro. It's fire. I love them, bro. Honestly, though, it's crazy me. It's crazy because like, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I've been having like spicy poops. They're not as spicy as you would think if I'm eating buffalo chips all day. But like, bro, I'm running through bags. I think I'm on my fourth bag in the last month. I had four bags. I'm on my fourth bag right now. And I have three more in the pantry. You right? You know what I'm saying? But like, it's low-key insanity what I'm doing. I love it. I love it, though. It's called wild. It's wild. It's actually wild, though. Mm-hmm. It's not changing the color of my poop. No, it's not. I'm I'm honestly pleasantly surprised, but you know, there's just like a little psychological spicy effect that you got to think about. Mhm. Mm I mean, I wish I don't know who makes them. I think it's a private company. Want to learn more? Wild Protein distributed by Wild Brands in Nashville, Tennessee. I'd buy them. We should buy them. What the fuck are we saying? Wild Brands. Wild Brands owner. You got I'm waiting until we get back. Jason Wright. He fell in love with chips early on. Yeah, they don't. We could probably buy him private. Oh, he's tried to raise money in 2014. No shit. Stop talking 5,000 in band. Trust me, man. I'm, I'm I'm seeing it. DraftKings going up. Spy wants, again, until they get to 99, I don't get excited. I can't get excited. I'm going to have another chip until this hits a 499. This just took me out of my earnings mode because we're waiting, bro. This is important. This is huge. 5,000? I've never seen this in my life. Neither of you. I don't know if it's going to hit, man. I don't know. Mm -mm. Yeah, man. All right, let me just finish these earnings previews. Because otherwise, if I eat too many chips, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So next one's Mattel. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna keep up the spy with the earnings previews. So we could get so we get really in the game. So Mattel's expecting one six five uh billion in revenue, adjusted margin forty nine seven, adjusted operating eleven, EPS thirty one cents. Since last quarter, Mattel is down five four, S and P's up eighteen four, XLY up seventeen point nine, implying an eight point one percent move last four quarters. Loss of eight, break even, positive six, and then loss of 11. Revenue has beaten 16 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten 18 of the last 20 quarters. Mm -mm. Mattel pricing in 160, so $3. So 21.72, 20 cents, 15, 5 cents. Again, all of the, I like the upside on all of these. Downside, not so much. Mm -mm. Let's see where that's at. Yeah, 21 for toys. You're kind of expensive. Mattel might... I like the upside. I'm not going to play it, though. It's kind of expensive. Because you're paying 20 bucks. I'd rather play PayPal. PayPal or Disney. But not bad. Again, more upside the calls. You're getting your limited on the cheaper ones. The EW play, I think it got clap, no? Oh, it's holding some value. I'd just be down to hold that for a little bit. 
We've seen a couple of those come back. Speaking of coming back. No, no 499 yet. All right, what's the next one? We had Mattel. Uh, McKesson, this is the last one for After Hours. MCK, they're expecting $77.9 billion in revenue. Gross income, $3.1 billion. Operating, $1.24 billion. EPS of $0.07. Cents. Uh, full year guidance expected to be EPS of 2680 to 2740, revenue of 8 to 12% growth since last quarter, November 1st. They're up 9.8, SP is up 17, and XLV is up 13.8. Near term options imply 4.3% move. Last four quarters, loss of three, gain of five, gain of five, loss of one. Revenue has beaten 15 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten 16 of the last 20 quarters with one in line. McKesson. Again, five hundred dollars stock. This one's probably going to be pricey. Nvidia is about to hit seven hundred. Yeah, twenty four dollars is priced in, so forty eight dollars both ways. That'd be like two fifty a two sixty four or five sixty four. It's very expensive. A dollar eighty still juiced. Mm. Yeah, that one's juiced, my friends. Where'd the paid comms go? Yeah, I don't know. That one's just expensive. I'm on February 23rd. Oh, you're right. I am. Thank you, my friend. So was that 564? Those aren't bad. That's a lot cheaper for what it is. And then what? 44 to the downside is like what? 580-ish? 480-ish? 470-ish? The spreads are messed up, but... Not too bad. Again, they just don't move a lot. That's the only downside. And they're already up 1.8 right now. My goodness. They've been on fire. I'm still in the arm call. We sold out one of them to make them free, though. And then we sold one of the puts with that. But that arm call is 30 cents to 95 right now. Insane. And then the PayPal's are still up. And then the Disney's, all of them are doing very, very great. Whoa, Beto, Bitcoin skyrocketing. New York Fed deputy, possible Fed reserve repo will fall to zero. Fed deputy Soma Ramachi, Fed closely watching money market, says reverse repo levels remain above. Balance sheet unlikely to return to pre-pandemic size. NY Fed deputy Soma chief Ramachi, balance sheet reduction going smoothly. That's the only thing I see, but you just got a Raul and then Bitcoin rocketed. So literally Bitcoin up and then market down. Bro, Bitcoin's running right now out of nowhere. Big pop on Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin just shot up $400. R? We have not pumped it up. We got really close to it, though. If McKesson wasn't up already, I would have played it. You could get you get one of those cheaper ones out there. But you just got to be careful. And then those PayPal's are moving. Oh, those arm calls are ridiculous. All right, time to get into the morning. I have a couple I'm skipping. So now we got Philip Morris. That's the next one. There tomorrow morning. 
We will pause earnings previews once we get back to 499. So they just pretty much look like MO. So Philip Morris, uh, what are they expecting? Expecting $9.01 billion in revenue, operating income 3.2, EPS of $1.45. Since last quarter, October 18th, they're down 1.7, S&P up 14.6, consumer staples up by 8.3. Near-term options imply 2.9% move. Last four quarters, loss of three, loss of one, loss of five, gain of one. Revenue has beaten 17 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten 19 of the last 20 quarters. NVIDIA 700. So Philip Morris not pricing in much, but it also doesn't move a lot. Spy at 419.96. Pricing in 250, 240. So 480. That'd be 95, like 96 bucks ish. 20 cents. These are all expensive. 480 to the downside would be like, what, 87? I guess it's not bad. They don't move. The puts aren't, I guess it's an $80 stock. So 15 is not too bad, honestly. But they would have to surprise. NVIDIA six ninety nine ninety nine. Wow, touching. All right, next play, Hershey's. This one's gonna be interesting. We'll keep up in NVIDIA there. These are all for the morning. Remember, Hershey's, they've been the value play. They've given up a lot. Oh, wait. I have to do the preview first. So, Hershey's, they're expecting $2.72 billion in revenue, organic growth of 1.7, non-gap gross margin, 42.8, non-gap operating, 19.8. Non-gap operating income, 539. EPS of $1.95 since last quarter. They're up 1%. S&P up 18.1. And XLP is up 8.5. Near-term options imply 4% move. Last four quarters, loss of three, loss of three, gain of four, gain of four. Revenue has beaten 15 of the last 20 quarters. And EPS has beaten 18 of the last 20 quarters. So H or did I type it in there? HSY they are pricing in the seven sixty to eight twenty. Seven ninety. And like eight thirty. We'll use eight twenty. So sixteen forty is two standard deviations. Why does that number sound familiar? So upside would be 210.75. So about 75 cents. What do we say? 1620. 178 to the downside. What was the upside? 210. 178. 50 cents for the puts. Two tens still kind of far out there, but they've given up a lot. Hershey's is a slow move. They're not even pricing in a lot. Oh, they tax in on these times. All right.
All right, I grabbed one of the calls, but I went one strike further out to save a little bit of money. I don't want to spend too much. So I grabbed the one or the 212 call. And then I'm going to grab the put one standard, one extra strike out. And then I grab the put for 31 cents, 175. One seventy five put at thirty one. So we spent a decent amount, eighty bucks on that one. I like Hershey's though. Again, they've dropped a lot. They move, it's a slow mover. If they come out with a surprise, they'll be able to do their thing. Apple green, all right. And then I have CCJ next. This one, I got a little bit of revenue or info, thanks to Troy. So CCJ is in the morning. This is for the uranium bros. They're expected 24 cents revenue, 778.9. Uh, yearly estimate, 2.8 billion. And then our uranium average realized per pound, 71.67. They have 12 buys, two holds, and zero sells. Average price target is 73.91. 15% upside from current price. Implied one day share move following earnings is 5.4. Adjusted EPS B estimates in nine of the last 12 quarters. Shares are up 72.7 in the past year versus SPTSX up 1.1. So they're just, they're up a lot already. NVIDIA 700. We did it, Joe. We did it, Nancy. Yeah, CCJ's been on fire. Now we fly? I don't know. The market just in its own little... Well, you need everything, though. NVIDIA's going crazy, but... We're not even at, we're not even at the 499 yet. Shout out to Nancy, she paid. Yeah. Start talking about it. Look at how we did that. Boom. And the video gives me Billy Huang vibes. I mean, if it wasn't at the forefront of the biggest technology right now, I'd agree with you. But this is just this is just excitement. That's all. Again, even Meta's at 400, all the other chip makers until... The economy slows down or these technologies prove to uh, hurt people. I, I think just everybody is excited. They have been for the last year. So CCJ, they're pricing in 3.03. 48. Yeah, I'm getting like $3. So $6 either direction would be like what? 48. 54 28 cents and then six dollars down would be uh 42 22 not bad honestly i don't know how they they really move on their last earnings ccj might that's actually kind of decent i don't really like the commodity plays or the materials but that one could be decent All right, and then the other ones, I don't know. The other ones on the list, I don't know if you any of you, do you guys know what LSPD is? Light Speed Commerce, and then DT, and then SPGI, S&P Global. You guys know S&P Global? Do you know they get paid $819 million a quarter for making these ratings on companies? I just learned that today. That's wild. Uh, 
Oh, LSPD is Los Santos Police Department. That's right. Bro, isn't that crazy? So, like, literally, the S&P, when they give out, like, credit ratings and all that, they're literally making $819 million a quarter off of that. That's wild. They're, they're going to get $400 million in net profit. But is that not wild? And then, literally, their last four options... They're pricing in 3.6. Last four quarters, they've moved seven, loss of eight, gain of five, loss of one. It's actually very interesting. How come their option chain doesn't price in a lot, but then they move? They've moved more than 8% on two earnings, and their chain is only pricing in 3%. That's suspicious. 970, 19. So $20. So forty dollars either direction, so literally five hundred or four twenty. Just fat spreads. Puts are really expensive. TSM going up. Hmm. No, Paycom, I did the upside just because I found a cheap play on it. And then we did Hershey's both ways. Again, do you guys want to do LPSD? Los Santos Police Department? So SMP, SPG, I went over that one real quick. LSPD, it looks interesting. Because they were up so much. I don't know if they had a reverse split. But expecting 238 versus 232 to 237. EPS of 5 cents. Revenue next quarter, 229. Uh, full year guidance, 890 to 905. Adjusted EBITDA break even or better. Since last quarter, November, they're up 16.9. XLY is up 14.2. Pricing in 12.5. Last four quarters, gain of 15, gain of 8, loss of 13, loss of 6. So they're already pricing in a high amount. But they've traded really, really high. Off topic, what were the streams like when you had maybe 100 people? I like to say the streams are the same no matter how many people are in here. Maybe if you were here then. But then we do a lot of, lot more tutorials. It was a lot easier to have like teaching sessions where like, you know, like I would focus on a couple of people. They would ask me questions and we do a lot of like live examples and help people understand that. We'd read out of books and stuff like that too. But we do do that from time to time. Uh, especially with how we've been doing the uh, two standard deviations lately. Scavenger hunts. Nah. Scaven Dude, we were doing scavenger hunts when there was like 10,000 people in here. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. Mm. Yeah, LPSD, it's pricing in a lot. 340. Two, I'm getting 360. 720. Abbey Vise on the high. Oh, that's a weekly. So seven bucks. That's insane. 25, 26, 40 bucks. Or the puts are not going to pay as good. Yeah, okay. I think we're done. That's it. I think I only made a couple, like literally every earnings play. So we made uh, like PayPal, Disney, all free. And then what's the only, and then Hershey and Paycom. That's it. So PayPal, Arm, and Disney, I've made all free. So I literally, I have $20, $40 exposure, I think, on PayPal. Then I did $80 on Hershey's and then $10 on Paycom. I might keep it there. I like all of the other plays. Though. I like the Arm, PayPal, and Disney. Like I said, most plays, though, I would have rather played Arm, PayPal, or Disney than anything else. I'm both ways on all of them. I'm Arm both ways for free, Disney both ways for free, and then PayPal both ways. Actually, PayPal, I only have one direction. No, no, no. PayPal, I bought the put. 
Otherwise, PayPal would have been free. So otherwise, I have $40 exposure. So what does it mean by free is that I got all my money back. So I made plays on them and then I sold them off to get my initial investment back while still having exposure. So like ARM, I spent like $100 and I got $100 back from by selling and then I still have the play open. PayPal, I bought those calls a long time ago. So then I just sold them out for 50% and then took that money and then bought a put. And now my total exposure is $40. Uh, yeah, so I still have contracts. I sold out of some of the plays, but I have I had enough where I was able to sell out, keep a play, and then still get my money back. All right, well, we didn't get 5,000. Cortiva, don't they have earnings? Mm. Yeah, you have two plays. One goes up 100%, and then you sell one for the cost you spent on two. Exactly. We missed a win. I didn't. We went over win. I just didn't play it. I said I'll come back to it, but I'm cool. I mean, I've only spent like what eighty dollars, ninety dollars this time around. So now I have exposure to Disney, Arm, and PayPal, and like I've spent about like ninety bucks for the other plays. I'm I'm down. Keep it small today, but still have over four or five different opportunities. I like Hershey's. That one, besides the other ones, I'm I'm kind of down with that one, just because they need a surprise though. My right, PayPal. I need to go to the bathroom now. Elf CEO. I will be right back. Follow me on Instagram at the Trade Fraternity. B R B. Our own site, which is propelled by our Beauty Squad loyalty program, but also at Amazon, we were also the beta on TikTok Shop, and we see that with our strength in social, the immediacy of that per purchase really makes a lot of sense for us. So we continue to see real strength, not only in our digital business, but also in our national retailers and international. Um, so we really are able to capitalize on being that digitally native brand that yeah. is. A pioneer on key key frontiers. Okay, digitally native brand, but still, how can you pass up an opportunity to advertise at the biggest show on earth, which will be the Super Bowl on mm -hmm. Sunday? Tell us about your plans and what um, viewers can expect to see. Sure. So while most of our efforts are digitally oriented, last year we had an insight that the Super Bowl draws a huge audience uh, and over almost half the viewers are women, yet no one was really serving them. So last year we partnered with Jennifer Coolidge and uh, featured our Power Grip Primer, the number one item in color cosmetics, and we saw over 60 billion impressions. So this year, as you're seeing, we partnered with Judd Judy and the cast of Suits uh, and really dramatized that you don't have to overpay for makeup. Makeup. I think she ended up sentencing one of the cast members with $14 Halo Glow uh, liquid filter, which uh, allows you to have that glowy, beautiful face at a fraction of the cost of prestige. So I think we're going to have some real fun with this. Tarang Amin, CEO of Elf Beauty, thank you so much. Looking forward to that ad. And of course, you talk about the cast of Suits, and I'm thinking, where's Meghan Markle in all this? Yeah, but true. But also, Suits like super hot on Netflix. Yes, yes. So I mean, I, I can see the I can see the parallel there. I know it worked out pretty well, didn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, Best in your are you going to watch the Super Bowl, by the way, even for the ads? For the ads? I feel like I have to. Yeah. You work well, here. My friends having like an anti-Super Bowl party, though, <laughs> sort of like a Chinese New Year party instead. So I feel like I need to do that. The two will collide, I have a feeling. It, it, Chicken wings and noodles. Yes, absolutely. All right, fine. <laughs> all right, coming up, let's talk about shares of New York Community Bank. They're all over the place today. Moody's cut its credit rating, and of course, they're making moves to kind of reduce their mortgage risk as well. It is our stock of the hour, and it's up next. This is The Close. Would you like sparkling or tap? Well... I'm still eating the chips. Mm -hmm. That's why I was here. I went pee, washed my hands. I was like, I still got some chips remaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the view. That's exactly who it was. Man, that arm play. That reminds me of the intel right before. Arm play is killer. Killer. Mm -hmm. If 
First day of Lunar New Year is Saturday. Casino plays are the way. Well, you got win after the bell. Again, win. They got Vegas, Super Bowl, Chinese New Year. I don't know. I feel like maybe we go for win. I really want to make another play, but I'm very content. I like the free plays that we have. We got like three st free standard deviation. We'll call them free standard deviation. Mm -mm. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Win you down. I'm kind of down. I know I did say maybe, but uh, they have everything going on. But then at the same, it's like 110, I think. I think 110 is the contract. Yeah, but I was saying they all look like, they look juiced. Mm. Maybe the 115, but like these are all like five, like uh, five bucks apart. Because, like, wind moves crazy only if it moves crazy. But then, like, when wind ain't doing nothing, it, do, it, do, it does nothing. Arm is pricing in, like, 10% already. We already did the math. 10.6, I think. We were thinking in the shower, could volume die down Friday due to the Super Bowl? I could. It'll just be computer-oriented, but then there will be people in the morning. Everyone's going to react to the CPI revisions. So that's the only thing. Like Friday morning, you're going to get CPI revisions, and then we're going to go from there. Mm. When... Oh, these came down a little. All right, I'll do one on win. Keep it cheap. Did it fill me? Oh, scammers. They should have filled that. Oh, come on. All right, I grab one win, 115 for 17 cents. I don't like it, though, as much. But then I'm like, it's a gamble. I just, I'm not going to go to Vegas this month. I'm going to just do that instead. But then if that hits, I'm going to Vegas, bro. I'm just telling you right now. If that win hit, I got to, it's, it's a sign. You know what I'm saying? No? Okay, I'm crazy? Yeah, I know. I know. I just grabbed a call. IV crush, you just don't buy it usually. Or you have to make sure you're getting... That's why that's like the whole point of this analysis is making sure you get in the money. So if you know what is expected to where the price could go, you have to uh, go around that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why the idea... That's why I'm like even then I don't like these plays because I'm like still even if it goes up but doesn't get in the money, we'll still lose. Uh, if there's not that much time and then it's earnings. So the expected move on this is $10 or $5. So win is only supposed to go up to 105. So if it goes double, it'll go to 110. But even then, I'll still be outside of the money. This one, we might get lucky, but you could still get clapped on it. Just because it's further than two standard deviations. You could sell before you're in the money, but at that point, you're not playing the uh, earnings. So to avoid the earnings IV crush, you have to get in the money. That's the answer. If you get in the money, you're going to avoid a lot of the IV, you know, getting messed up because then you'll now have a play worth, you know, value. I'll like, I'll sometimes I'll sell when they get in the money, depending on how far it's came. Or if, if I like it, I'll let it ride. I let the PGs and AXP ride for a little bit, but then they ended up coming down and then shooting back up. F1, it will. But F1, I don't think F1 did that good in Vegas. Win. I like win. It just, 
it, it really it's a fast moving it's a slow moving fast stock like i just said it has the ability to move a dollar in a day at the same time i've seen this stock move up 10 20 dollars in a day you trying to buy two super bowl tickets for free 99 you know what i'm saying are they what what's, what's the price they going for mhm mm When, what's the other one? Paycom. PayPal, that was going to be fun. Some guy climbed the Vegas Sphere today. Really? Like like one of those, like the dude who climbed the CRM tower? <laughs> we do a firm plan. Yeah, I mean, how much, how much are the tickets pixelated? I think he stopped responding after I said free 99. He could see it. Can I see your message? Yeah, I see your message, man. What's going on? Dude, where have you been? We haven't seen you since like October. I think we were last answering your options questions. But yeah, man, I can see you. What's going on? Why do I do the two standard deviations? Is it because they're cheap? Yes. And then it's the fact on some names, it's like if I disagree with the market maker and I think they could move more than the market's pricing and the market's wrong, they will hit. But check out the tutorial on YouTube. Search ghetto standard deviation. And it's a really good explanation of all of it. Uh, and then, you know, but it just generally... The whole point of our analysis is to know what is priced in so then we can make our, our decisions from there. I'm ready for PayPal, man. Did we sell Elf? No, I don't think Elf hit. Did it? D E Elf. No, Elf didn't hit. EW is holding up a little bit. Then Gilead hit for a second and came down. Actually, Gilead's still, like, right at break even. And then Fortinet, we got scammed on. He doesn't respond to just, hey, Josh. I mean, I will sometimes. It depends. Sometimes I see messages. Sometimes I don't. So bear with me. But usually, I mean, if it's a good question, sometimes I just miss it. But then again, too, like this whole standard deviation thing, it has been something we have talked about for two months straight now. Like it's literally been two months of every week has a thousand percent gainer. It's been great, you know, with all the options. So at this point, it is like if you are not understanding it, you are just avoiding kind of what we've caught what we've gone over or you're just coming back after a while so at that point though bear with me for not getting uh to your question right away if if you haven't been here right away you know what i'm saying you know you got to kind of work with me i always read yours yeah because if i don't you spam it a thousand times you're like josh how's your hernia josh hernia 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 hey i don't know care about the fat hernia her as your hernia josh hernia Her Josh has the hernia. Hey, I like Snapchat. Hernia. 
hernia, 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 hernia. I'm like, all right, man, my hernia. I don't know about my hernia three years ago, man. I don't know. Hernia, hernia, hernia. What? So yeah, but bear with me. If it's a real question, though, I'll get to you. If I miss it, you got to give me some benefit of the doubt. You know what I'm saying? And we'll be good to go. Is he worse than Mike Tyson? I'm the greatest ever. I'm the world's greatest. Everybody keep repeating the questions. Let's go watch the tutorial. You'll become unpredictable, unstoppable. You can't stop me. I'm the greatest. I'm the world champion. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know. Everybody has their own thing. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? Hernie, Hernie, hurt, 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 hurt. What? You just had a hernia? Feeling pretty good? Been three weeks? There's no way you feel good. What do you mean, bro? I was still like, it would hurt when I would fart after three weeks. That was the craziest moment of my life where going to the bathroom or farting was like the most excruciating pain ever. Like that shit was so sad, bro. Cause like I used to like enjoy it. Like when I'd have a fart, you know, I'd be like, oh, that felt good. Oh, dude, it was crazy. It was crazy. My friend got kidney stones. I stopped drinking dark pop. Thank God I haven't had a kidney stone. But we have 10 minute rigged. That's it, man. Day's almost over. That's it. You had hemorrhoid surgery? Oh, man. I thought I had a hemorrhoid the other day, but. I think I was just eating too many spicy chips. <laughs> I'm like giggling. But yeah, it's a long day, man. Long day. Yeah, we gotta get that ready. Only ten minutes, man. Ten minutes, and then and it's. Bro, bonds are down even after that auction. Kind of crazy. And then market. We didn't hit 5,000, bro. Isn't that crazy? We waited. We counted. All of it. Mm. Cytokinesis to the downs. They've been selling off since the other day. They ain't getting no love. We're so close, I know. But I, it's it's like we talked about this. We said it'll get right there and then sell off. Every time. It does this way more often. Like, it's kind of sad. Like, it actually be doing that. It just goes up there and then that's it. Yeah, Arm. Well, Y'all yeah, got good plays. Again, if you followed along on Arm, PayPal, and Disney, just remember you have the ability to make them all free. You know what I'm saying? So you could either ride that out or hold it. We got a good price on it yesterday. I can't believe that. 30 cents to a damn dollar in one day, not even earning. So that's a beautiful one. But like I'm saying, all these plays, you have the ability to make them free. Dude, it's at a dollar twenty-five. Are you kidding me? No way. Bro, the arm is at a dollar twenty-five. So I could have made another I should have held that even longer. That's crazy. Yeah, that's nuts, bro. That's nuts. A dollar twenty-five. Disney was killer, as well. But all of those plays, we even the PayPal's are at sixty, so fifty percent on PayPal, hundred a little more than a hundred on Disney, and then four hundred percent on Arm. Those are all of your pre. So pre earnings. Remember, not all the pre earnings were hitting, but those three pre earnings are on fire. Every single one of those. So, but the beauty is, you could either risk it for the biscuit. Or you could just do your thing, Tony One, do your thing. Mm -mm. 
And the stocks barely moved, right? Yo, tell them. Arm actually went up, though. Arm went up $4. So Arm went up half of its expected move. Disney ain't do shit, but we were up 100 prior, but still held. And then uh, PayPal didn't do shit, and then those contracts are back up. Mm. All righty. So final five in 45 seconds. Apple stagnant. Man, it's crazy. I love you. I'm up on the arm play. We'll do what you need to do. You're addicted. Be careful. Get a long term. And remember, we're only trading small amounts of money. We've had great option plays, though, for not trading any options really last year to just coming out the gate with two standard deviations. There's been a lot of good option plays, but don't fall for it. <laughs> they will fuck you up. They have no mercy. No mercy at all, my brethren. No mercy at all. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. The time is wrapping up, Chattadonia. Are you ready? So, Chattadonia, uh, I, sh I should give you the warning early. It's final five. I want to make... We've been kind of running out of time a little bit later, but uh, here's the deal. You guys have been a great audience. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Shout out to the arm play. The Disney, the PayPal, whichever one, man. Even a little Toyota. Don't forget about little Toyota. But, you know, he's a good guy. And UPS. I mean, it's great. But I want you to have a great day. I don't want you to end your day on a bad note. And here at the Colt, it gets very, very loud. Loud at the end. The new guy comes on. He starts yelling. He starts screaming. And some people have very sensitive ears. Their ears are so sensitive. They have reported eardrums bleeding, rupturing, anal fissures, anal bleeding, anal leakage, herpes, dormant BBB, gout. Uh, some people have sprained an ankle. I don't know how that even works, man, but... The whole point is we want you safe. We want you protected. So when I say earmuffs, that is your moment to, you know, cover your ears and protect yourself because it gets really, really loud. OK, so just keep it in mind. You got like a minute ahead. But when I say earmuffs, uh, that's when you're supposed to, uh, you know, just mute your speakers so you can have a good rest of the day. All right. So there's your warning. Thank you again for being here as well. I love you. And then that's it. OK. Your buddy's listening the first time. Well, why are you laughing? Maybe get him some earmuffs. Just let him know. When I say earmuffs, it's going to get loud. You know, you better watch out. Y'all laughing and shit until it gets really loud. You're like, ah! And then we're like, we warned you. Six feet apart. Wear a mask, man. Stop playing around. Okay? So earmuffs is the key word. Earmuffs is the key word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're making our final approach as we make our final approach. You guys are holding on to any bags. Uh, please throw them in the overhead bins above or firmly beneath your seats. We'll be coming through the house with a trash bag if you'd like to dispose of those bags. But as we make this final approach, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around 4 p.m. Pacific time. Then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. out of sunny San Diego, California. So you make this final approach into San Diego International Airport. It's about 58 degrees, partly cloudy, not looking like the best day unless you thought the market would go up to, up to 500 on the SPX without anything, and then you bought the arm calls way ahead of earnings. But besides that, only other good news, we're no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required until the election. So all we ask is that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way. Yeah, as always, we appreciate you guys in business. If you're interested in a call rapid awards program card, please flag down your flight attendant and we'll get you that as soon as possible. As always, thank you for flying with the coat and hopefully have a wonderful evening.
Chattadonia. Bring it home, baby. Bring it home. Finalize your plays. Options. You go in with PayPal. Arm. Disney. You got them in the long term. You can play them with the options. You got a couple in the morning, but you got to wrap it up, Chattadonia, because you only have one minute. Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to wrap it up. Bring it home. Finalize those plays. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. A little bit more data tomorrow. Then Friday you get something bigger. But tomorrow, all about earnings. A lot of growth plays riding on the line today after hours. You saw what happened to Snapchat. You saw what happened to the other earnings. You got ARM and NVIDIA and chips and market wants 5,000. But you have less than 10 seconds. Look at it go. We might hit 5,008. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ding 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 we did it. We made it. Seven hours in the books. Until these earnings drop, I need a GG. Let's go. PayPal, Disney, after the hours, I need a GG right now. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you large something. Everybody in there, whether you just got here or not, I need that GG. Let's go, baby. Thank you to everybody. I don't care, man. I need a GG from everybody. You say you contributed. You think you're the best chat in the world. Without a GG, it don't matter. You better drop that GG. Is that arm? Oh, arm already popping. Oh, and we already getting arm out. We getting some movements. I need GGs, though, Chad. Shout out to Twitch. Shout out to members, the non-members, the stream alert. Everybody holding it down. God bless you, baby. Good game. I don't type my GGs right now. I'm looking for the news. But you better drop it. I'm going to ban you. Without a GG, you are more likely to get banned. You know that? Ask anybody. 9 out of 10, Chad, will tell you. It's on every commercial. Oh, my goodness. Where we at? I don't see arm, I see some like Nah, this ain't even out there, man GG, baby, let's go, shout out to Twitch too Need me to rock You won't see me a lot Monday through Friday, you need me, let's talk Bro, I don't think arm is out Bro, this is crazy Arm isn't even out Bro, this is insane. We're in the money, I think. Almost. Bro, ARM is not even out. Oh, there it is. So ARM, third quarter, eight, 824. Estimate was $760 million. They see reported $7.7 billion. Sees full year adjusted EPS, 120 to 124. Previously saw 110 to 110, or $1 to 110. Yeah, so they beat. They beat, and I think they raised... Uh, total revenue eight twenty four versus seven sixty. Chips reported seven point seven. Again, uh, where was it? Full year they saw one to one ten. Full year revenue three point one to three two. Previously saw two nine to three point oh eight. So yeah, they beat and raised. So there you go. Win is out. Come on, win. Are we going to Vegas? Are we going to Vegas? Win. They were only pricing in like five. So let's see. We need we need PayPal and Disney. Win looks like it's doing good for now. Arm is up 20, so that one might hit. But then again, it already moved up 6% in the morning. Mm -mm -mm. Where are we still waiting on? PayPal, what was that one? Win? Arm play. We did that one yesterday. We went over that, though. We had 95 calls, but we got them at 35 cents, and they have time. So honestly, as long as this thing holds up near 90, I think we'll be good. But then again, you never know. Win was uh one dollar ninety one cents fourth quarter EPS of six nineteen, adjusted was one ninety one revenue one point eight four billion net seven twenty nine, so they beat uh, again EPS beat by like eighty cents operating revenue beat by a hundred million property EBITDA beat by almost a hundred million and then operating revenue in Vegas beat by seventy million, so they didn't do good I don't know if their guidance how that holds up, Confluent on the high remember that one. We were going, that one's up 15. They were pricing in like 17 though. Arm was pricing in $10.
So they already went up 15, but they were they were already up five dollars. So five dollars of this is not there, but it's about to hit two standard deviations. Again, I think just around 90 would have been two standard deviations or 88. Wasn't that the night the price? But then all you could have got was like the 90 or 95s. Yeah, CFLT. Disney's not out yet. I don't know when they come out. So when did good, they beat. But again, it's staying in slow move. CFLT, Confluence running. So we talked about that one to the upside. Arm is going higher. Hopefully, again, a chip maker beat AI. I think we might hit on that. God willing, man. I don't want to jinx it, but we might hit on that arm. Again, we still got a little bit more ways to go on it. We went with the cheap ones, but 95 has some time. Everyone's hyped up on there. I don't know. I think, again, and then everybody might have $100 on there. Inshallah. God willing, baby. God willing, we'll get that one. PayPal's out. Are you sure? I don't see anything flashing across the ticker. Mm -mm. No, I don't see PayPal out. Arm 92. Yalla. If you got that from where we bought it, that's a killer-ass play. That 30 cents we paid was fire, considering now it's almost in the money. Because then, But even though the ones you bought today, they might still even rise up. Win, is that Disney? I see Disney dancing. Oh, Disney boosts cash dividend 50% and targets $3 billion. And where the fuck is the earnings, though? Hold on. Mickey Mouse. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Confluent 30. Yeah, there it is. Disney adjusted EPS $1.22. Uh, hold on. Where is it compared to? So EPS was $1.20. They beat by 20 cents on EPS. That one's good. Net revenue first quarter 1.91. A uh, first quarter EPS 104. Adjusted was 122. So they beat even on top and bottom there. Revenue, where's revenue numbers? 23.55. So they missed on revenue slightly. Increased dividend. Where's users? They hit back at activists with strong performance. Disney answered back with the bevy of activists with quarterly reports showing strong momentum in streaming and sports. Where is it? So Disney first quarter twenty three and a half estimate twenty three eight uh, subscribers one forty nine point six estimate was one fifty one adjusted EPS four sixty estimate was four twenty and then boost dividend by fifty and targets three billion buyback in full year twenty four. All right, I think I don't know maybe the buyback Disney first quarter Hulu and live TV four six estimate four six two. Honestly, it doesn't sound like they did that good. I don't know why they're running like that. I think it could be because of the buyback shit. And then the fact that they didn't die, it just looks... I think spending could have been a good area. Revenues were comparable. EPS did very good. First quarter reflect the progress we made on strategic transformation. What's this? So experiences, 9.13. What is experience? That seems like it'd be a beat. Core paid Disney Plus 1111.3. So actually, they did good on that. Experiences 9.1. Entertainment 99 uh, 998. Estimate was 10.5. Sports was 4.62 billion. Arm up 30. Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah, I don't know. I think they did decent, but like that's not as good. I don't know if it'll take it to 110. But I think some people might just be reacting because they didn't do bad. If that may... No, they everything was kind of cucked. It just wasn't... But then again, this is all in line with like a recovery. And then they're not spending. And then they're increasing profitability. So again, that's why your EPS beat is kind of a big deal for them. But other than that, I, I think it's pretty mediocre. I think your 103 calls will hit. I think it's, it's it's not bad. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. It could have been bad. They could have failed, but, like, it's not. Yeah, the whole could have been worse. And, well, they had some bright spots. EPS, shares, and buyback. We are now about to be in the money on ARM. So, GG on that one. Let's just run it. And then Disney, I don't know. Are we going to get lucky? I would have been in the money on my other Disneys if I didn't sell those. Those are 105. 
All right, we're a dollar in the money now on R, man. God willing, that stays there. Yeah, Disney rises. Oh, full year profit tops estimates. I didn't see that one. Full year adjusted EPS 4460. Oh, I didn't know that was full year. Yeah, bro, we're in the money now, almost a dollar on ARM. All right, PayPal next, baby. PayPal next. Shout out to ARM. We hit another. God willing, it stays up there when we wake up. They see That was full year. I thought that was on the quarter. I'll take it. So, yeah, they raised full year EPS, more profitability. Everything else is just still in line, though. I'll take it. I'll take it. And then the first article that came back is Disney... Disney fights back against activists by holding on to growth. God willing, bro. 90, dude, we're a dollar in the money now. Yo, run it, baby. Run it. That should be a guaranteed three, four hundred percent. And you already had that this morning. And then you have time. So just go to a hundred. If that goes to a hundred, you'll be that'll be worth five hundred dollars. That'll be over a thousand percent. If we could, if we open up at arm a hundred tomorrow. That play will be up over a uh, thousand. That'll be like fifteen hundred percent. Win is running. I'm going to Vegas. If Arm go to a hundred and then Win go to two hundred, I'm going. Nah, Win. Win need to go to like one twenty. Mm. Confluent. We didn't play Confluent. We talked about it, but we didn't get it. Even Disney, though, man. 7500 for each Super Bowl ticket. That's a retail price, Habibi. Just sell it. Sell it to somebody else for more money. I did play Paycom, yeah. Are they, bro, Disney's ripped. We need PayPal now. That's the only one. Oh, Paycom came out, but they're not. I mean, maybe we get lucky on. Yo, Disney, I'm, I'll take it, bro. Disney needs to get to like, what, 120 now? And then our calls are still 110, so we might get lucky. But Disney's still holding up. Mm. That's it. PayPal's the final one, bro. When does PayPal come out? Average monthly revenue on Disney Plus Core 684. Yeah, we had two different plays on Disney. We had the 105s earlier, so you'd be in the money if you held those, but we made them free and then moved to the 110s, and then we had 95 calls on ARM. So that's it. We had, again, all these, these two big beats so far. We have all of them. So, but hopefully they just hold up. Again, we've been cucked a lot by waking up. It's crazy how we get into the opening and then these plays are really far off. PayPal 115. Well, Chad, I love you. Thank you for being here. I'll get my thank yous in. I'm going to play you a song while we wait so I could eat some chips. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to eat me some chips and then we'll get this in here. So God bless you. Uh, I'll give you some some bite of this. Ah, what's up? Yeah, where's where jail? Come on. Nah, I mean it. Hey. For four four p.m. I have four p.m. when I wake up, bitch. Hey. Shout out to Percy, that's me. You can just call me JP. I do not answer no questions. You can leave that just a key. Camilla riding with me. She'll lock you up for some weed. Say bad things about that vaccine. I'ma make sure you don't speak. Got a laptop you won't see. Hunter, I love her, but that shit was weird with his feet. I love my congressman trade. Shout out to Nancy, she paid. Double your cash in a day. No one say Putin's to blame. Real politics in your face. 500 bill on the way. 500 mil to Ukraine. Every day. Javelin's keeping them safe. Fuck it, just send them some planes. Tell them keep growing them grains. Y'all love my bros and they do Bob Iger on CNBC. He says, Disney took a minority stake in Epic Games. Damn, bro. Disney just invested in Fortnite? How'd they pull that off? That's actually crazy. That's Yeah, that's insane. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's on CNBC right now. Bro, they just took a $1.5 billion stake in Epic Games. Disney. Oh, they really just trying to own every. Now they own Fortnite. Are you kidding me? Justin and partner.
like Epic Games. What do you see as the monetization opportunities down the line? Is this more about marketing your characters and making sure this younger demographic is engaged with your IP? Or is it about the revenue you're going to be generating from the transactions that happen on the platform? Well, it's primarily driven by uh, uh, the fact that we think we can turn this into a good, solid business in terms of the bottom line. We're not giving guidance on that. But we do expect it to be nicely accretive for this company once we launch this, this universe. Um, that said, it's also another way that our great intellectual property, the characters and the stories, can be expressed in a different way. We've been great about doing that in parks and resorts and in cruise ship business around the world. This is obviously another example of how we leverage the great IP that we create in other platforms and other media. And when, again, when you look at those demographic trends, I think it's critical for us to continue to stay relevant and continue to basically create That's ways wild. that consumers can interact the first purchase I like out of them want to with again, our storytelling and our characters. Can you give there. us a launch date They just bought a piece of Fortnite. I can't give you a specific launch date. Uh, I'm not even going to speculate right like, now. Because even then, that shit's not going to go bust at least. a while to build this. It's not years. Compared to how easy some of their other assets went gone. Years, but we'll see. So your stock PayPal is up about seconds. 7 half percent You just forecast 20% growth in earnings for the rest of this fiscal year. You're announcing this big partnership. Do you think this will be enough to assuage the concerns of Nelson Peltz? <laughs> Look, uh, when I came back just over a year ago, I, I discovered a company that was really struggling. Uh, we had uh, issues creatively with our That's studio. Crazy. We had a streaming business that was losing a huge amount of money, and there was no path right, to profitability. Be out in a couple seconds. We had a questionable balance sheet, no ability to do what you talked about, and which is off. things like stock buybacks. PayPal sees we full year adjusted EPS 510. Or increase the dividend, which you know we Yo, had suspended in COVID. EPS. I think they raised uh, there were guidance. Just, Hold there on, let me check issues. what the Morale expectation was. Bad. was. And, PayPal's you know, not even moving. when I face what I'll call considerable challenges, well, I approached them with great patience. It was order. clear to me that the ability Five. to be patient was non-existent. Ten. We had to be impatient. We've assembled a great team. We've built on that team, adding Hugh Johnston as our CFO. Revenue that was 80. They beat on revenue. Acting with a sense of urgency. 83. And I think if you look at the I results have the numbers, that we just but they're not easy numbers. And all Adjusted the EPS that was 148. About, that is the result of a team that, that is motivated, that is focused. On and but now all, beat all of us are very optimistic. There. The last Adjusted thing that we need dollar right now year, is full year to be distracted in terms of our time, our energy. Active accounts fell. Transactions rose to 6.8 billion. Frankly, have a completely different agenda and don't understand our EPS company, its assets. Yeah, they beat on even EPS. the essence of the one forty eight. They beat by ten cents. I'll just, I think I'll just leave it at that. Net Wait, revenue eight the billion. That they beat on that, today, and then I think they guided up. To what some of Nelson's, Chad, do you have the Nelson guidance Nelson's estimates and recommendations are? For instance, he said that Disney streaming should target Netflix-like profitability I'm margins sorry. of 50, 15 percent to twenty. We'll come back to Bob Iger. I think they beat. They beat on revenue. They beat on EPS. I'm looking to see the guidance so far, but I think it's higher i'm seeing 510 for full year 2024 uh but they're saying 510 is the new guidance i think it's higher they guide for first quarter revenue growth after first fourth quarter beat non-gap eps expected to increase mid single digits versus 117 in prior year ahead no that sounds great they're already coming back down they forecast flat 24 earnings amid streamlining process oh there it is and back down no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Roblo, yeah. If PayPal's gone, Disney up, everyone else down. Or, excuse me, PayPal down, everybody else up. 510. Oh, estimate was 549. Damn. I thought that was higher. So we already had that, though. I think everything else was good, but then they say first quarter revenue growth expected. So I don't know. I don't have the first quarter number. They see gap EPS mid single digits. Uh, versus 70 cents in prior year. Uh, first quarter revenue is expected to increase 6.5 to 7. So full year growth not as good. First quarter growth is back. And then they beat on revenue and EPS. That was the closest they came to having a good quarter, though. It's decent. I'll give them a decent. It's not as bad where they sell off 20%, but then they just sold off 8% of those gains. So we'll see how people digest that. Let's get back to Mr. Bob. To Mr. Again, Pelton, Disney almost hit 110. Are you planning on talking to him about these results ahead of your big April 3rd shareholder meeting? 
I have not spoken to Mr. Peltz in a while. I have no plans to speak to him. I'm, I'll, I, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, we should, of course, get to the other big news, which you announced yesterday. This joint venture with Warner Brothers Discovery and with Fox to create a new streaming skinny bundle of your linear, uh, linear sports assets. Mm -hmm. Why does it make sense to do this? Are you at all concerned that this could drive accelerated cord cutting or even challenge and cannibalize your Hulu with live TV business? Look, I think if you're a sports fan, if you're a sports league, if you're an advertiser, even if you're a distributor, you want to engage with ESPN in some form. ESPN has always made a promise to sports fans that it will serve them wherever they are, when, you know, whenever they want. This is clear, and they've done a great job doing that. I think one of the secrets to their success, not a secret, is that they serve the sports fan, fan so well. This is a big step in that direction, to serve the sports fan that has not signed up for the you know, multi-channel channel linear TV, or that maybe was disenfranchised and didn't want it. This is a way to do that. We've watched for years the decline of the, basically the linear bundle on cable and satellite. Um, and we've been preparing for a world where that business is not as strong as it used to be. Launching Disney Plus is an example of that, the investments we've made in content, the Fox acquisition, the acquisition, what that did in terms of our ownership of Hulu. All of these things are prepared for us to pivot as well as the world changes, as the world is disrupted. And by the way, I'd rather be a disruptor than to be disrupted. The linear business is still a business that serves us well in that it's profitable for us, and we intend to continue to be in it. Uh, we're investing in it in terms of the channels that we own, mm -hmm. running them more efficiently, but we're still in that business. But we also have to be mindful of where the consumer is, is, is now and where the consumer is going. But if this product is priced, say, between $40 and $50, isn't there a risk that not only it would drive accelerated cord cutting, but also put you into more conflict with the pay TV operators like Charter, who are already concerned that you were taking ESPN direct to consumer? I've not discussed this with any of those operators. I think they probably, in, in many ways, either would understand or should understand that what we're creating here is a distribution mechanism to reach consumers you know, where they are today, basically app-based entertainment. Um, and I, you know, I, I think this was a step that we felt was one that we not only wanted to take, but that one that we really should take. Uh, given what we know uh, sports fans want and given what we see with the current uh, multi-channel ecosystem. How does this impact your plans to bring ESPN plus the flag, I'm sorry, to bring ESPN flagship direct to consumer as an alternative to ESPN plus, but bring your traditional linear flagship direct to consumer, which you have told me was going to happen before the end of 2025. How does this yeah. impact that? And how does this all impact your negotiations with those pay TV operators? Well, I can tell you that our plan now is to bring so-called flagship to the market uh, probably uh, in, in the fall, maybe as early as late August of 2025, we're going to do that. It is a different product. It's singular in that it is ESPN. It will have many more features and provide a much more immersive experience for the sports fan than this bundle has. This bundle is really a channel bundle what that I think Disney will be very user-friendly because it's so more So again, I even think some of this but is ESPN, off of the dividend stuff flagship or whatever, what, what, I guess we'll just call it ESPN, will have features like integrated Again, I think betting, the epic fantasy, thing and then the dividend, uh, much more not to mention just the not having bad earnings. Um, probably some uh, shopping yeah, in some form. Yeah, Holo's at 25 form, now. Uh, <laughs> uh, much deeper in statistics and those Hi. sorts of things. Kind of the, the sports lover's delight. And it will live but the on guidance its own. Was and still soft. Side there was some bright spots, though. I'm not. Just I'm not well, as disappointed in PayPal. For a while that we're looking I don't know. For I don't think it's going to have a crazy for ESPN to help us take ESPN in a direct-to-consumer business. What we announced yesterday is with two partners that are helping to do that in one way bundled with their services and what we'll do when we launch ESPN where we will continue to look for partners and we've been engaged in some good discussions with some possible partners is another step in the direction of just reaching the consumer in more ways going where the consumer is and what the cons giving what the 
consumer wants. Before we're out of time, I want to make sure to ask you about your parks business. Obviously, a huge part of Disney. Um, we saw strength internationally, but you have fascinating insight here into the consumer around the world based on bookings, especially for things like spring break and looking ahead to the summer. What are you seeing right now, and what's your outlooks for the parks? Well, let's just talk about the quarter first. You have to look at the parks globally now. Obviously, all were profitable in the quarter. What's happening in Hong Kong and Shanghai and Paris and in um, in Tokyo is just extraordinary in terms of the numbers. We open up Frozen in Hong Kong hey, in Congress November like in missed. Zootopia really Land in Shanghai shop. in December. Tremendous reception to those. And the combination of those with the domestic parks, whose business is, I think, more than twice what it was before the pandemic, is just an extraordinary business for us. Add to that the cruise ship business. You know, we now have five ships. We're building three more. Also tremendous in terms of near-term performance and also long-term outlook. Uh, I won't get specific about what we're seeing in bookings, except in general, our parks business is healthy domestically. Again, you have to look at it in, in light of where we were before the pandemic. The fact that it came roaring back and has stayed really strong uh, versus just looking at sort of one isolated quarter. Before we let you get off to your earnings call, I have to ask you about Elon Musk <laughs> tweeting overnight that after funding a lawsuit from a fired Mandalorian actress against Disney, that he will fund any Disney employee that wants to sue you. What's your response to this? None. Then I'm going to ask you one more. Do you have any update on succession? <laughs> um, that's an easier one. Um, there's a succession committee of the board. They meet regularly. Uh, they've had some really good, I think, productive sessions. It's probably the board's number. It is the board's number one priority. I'm confident we're going to find a successor to me in due time, I love in, in the right time. I like the original uh, and again, Zootopia. Again, I think the commitment of the board, one of the, the best the movies attention ever. to yeah, the I process, is all very, very healthy. Well, we will leave it there. Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, thank you so much for joining us. Ahead of your earnings call to bring so much different pieces of news with us from the epic deal to the fact that ESPN flagship is, is going to launch ahead of the football That's crazy. season he in 2025. You just did that interview you heard before the conference call. So they have any other. Disney did good, though. Again, I think it was very mediocre, but they just didn't do bad. And then that investment, raising dividend, they're trying to be like Mark Zuckerberg. They're like, pay the shareholders. <laughs> double, the, double up the dividend. Give them more. Give them, no, I think you get like what? Now you get like 1% back on Disney, something like that. So now they're giving you a little bit more, you know, slowly working their way into it. And then just that's it. I think the Epic Games acquisition, that's the first Disney acquisition. They didn't buy all of it. They just took a stake in it. But besides Hulu, they haven't made a good acquisition in a long time, bro. I'm telling you, PayPal wasn't that bad. I wasn't actually as disappointed by PayPal. So PayPal usually like they guide lower and then they don't have it. At least they guided up for growth in Q1. Full year ended up being a little bit lower. So that's where people are getting worried. But they could always sand that. that that's how they could sandbag into it. But honestly, they beat on revenue. They beat on everything else this quarter. Profitability went up. Again, their forward prices aren't that bad. But then now it's just a matter of the full year guidance. And then do they actually grow on the next one? Would I average up on PayPal or Disney? None of them. I don't like to average up uh, unless it's like Abby Vi, unless it's like, you know, give it a couple, like maybe a year. And if it's really doing very well, but, you know, if anything, we get a little bit of drip on Disney. Maybe we could average up with that. But at the point uh, at this point, I think we're down on PayPal slightly so we could buy that or Disney. We wait. But Disney, we have good gains on Disney now. I don't know what we're I don't know if it tells me after hours. Well, I think right now we have a good price on Disney. We're like low 90s, high 80s. I don't know if it updates. Yeah, I think it updates on Schwab. So we should have like 20% on Disney now, which is fucking great if you think about it. And then we went pretty big with that sizing. Because Colt Sister is up 19. The other ones don't update after hours. No words on Holo. We saw Chad's talking about that all. It's just going to be a hype play, but that one went up 1,000% on shares. Mm -mm. You got low 80. Yeah, if you got the real dip on Disney, there were some good ones. Mm -mm. But not bad. I think Disney, we might have a chance. If Disney's call goes good... An analyst upgraded. I don't know. I think people might get hyped up on the Epic Game shit. 
and then the dividend is going to support all the boomers like me. You know what I'm saying? The so they got they got two good things: buybacks, dividends, and a nice acquisition, and then no bad earnings. At least a little bit of growth coming back. And then uh, Arm was a killer. I think we're going to have fun with that tomorrow, inshallah. And I think that's it. Mm, I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. I don't know. When's PayPal's call? I don't want to listen to any of them. I'll wait. Oh, wait, surprise me in the morning. You know, maybe the watch list. What's today? Today's Wednesday. We got called Real Estate Baby after hours. Let's see. Maybe I'll do a live watch list. Hey, we could do the 13, 14. You called PayPal? What do you mean? I I just think it was... Exp we just made them free. I did the same thing with Disney. My other Disney's would have been in the money. And then Arm, too. We made that free. But then we have we have great... That Arm play was killer. I didn't think that I'm glad we went big on the arm play too to leave us flexibility. But like, dude, holy shit, that arm play was nasty. So I'm, I'm down another week, baby. Another week. Inshallah, man. Finger to the sky. Let them know, baby. Let them know. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. It's kind of it wasn't bad. I get I've seen a year and a half of bad PayPal earnings. This uh, this earnings at least had hope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the crazy part is like I've seen PayPal earnings with no hope. You ever met somebody with no hope, man? You know what I'm saying? You know, like just eating glue and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just smoking crack outside of like a working place. And you're like, man, I got no hope. At least PayPal stopped smoking crack in front of the workforce. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, I'm very this. I'm like, hey, man, maybe you could clean your act up. It kind of, PayPal kind of like Hunter Biden now that I think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least this is like a couple earnings ago. They were posting laptops and fucking foot jobs and like weird shit. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, you know, you clean them up, put them in front of Congress. It don't look that bad. Honestly, I don't think I think it's actually not bad. So I, I see a little bit more hope on PayPal for this earnings, man. That's the good part. Yeah, you say what? What did you just say? Uh, what's the paycom didn't do shit i don't know but maybe we'll see they're down three eight but they were pricing in a pretty high amount of money mm -hmm. i want to pay i feel square is a good one too can't go wrong but that was at least decent but hey we'll take it man disney paying out holding up the gains above 100 we'll see where it goes above 110 arm hopefully we're in the money and that's about it baby so, Chattadonia. I don't know. Today, I'm planning for a normal watch list. We'll see how things go. Maybe you'll get a live one, but I love you all, man. That is the day. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Shout out to all the Chads that participated. All the way down to showing love, posting news, to two standard deviations, staying in the game, watching the tutorials, being part of there in the long term. I love you all, man, for real. And even if it was your first time, thank you for giving me your time and attention. I hope I made the most of it by getting you some inf info, a little bit of laughs, you know, and hopefully a long term, too. But for real, man, if y'all came out today, gave me an opportunity. It means the world. So thank you all. Big shout out to all the Chads out there. You still got time to do more with your day because you got cult real estate, man. They're going to be on in two. It's almost, it's almost, already almost two. We're here for earnings. You got 30 minutes, man. So shout out Cole Real Estate if you want to get involved. You hear me talk about real estate a lot. So here's your opportunity. You know we have a real estate team that does $200 million a year in transactions. It's so weird to say out loud. Yeah, so that's what's going to be streaming. You should get in touch with them. That's all, baby. That's all. Cole Real Estate or bust. But Chattadonia, thank you all for being here. I love all of you. God bless you. Thank you for your time. But that is the day. Go read the books. Richest Man of Babylon, Proverbs, New Living Translation, and the strangest secret in the world. And don't forget why we're here. Why we keep going. Why that faith, hope, and love ain't never going out of style. Why we know everybody has desires. They go through storms. But what happens is going with the knowledge that you are given, baby, and building on the solid rock. Why, baby? Why? Uh, 
Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory and through the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. So, Chad Adoni, I love you all. I will see you on the watch list and coach real estate tonight. Enjoy it. Don't don't get too hyped up. Just say, inshallah, all of these plays open up where they're at right now. Otherwise, you'll be sad again. Otherwise, you'll be really happy tomorrow. So we'll see. But either way, man, finger to the sky. You know the vibes. I love you all. Drink that water. Stay hydrated. All that good stuff. And peace. Oh, yeah, I tell you, you cut off my song earlier. How about arm? What are they selling? Arms? Exactly. So now you mean to tell me arm? If if an AI is a head and then you're selling an arm, what is it going to be a new body? Should, that, should I rely on AI to grab things for me now? Is that what you're telling me, Joshua? Is it ironic? Do you think, is it Peter Pan? Did he have big arms? No. Did he have a chip that he bought from China? Exactly. It makes no sense right now. Makes no damn sense. And you want to package together an AI bill with the border? No. I reclaim my time. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Exactly.